Okay, let's do it. Turning the whole thing around to suddenly say that you're going to rebrand yourself as this wonderful new centrist and everything's wonderful and that you write children's books now and it's all uwu and everything's good now and nothing bad ever happened. I think if you wanted to achieve restored injustice when it came all of this stuff, then what you had to do was simply acknowledge any of the bad things you've done in the past, but you haven't. So I don't oh, yes. think- Connor points was on, was in our, just so you know, this fellow over here came and did an AMA on our server yesterday, a community AMA, and it was actually very productive and very nice. Um, so, uh, it's, it's, um, I think that Connor, so I should probably talk about Connor a little bit because Connor and I have a bit of a past. So Connor and I have, have bumped heads many times on these panels and- at first, it was very bloody, and um, it was very bloody. We really didn't like each other at first, it seemed. Mostly, it seemed he didn't like me, um, but we chilled out over time, and um, my Twitch chat is getting nuked by Nazis. Oh, great. Um, that's not fun. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, oh my god, there's so many. Oh my god, there's so goddamn many. Okay, well, uh, sorry about that. Thanks for letting me know. Um, thank you, Pan Nesman. If we could, it, can we get some? Uh, can we get some mods to just keep an eye on Twitch chat? Yeah, because Twitch is probably going to be getting hit hard since we're covering this right now. Um, yeah, there's a lot of Nazis. Uh, they don't like me. Turns out, turns out they don't like me very much. So, here's the thing, Connor. I don't think Connor is a Nazi. Uh, I don't even know if Connor. Like, I think Connor has some fascistic policies. But I don't think that Connor is like a fascist either. I really like Connor because I think Connor is a very real person. And also, when you if you ask Connor something he doesn't know about, he'll just say, I don't know about that. And he did that um, yesterday, uh, which was nice to see. So, uh, like, I don't know. Uh, I think Connor has some things that he needs to work on with regard to, like, how he understands, like, the concept of the state and stuff. But don't worry. We're going to talk about that um in the future because i want to have a sit down conversation with connor about uh theories around the state and the and etc cetera, etc cetera. so that should be really fun um uh but but anyway i just wanted to let you know we did have him on our channel yesterday for a ama and it went very well um connor was very clear about some of his disagreements with lauren um but he has sort of like a colleague level respect for lauren which I can understand. Uh, I can understand that. Um, I wish that he would go a little harder, but I also understand his positions, and he is willing to critique other righties, and I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. So, yeah. Uh, let us continue with the debate. Okay? Let's do it. Let's, let's continue with the debate. Let's do this. I think the idea of you now doing this rebranding tour uh, is anything more than you just seeing the writing on the wall. That's ultimately what this all is. You knew what was happening to your peers, and uh, you were smart enough and astute enough to, to walk away from it. You're such a bitch, Lance. Okay. Bring it up. Well, Let's go. Um... Let's go. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, Happy I know. to have you all here today. Uh, I'm going to give us all a moment to set up. Uh, so, uh, since I know uh, a few of us are a little boomery when it comes to technology. So you can take a moment or two. No worries. Not pointing to anyone specific. Not, not pointing to anyone oh, specific. Oh, the audio level's fine. <laughs> oh, well, absolutely. Just wait. Okay, I'll, I'll. Okay, I'll call them out. They're Canadian. That helps. Uh -huh. them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's only like what three people. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Good to go, guys. Wonderful. Okay. I would like to welcome everybody to this event. Uh, I was brought in about two days ago, but I'm um, happy to host it. It is going to be on a host of issues, uh, Hopefully many of them Canadian-centric. So um, as, as an American, I'm going to feel a little uh, little left out of the subject matter. Our bacon it is not all of them versus Lauren. It is Lauren uh, and Connor Points versus um, Tale of Twin Rabbit and Lance. So I don't know Tale of Twin Rabbit. As I understand it, um, Tale of Twin Rabbit is like an associate of Lance's. I don't really know them very well. I've never heard of them. Um, but we'll see how it goes, okay? We'll see how this goes. Still better. Uh, I'm going to go over a few of the basic rules of, of my show. Uh, my show is a little different than most is because I'm a more of, also, of a progressive I am moderator our, than most. Uh, I'm going to keep some uh, notes. If people are interrupting too much, I will 
go in to make sure that people can clarify their positions and points. Isn't Lauren a white supremacist and stuff? Yes. Uh, Lauren is attempting to rebrand away from her uh, white identitarianism. Um, but uh, as far as I know, she still actually believes all of those things. She is a uh, believer of the like great replacement, although she has walked back slightly how severe she is on that. Um, Lauren Southern is also, you know, we'll, we'll talk about some of the other fun things about Lauren Southern. Um, uh, there's some fun facts that we can get into, um, that we'll, that we'll, we'll talk about, you know, as time goes on. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts about Lauren Southern. As you know, I also reviewed Lauren Southern's debate with, uh, Xander Hall, and I think Xander Hall did pretty good, but I recognized that uh, one of the things I recognize is that I think there are some genuine questions about uh, to be raised about platforming. And that's one of the things we're going to be talking about tonight as this goes on. Um, as this goes on, we are going to talk about specifically this ongoing question about the value of online debate. Um, as you know, I'm somebody who participates in a lot of online debate, but... You also probably know, if you watch my content, you probably know that I have a lot of critiques for online debate of my own. Um, so we're going to sort of, uh, in my opinion, you know, bring a little bit of nuance to this. Uh, uh, you know, myself. Just do it myself if nobody else is going to do it, okay? So let's get into this and let's see what, what else we can find. But that is the goal. The goal to think, the thing I want you all to be keeping in mind as we watch this is your questions about debate, your questions about the value of online debate, your questions about platforming. These are all things that have been coming up around this, and we're going to discuss this because I think it's a, a very, very good question. And I think there are some very good arguments on either side of, of this whole uh, debacle, and we're going to go through them as time goes on. Uh, so if there is ever a point where I, I think there's too much chaos going on, I'm not going to let it be blood sporty. I will jump in to assert myself. When I am talking, it is not to make a point. I'm not going to randomly come in to uh, make fun of Lauren Southern for playing League of Legends. I will just come in. The to... worst thing I've done. It is the worst thing you've done. Um, so I am going to purely be moderating. Now, my rules include, of course, nothing against terms of service. I would like to keep my job. Please do not delete my job from the internet. Uh, the second rule is we will not be attacking people's immutable characteristics. So you will not be going after people's, uh, whether they're a okay, race, remember, religion. Remember, Dylan has to keep it. Dylan has to keep it. Uh, he has to keep it at a certain level. That's just the reality. Dylan has to keep. He's the host. He's not allowed to, you know, do that. Now, the problem is, um, uh, the, the problem that, uh, the problem with this entire thing, and this is something that happened, uh, the only part of this debate that I saw, I tuned in for about five minutes before the debate started, and I saw, uh, Lauren Southern, like, oh, I'm such a boomer, you know, goofing around with, um, with, her audio settings like I did at the beginning of this this stream, um, which is, you know, uh, something that happens. But this is something I want people to pay attention to. These little things, when you give somebody like Lauren Southern a big, even if it's not bigger than her current platform, but when you give her a platform and she's able to just very much like hyper humanize herself to an audience in a very deliberate way, like, you know, being like, haha, the worst thing I've ever done is played League of Legends. I'm such a gamer, everyone. I'm such a gamer. There are, pr there are issues with that, right? Because it's hard for people to look at bad things when they feel like there's somebody in front of them that they can smile at and go, haha, cool. Um, oh, you know, she's just like us, whatever. But then at the same time, there's all of the stuff that Lauren's been doing for the last 10 years. And this is one of the re this is one of the points that we're going to be bringing up as we discuss this this issue of platforming. Um yeah. And uh it so we're going di to dive dive into that, but it is something that I think that we need to recognize, which is that like um you know, this was an opportunity for this exact sort of thing to happen for little fun banter, et cetera, et cetera. 
um, you know, to make it seem like, oh, she's just like a, you know, she's just a cute trad wife. She's just the cute Nazi who ha bungles up her her audio settings and plays League of Legends, you know. <laughs> and I do worry about that. Sugar Glass says, the same thing happened with Vosh and Charlie Kirk. Vosh calls him a disgusting person, a fascist, not that I disagree, but in person he does soften up a bit. Well, there's always that, right? You always are going to sof soften up a little bit in person, most of the time. Unless you're literally going there to kick each other's ass, it's normal that if you both agree to sit down and have a civil conversation, that you remain civil because you both agreed to do that. It's like, uh, it's like how, like, if two generals of opposing wars, like— if there were two generals in opposing wars and, and they like, uh, you know, they came together to, to work out a peace deal, they wouldn't shoot each other when they're sitting down to make a peace deal. Obviously, Charlie Kirk and Vosh aren't making a peace deal, but they have agreed to a civil conversation. So there has to be a certain level. Yeah, there has to be like a certain level of agreement there, you know? Um, now, this is a little different, though, because what we're talking about here is not like how you behave in a debate. It's instead how the debate itself um, helps or hurts Lauren Southern. So let's go into this again. Let's continue. Uh, anything of that sort. So if Lance wanted to make fun of Connor for his uh, his uh, belief in war, whatever weird religions and war, uh, Warhammer 40K, uh, he cannot do that. It is not allowed. Uh, another okay. rule of mine is that no slurs are allowed on my show because I just – I find them unpleasant and not productive for conversation. Uh, are you allowed to make small jabs if you want to? Yes, but I would encourage you not to. I don't think it's productive, and I think it makes you look silly. So that's just my tip from me to you. Other than that, uh, we will have a two-minute intro and two-minute outro segment. So if you prepared for a longer intro, you can use some of that prepared content for probably your outro, if you thought it was going to be five minutes, for example. Uh, is there anything I'm missing? from normal rules uh oh one last thing i have a chess timer uh this is different from most debates where i will keep track of uh, i know it's uh of, of both sides uh, how much time they use so if later in the discussion people are trying to get in and i see that one time has gotten uh an ordinate amount of time in comparison to the other i will make sure to give one side a few more speaking opportunities so we can balance it out more so each side is represented is there any questions about any of the rules that need to be clarified no. Okay. All good, Chief. There's no VOD. Wonderful. Uh, did somebody a, just start streaming? That's my fault. Oh, no problem. I okay. have corrected. So before we do the intros, I just want everybody to introduce themselves. I will. I don't want to whittle down your uh, time for your prepared statements. So I'm going to give it to Connor to introduce themselves and shout themselves out first. Yeah, hi guys. My name is Connor. I identify as centrist or center right. I'm a law enforcement veteran, a military veteran, and a science fiction, philosophy, and religion nerd. Um, so if any of that interests you, you can just go into YouTube, type in counterpoints, common spelling. You can find my content there. I, I, I um, like Dylan, that's you know, pretty much it. So thank you for having me, Dylan. Thank you for hosting. I sincerely appreciate it. Wonderful. No problem. I'm going to throw it over now to Lauren Southern. Hi, my name is Lauren. I am a documentary filmmaker. Uh, my reputation probably precedes me in a lot of these circles, but if you only watch The Surfs or maybe Dylan, you may have some opinions about me that aren't quite accurate, and I look forward to uh, potentially presenting those in this debate. And thank you for having me, Dylan. I appreciate it. I'll turn Wonderful. it up. Now we're How's that? Over better? To Tale of That's two probably rabbits. much better. There we go. That's probably better. Actually, I'd prefer to let Lance go first. Okay. Uh, Lance can go first. Uh, sure. Hey, I'm Lance of the Surfs. Uh, I'm political dumpster fire uh, comedy garbage on the internet, and you can find me everywhere social media is sold. Wonderful. Now we can throw it over to Tale of Two Rabbits. Lance is loud. It's true. I don't Hello. Know how to... My name is Tale of Two Rabbits here on Twitch. It is Twin Rabbit on YouTube. I tend to do mostly hmm. streaming of Let's Plays of games that are indigenous and indigenous adjacent. So either games that have been created by indigenous authors and developers, or they contain a lot of indigenous related themes. And on my Twitter, I'm sorry, on my Twitter, I shit post on my YouTube. The I don't videos know are a lot about indigenous history, archaeology, and uh, a little bit about video game history, too. Okay, wonderful. Now we're going to go into prepared statements. Now let me clarify for the audience uh, what we're going to be talking 
talking about today so there's no confusion. Uh, the topics that uh, were given to me uh, was Now, that I, I do find it a little weird. Okay, so on one hand, I completely understand why a smaller content creator wouldn't want to have Cam on when they're going up against Lauren Southern. But if that's all but if that's true, I also wonder why you would have such a smaller content creator like pop up on um you know like like pop up on a on a panel like this when there's that much risk. They've had so much hate since this panel they've deactivated everything. They made good video essays. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll take a look. We'll take a look and we'll see what we can find out. I, I've not, again, I haven't watched this. I've only heard through the grapevine, so we'll find out. The debate will be primarily about retributive and vigilante justice for historical wrongs, and there might be some uh, some secondary hey, fine. discussions, Good to see you. if time permits it, about the recent burning of Catholic churches in Canada, uh, the recent discovery of the uh, unmarked indigenous graves in the same nation, and the actions of the Canadian government in the past, if it could fall under the historical definition okay, of Okay, so they just do voice in general. Uh, do okay. we all agree on the to uh, discuss topics that I, there's no confusion? By the way, we have 451 concurrent YouTube viewers, but we only have 250 likes. So if you all who are here, if you're enjoying this and having a good time, please click through the U to the YouTube video and press the like button on the YouTube video. I'm not kidding you. It really helps us. Please. That's how you can help us. Seriously. Thank you. Let's continue. Wonderful. Sounds okay, good. we will we will start with counterpoints with a prepared two minute statement. You will be timed, uh, and I will give you a warning once you have about twenty seconds left. Yeah. So in preparation for this debate, <clears throat> I think the primary thing that I landed on was the fact that uh, burning churches is just unacceptable. I understand that there's a contentious history in Canada, but there's no real excuse for throwing a Molotov cocktail inside of a building. You can have descriptive reasons, much like riots. You can understand why something is going on, but you probably can't morally justify it. So that's the number one contention that I would have. Number two, when it comes to indigenous history, I think that uh, the audience will probably be surprised, or, or hopefully they're not surprised, that there is a lot of concession for the the sins of the past and, and all of that kind of stuff. And we can get into that. I'm interested to talk about definitions because obviously the word genocide is being brought into this conversation. So I want to talk about that as okay. an aspect of this. And then ultimately, I think this conversation is indicative of where we are at as a continent as a whole. Um, Europeans conquered this continent, colonized this con continent and did some nefarious stuff in order to do that. Um, we have done the sins in the past. Now we have to reckon with those sins and move forward as a society. So I'm hoping that we can kind of, uh, even if it's very uncomfortable, even if it's contentious. Pollock Master says, I already don't like Lance's opening. He kind of doesn't take himself too seriously. And I think if you're going to pull more people to your side or take what you said seriously, that you're saying you're a political dumpster fire is not the way to go. I mean, you know, I don't entirely disagree with that. I do think downplaying there was probably a mistake, especially given the gravity of the subject that we're talking about we're talking about genocide here so i tend to agree with you i think that that sort of downplaying isn't the right move i don't think it's like it it is uh is like terrible but i just i don't know that it's uh i don't know that it's particularly um useful i'm hoping that maybe we can we can do that here a little bit and i'll leave it there and we can go oh, that's fine. yeah i know he there. does but you know. Now we're going to throw it over to Lauren Southern. Hey, okay, so I've written a little something, haven't written anything else for the debate, but today we have framed this debate as a discussion, obviously, around retributive and vigilante justice, and whether or not Canada is guilty of genocide. But what we are debating in reality here is acts of political terrorism, the committing of hate crimes, the burning down of religious sites, including the recent burning down of refugee churches, and those who are hell-bent on making excuses for this behavior, all based on the recent discovery of mass graves of Indigenous children, which activists have portrayed as evidence of genocidal actions by the Canadian government, which were covered up. The only problem with this entire debate is, firstly, yeah, I'll be even it, if worry. this happened and the Canadian government committed genocide, there would be no excuse to commit hate crimes today, especially against people who had no connection to said actions. And an equally important and shocking revelation should be is that no mass graves were found in the first place. This is an entirely false narrative. 
no narrative. No one here today is going to deny historical injustices happen. Now, some of you might be going, what the fuck? <clears throat> but you are about to find out how genocide denial works, okay? So what she is doing right now is she is saying, well, they weren't technically mass graves, which is true. Most of them weren't mass graves or mass graves at all. However, um, no one here has actually argued or used the term mass grave yet, at least as far as I know. They were unmarked cemeteries. Yes. So while she is um, on a very, very technical level, correct, that there, were, there wasn't any mass graves. There were massive cemeteries of unmarked graves. Now, if you're wondering what the difference between those two things is, let me explain to you because I can explain that to you. A mass grave is a big ditch where lots of people are pushed in and all the skeletons are uh, all of the dead bodies and skeletons all just pile up on top of each other and uh and then that's it and they all just get buried together that's a mass grave okay a uh an unmarked grave is where they bury somebody individually but they don't mark it okay now the children mind you the children who died were not put into mass graves. There were no mass killings of children. Children weren't walked out into a, uh, a parking lot and shot and then pushed into a grave. What happened was a ton of children died from horrific abuse and neglect over time and then were buried all in the same place individually um, in unmarked graves. So the distinction here is essentially essentially nothing yeah this is a distinction that is only technical it is semantics quite it is pedantry yes this is a semantic difference while you can argue yes there were technically no mass graves what there were was there were grave sites that had tons and tons and tons of unmarked dead abused children in them okay so lauren is lying with a technical truth and this is how genocide denial works. They always go, well, it wasn't this many. You see, oh, well, you know, it wasn't six million. It was actually four million. Oh, it wasn't four million. It was actually, eh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Did we get a YouTube dono? Hey, thank you very much, Katya. You know what I will. Thank you very, very much. It's like the difference between a mass murderer and a serial killer. Yes, that is a very good point, Fursifer. Fursifer brings up, it's like distinguishing the difference between a mass killer and a, a mass murderer and a serial killer. A serial killer has a pattern and goes and kills multiple people at different points, whereas a mass killer uh, runs in and kills a whole bunch of people. Uh, for the average viewer, for the average person analyzing this, there is no meaningful difference. But you see, Lauren is a genocide denier. So Lauren is going to try and do that. And I want us all to be aware that this is the case because this is going to happen a lot. And it's starting right out the gate. A, a denial or a downplaying based on technicality. And I know this is going to happen for the entire debate because that's how genocide denial positions go. Let's continue. And no one is going to deny there were deliberately children taken from their homes and educated to no longer have their culture and language. And that is horrific. I don't think that should happen to anybody. Using the word educated there is so wrong. That's another example of it. They, they weren't educated. They were tortured. They were literally beaten, tortured, neglected. However, distorting the past exaggerating atrocities, inventing the existence of mass graves to make it appear as though Canada committed and covered up some sort of holocaust. Invented the existence of mass graves. No one invented the existence of mass graves. What you are pointing at is a, a, uh, is a semantic difference and then using that to paint the entire story as false. 
is a horrific mishandling of the truth, and it does nothing to help us uncover and heal from genuine wrongdoings which occurred. And in fact, it has caused more trauma today for Canadians and Indigenous communities who are now seeing their communities destroyed, their churches burnt to the ground, I don't understand. Why on earth would you defend such a thing by denying it? How does this benefit them? That's a great question. Let me explain that. How does this benefit someone like Lauren Southern? Well, I want you to think, um, I want you to think about this. Lauren Southern is, for all intents and purposes, a white identitarian, aka, I would argue, a white supremacist. I, some white identitarians will say, well, I don't technically believe that white people are better. I just think that I like white people and therefore I want to be around white people and I want to give white people. It's the same thing. It's just a very minor um, difference. For her position, the idea that white people never did anything atrocious is very good because it allows her to make to, to claim that, oh, actually, you know, it's not, uh, you know, it's not that bad. It, 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 these bad things didn't happen. White people did a good job. It's actually, you know, the natives' fault. More pedantry? Of course. Yeah, it is pedantry. They do that all the time, though. Um, think about this. I've talked about this on stream before, but think about the difference between a paleoconservative, a fascist, a, a trad con, a traditional conservative. What is the difference? It's not even like, and, and it's not, they're, it doesn't map over to the left very well, right? Because there is a huge difference between an anarcho-communist and a Marxist-Leninist communist. There is a world of difference in their prescriptions, in their approach there. But there is almost no difference between a tradcon, a Nazi, a fascist, a paleoconservative, a white identitarian, and a white supremacist. These things, their ideas are all the same. They use different terms so they can keep this little euphemism going. It's a, it's a, it's a chain of euphemisms that they keep going. Anyway, that's the reason why they do this. That's the reason why they do the pedantry. And relations ripped apart are they are worried that it makes white people look bad yes are they worried about the government paying out huge reparations to non-white people yes they are they do not want they do not want this legitimized because they want white people to not have to have any responsibility for the atrocities that have been committed in the name of white supremacy that is what it boils down to at the end of the day even further okay seven seconds to spare we're now going to throw it over to lance from the serfs Hey everybody, so I'm going to say right out of the gates that neither me or my partner uh, support or condone the burning of any religious institutions. Uh, what we're here today to talk about is obviously restorative and res uh, retributive justice in relation to the residential school system in Canada and the involvement of the Catholic Church therein. I'm going to try and say this as quickly and concisely as I can. Um, the original uh, founding father of this country, Sir John A. Macdonald, was a white nationalist. And I don't mean that in the sense that lefties like to call every single person they don't like a Nazi. Uh, he was a person who believed in the superiority of the Aryan race. He said it frequently. He, in Parliament, would say things that were considered to be True, uh, outlandish glass. and racist by the sign of the times. And he started both the Indian Act in Canada and the reservation school system in Canada. Uh, he also instigated the reserve system in Canada. Now, for anyone who's unaware, uh, the Indian reservation school system, what it essentially did was took 150,000 children away from their parents' arms and forcibly put them in institutions where they were systematically beaten, tortured, raped. Uh, they had their culture removed from them, their language. Every aspect of them was destroyed. Those who tried to escape would often die in the cold or drown in the water. So it was a horrifying experience by all accounts. Now, no, the Catholic Church bad. themselves have never formally apologized for this. Neither have they been held to account for the thousands upon thousands of priests and nuns who, again, tortured and raped children. So I believe if we're going to be talking about uh, restorative justice, uh, the first place to begin would be that they have to both uh, be held accountable for the crimes that they've committed, as well as the fact that they have to, in some form or another, uh, pay retribution to those in which they've harmed. Thanks. Okay, with 18 seconds to spare, now I'm going to throw it over to Tale of Two Rabbits for the last intro of the debate. I would uh, 
first like to thank Lance for asking me to join him today and Dylan's Luscious Locks for moderating. Um, I open, as I so often do, with a story. In 1601, Juan de Onate visited a gigantic agricultural and industrial center of more than 20,000 people in what is now central Kansas. Because he was a conquistador, he then you, kidnapped Kitty. and tortured Appreciate four that. children to identify the houses of the town's leaders, much. and immediately afterward, he waged a war to destroy the city with an army of nearly a thousand soldiers. It was a mass slaughter. For the next 500 years, the school-taught history of the United States was that tribes of the plains were barely organized, semi-nomadic hunter-gatherers who knew only territorial wars and primitivism. And then... In 2016, using records, archaeological fieldwork, and remote sensing technology, Etsanoa once again became a fact. The stories natives had been telling for generations were finally again acknowledged as fact. As has happened many times in recent years, the U.S. was forced to again confront the cruelty and lies that had been perpetrated against the indigenous peoples right up to this very day. In May of 2021, using records, archaeological fieldwork, and remote sensing technology, the stories of the residential schools recorded by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's report and told by natives for generations were finally again acknowledged as fact. Canada is presented with two possibilities when such simple and straightforward modifications to the histories that we were all taught as children are uncovered. We can, as in the case of Etsanoa, accept the correction, accept the native stories were true all along, and move forward with the knowledge that wrongs were committed that must be reckoned with. Or hmm. we can choose, as Lauren apparently has, what has brought us here today refuse the most basic and straightforward facts in favor of denial, deflection, and dis- Okay, so something, look, no one should ever agree to a conversation with Lauren Southern where Lauren Southern doesn't have her camera on because, oh my God, Lauren Southern cannot like poker face at all. She's like getting angry here right now and it is, I don't know, maybe that plays to her audience, but to me, oh my god, I find that so funny. Like, I, and I say that, mind, mind you, I say that as somebody who, I'm very expressive, you know? But I'm very expressive because I want to be expressive. Not because I'm like, like, leeching a poker face. It's missile. I come here as witness to those facts, as one small voice in a chorus to those stories. I come here to discuss justice for those wrongs and the restoration of dignity for those who suffered what up. was erased. Thank you. Okay. So I just want to re-establish the rules one last time. If it gets out of control, I will assert myself and shut down the conversation. If you believe it is unfair, I'm sorry to say that I don't care. I will do my best to, to restore. I'm a law and order moderator, law and order. Uh, other than that, I think everybody else knows no terms of service violations of any sort. Uh, we are now going to have an open format for about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes at max. Uh, and then with two minute outros, uh, anyone is free to start the conversation. It is now open for dialogue. Well, considering that I've just been accused of denying basic facts, I would really like uh tale of twin rabbit to describe which basic facts I've denied. Is this a grindcore shirt? No, uh, it was a, I mean, it's inspired by grindcore, but it was a, it was a satanic panic shirt, but something happened in the wash and all of the ink is peeling off, which makes me very sad. Um, I don't know what happened to it. it. It was in great condition and then something hit it and it fell apart, which sucks. Cause I love this shirt, but it still looks pretty good on stream. It's just in real life. It doesn't anyway, let's continue. In your I, opening think, statement, I think it got washed in a hot wash, these yeah. These deaths didn't occur, and that these bodies weren't found. That's not what I said, is it? I said there were no mass graves found. Ah, uh, oh, there you go. Now, this is actually, I think this is an okay move, is to call, is to make her, um, is to make her sound like a pedant. Because everyone's gonna go, oh, come on. If you confront that, like, on the nose, yeah. I would be curious to know what your evidence is for that claim. Firstly, I would like to ask both you and Lance to describe which mass graves have been found in Canada, and then I can respond to that. Would you like to be more specific, as in the one that well, was... Well, you're in... saying I'm lying by saying no mass graves have been found, so tell me, where have the mass graves been found? Well, the story that kicked it off was the Kempelus residential school 
mass graves mm -hmm. that were identified using ground penetrating radar. Right, and ground penetrating radar cannot detect bodies. Are you saying that as an assertion? Absolutely, you can go look this up. In fact, the woman who conducted the GPR herself actually went to my university. Uh, she said herself, we cannot confirm anything. This is simply an assumption based on, and I would encourage people watching to go and take a look at what images ground penetrating radar show. They just show anomalies in the um okay youtube ground you right? they don't give you any context they don't tell you if bodies are there the anomalies could appear That's to good. be graves do they know if this grave site is just an overgrown graveyard do they know if it was the community graveyard do they know if there are any bodies in what these ground anomalies look like no and this is the facts of the case the woman who did the ground penetration test in kamloops which sparked this all off stated we cannot know if there are any bodies under here until someone has dug this up. Okay, hold on. Let's do a quick fast fact check here. Let's do a quick fact check here. Let's just do a quick uh, fact check. Okay. Gruesome discovery took decades, and for some survivors of the Kamloops Indian Residential School in Canada, the confirmation that children as young as three were buried on the school grounds crystallized the sorrow. So let's get into the details here. Let's see if she's even right on the details, because I feel like she's not... But let's let's go double check here. Where's the uh, where's the story about how they found it? Let's see if I can find it. Hold on. Let's see. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Look at this. She said the area was surveyed due to a number of factors, including the oral history of children being woken in the night to dig burial ho holes in the orchard, plus a juvenile rib bone and a, st and a tooth that were both found there. It is important to note that remote sensing, such as GDPR, is not necessary to know that children went missing. This fact has already been recognized by indigenous communities for generations. Okay. Evidence has existed in the government and church archives for more than a century. Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Committee's Commission's final report identified between 4,000 and 6,000 missing children, but anticipated these numbers would actually be greater. All residential school landscapes are likely to contain burials of missing children. Remote sensing, such as GD GPR, merely provides some spatial, spatial f specificity. So she's not telling the truth here. Again, she's using pedantry. Um to avoid speaking the actual truth here. While you might not be able to identify individual bodies with ground penetrating radar, which I don't even know if that's true. That's an assertion she's making. It might be true, um, but it doesn't matter because what they're doing is they are looking to find the evidence necessary to support uh, or to uh, uh, elucidate claims that have already been uh, correlated with other information. So the thing is, there is Catholic church records, there are Canadian records, there are indigenous community records showing that children went missing, and there are uh, documented, extensively documented stories that are um, showing um, that these children did disappear. The, the ground penetrating radar just shows Yes, there is actually a whole bunch of bodies here, just like was claimed. The radar proves that there may have been bodies in the ground. This doesn't prove a mass grave. No, that's not what it does, Rare Cheddar. Hold on. Let's explain this again. You know what? We're going to do a quick drawing stream. Now, we're going to talk about this, but it's important that we get the uh, that we get the facts out. Okay, so let me just show you something real quick here. All right? Watch. Okay? Hold on a second. Here we go. We're going to draw. We got to do the drawing, okay? Look, I need to illustrate what we're talking about here so that people can understand what the hell we're talking about, okay? So, the situation that we have here, okay? All right. Look, the situation that we have is we have, let's do red for Catholic Church first. We have the Catholic Church records, okay? These show missing children okay 
Now, we have the Canadian government. We'll also do red for the Canadian government. Then, we have the Canadian government. Here we go. Whatever. That's not exactly what a maple leaf looks like, but fuck you. Who cares? Uh, this is the Canadian government. Here, let's just use the curl tool. Come on. All right. We have the Canadian government's uh, records that also prove that the children went missing. We have the, we'll use green here. We have the First Nations records that also show the children going missing. And we also have a big combination of paper documents, of film documents. We'll put like, we'll make it like a little film thing like this, you know, there's like a film, a film reel. Um, and that now, so we have film documentation, we have uh, documentation on paperwork here, and we also now have, just so you know, yes, we have oral tradition. Yep, we can do, how do we do this? Sm spoken word. We'll do like a little bubble that goes like this. We have spoken word. And now we have radar. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And we'll put a little box here. So, bam, look at this. This is all of the information we now have that points to mass death. Even if, even if it were true that this did not confirm to complete specificity, all of the other records still remain. So, it's actually quite simple. This, this radar allows people to identify where these things may have happened. Now, they're still deciding mass death does not equal mass grave. Are you a moron? Rare cheddar, are you stupid? Okay, because um, right now you're being very stupid. I have already explained that you do not need a um, mass death, mass grave. The mass grave is has been imposed by Lauren here. Okay, the mass grave thing is not the claim. The claim has never been about mass graves. You see, Lauren said about mass graves because she's a genocide denier. She says, oh, th they didn't find any mass graves. Well, nobody said that they found mass graves. Or if they did, that's just somebody colloquializing. Wait, was it? Can you... Okay, here's here's the deal. Uh, Victor Nodinson, Victor, Victor Nodinson, if you can find at the beginning, if you can find them claiming a mass grave before Lauren Southern says it, um, here, watch this. I can help you. There you go. Bye. Oh, wait, sorry. There we go. Um, yeah. Um, we'll see. We will see, won't we? We're... Okay. Hey, hey, Victon, we're doing a live watch and react. So, what is up with you people? Y you're here watching my stream. I haven't finished the debate yet. We're analyzing it as we go, and I like to fill in some info. I think there are two ways we can analyze this. We can analyze the debate in a vacuum, and we can analyze the debate as to its truthfulness. People are wild today. Holy moly. Anyway. This is not even necessarily uh, proposed, but the idea that these things don't... Um, the idea that these things can't prove at the, it down to a T who died in there or anything like that doesn't matter at all. It's a non sequitur. It doesn't matter. It absolutely is pedantry. It absolutely is pedantry. Um, it's, this is really, really simple. Are you ready? If the average person, if an average person says mass grave, what they mean is that there were a bunch of wrongfully killed people put there. Now, if you want to go to, like, the UN definition of a mass grave, you're probably correct. It probably doesn't 
meet the legal definition of a mass grave, but that doesn't matter because people are trying to communicate something. So this is complete pedantry. You are, they are make, uh, Lauren is fixating on the word mass grave and not the sentiment or the truth of the situation. The truth of the situation is that a lot of children were killed and buried over a long period of time in a wrongful manner. And it, whether, it doesn't matter whether they fit the UN definition of, of mass grave. That's all I'm going to say on this, okay? Let's continue. Up and they've exhumed the bodies if they are there. And not only that, but the tribe leader there in Canada of the Kamloops band that brought out the initial statement about this said, even if there are bodies under the ground here, it's not a mass grave. And these are just preliminary findings, which has been the... Okay. But it doesn't matter if it's technically a mass grave. Again, pe pedantry. This is pedantry. General consensus of all of these grave sites found that they are not mass graves and portraying it as such is deliberately misstating the truth and trying to make it seem as though Canada were committing some holocaust where they were lining children up, shooting them and throwing them in a grave that they dug. When we are talking about- Do you see this? By, she takes it to the unbelievable extreme, the, the furthest imaginable extreme to make what actually happened seem less bad. What's up, Jimbo? The mass grave is a for poor framing that Lauren introduced. None of the First Nations use that phrase. They use unmarked gravesite. Yes, I know. That's why I'm saying this is a semantic argument that is... It, now, it may have worked as a rhetorical trick. It may have worked as a rhetorical trick. But let's see. I don't know why they didn't just concede. Well, we don't know yet. Maybe they will. Graveyards, if there are any bodies at all. Okay, you just said that the woman who did the GPR examination went to college with you. The director of the company that actually did it is a man named Julio. So who did you go to school with? No, no, she's an instructor at the university I went to. And I mean, I can read so her name here. Let me, so this company. is the girl who did the GPR technology test, which once again, GPR cannot uh, pick up organic matter. Her name was Sarah Bellew. I'm again. A distinction that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if ground penetrating radar can pick up organic matter. You don't need you don't need to see or organic matter to go when there are ten records that all say there is a mass grave there is a, a unmarked grave right here. You don't need to be able to see the organic matter to run that thing over and go, Yep, there's a giant divot in the ground that's full of something. And every record that we have says it's a mass grave or whatever. Not let's avoid the word mass grave so that we don't act. They just keep saying the word mass grave. This is what they do to you. Unmarked graves. You don't have to. You literally don't have to be able to see that. So I hope that they'll call this, but I don't know if they will. Are they not digging it up to be respectful? Yes. There is a, first of all, okay, this is another thing I need to explain. Something you all need to understand about um, uh, this situation is there are both legal, spiritual, and emotional components to whether or not they are going to exhume the, gra the, the people in the graves, the bodies in the graves. Because the problem is that, first of all, some religions forbid you from exhuming the dead. Other, uh, some laws forbid you from exhuming the dead, and some people don't want to exhume the dead because that can be horrifying. Can you imagine what it would be like if your whole life you grew up like, let's just put yourselves in the shoes there for a second, okay? Just for just one second, I want you to imagine that you lived through one of these residential school, um, uh, you know, residential school uh, experiences, and your whole life you knew what was true. And then you and everyone you know have to sit there while every news station in the world rolls footage of your friends' desiccated corpses being put on the news. That would be horrifying. Many people don't want to do that, okay? Many people do not want to do that. So that is part of the reason why there is hesitancy as to whether um, 
as to whether there will be an exhumation. And there's this happens every time. Go look. Go on. If you don't believe me, go and look at the history of any investigation of a genocide or an atrocity like this. There is always controversy over whether they're going to dig up the bodies or not. Because digging them up can be very traumatic. It can um, cause huge problems. And yes, some of these schools closed as, as late as 1996. So many of these bodies aren't that old. Exhume means remove from a grave. Let's continue. Let's continue. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm terrible with French names. Uh, so she Wait, conducted the search herself, and she stated, nothing she has found can be confirmed unless excavations are done at the scene. These excavations have not happened. Uh, I didn't so get you, your tail to you rabbits. So enough. this is from the Globe well, and Mail. Give me, give hold, on, hold on. Give me a moment. You were, I was you trying to hear. Before. Give me. Okay, let me just start. When I'm talking, nobody else is supposed to talk. No, was, the uh, final residential school closed in 1996. Yes. I was, didn't hear what Tales to Roberts was saying earlier. Uh, could you repeat what you were trying to say? Well, at this point, I'm a little bit lost. She's friends with someone whose name she doesn't know how to pronounce, who isn't the director of the company who was hired to do the scanning. So at this point, I don't understand exactly what it is we're discussing. I thought we were here to discuss burning of churches and restorative justice. If you'd like to... Oh, my favorite challenge GPR and whether or not it's efficacious in the use of archaeological remains. I would oh, point so you good. to Etsanoa. Are you also challenging the identification of literally every site in the Americas that has? Can used I GPR? can I jump ahead? Wait, I would let tell two rabbits finish what they were trying to say. Can you finish that? Because again? this is outside the scope of this conversation. I keep hearing affirmations of, oh, well, I know a person. I don't care that you know a person. I am talking about the company that did the work. I'm okay. talking about the woman who every Canadian article has stated did the search in Kamloops. And anyone can look this up. Go look up who did the... Okay. Rare Cheddar says, premise one, there's killings in the past. Premise two, the bodies aren't that old. Conclusion, there are killings as recently as 1996. Are you okay? That doesn't even function as a sentence. That doesn't even function as a sentence, let alone let alone as an argument what the fuck are you talking about rare cheddar you need to like take a minute you need to take a minute and think a little harder okay gpr test in kamloops i'm reading the globe and mail right now uh the title anthropologist explains how she concluded 200 children were buried at kamloops residential school okay stop right and, there stop yeah. right there how she concluded the 215 bodies yeah. were buried. And so with it, once again, that's just said. media, media bullshit, because the article literally says she also stressed hey, her findings cannot be confirmed unless excavations are done at the scene. Can I? That doesn't mean that's the opposite of what she says it means. So she's saying, oh, you can't be confirmed. Yeah, because radar isn't your eyeballs being in the ground. If you want to confirm with 100% accuracy, you have to exhume the bodies. That's just how it is. But all of the evidence that we have shows that there is no reason. Yeah, yeah Lauren shot herself in the foot, but we'll see about, we'll see if it goes. And Can I jump ahead between the two of y'all? Okay, uh, one second. Lance was trying to say something before you, and so I wanted to make sure he got a chance to speak. No, I want I wanted to, I wanted Tail to finish what he's saying, and then I'll go after not, Well, don't spoil anything. Okay, so then we'll have Tail finish what he's saying, then we'll move over to counterpoints. Okay. If she would like to challenge the findings of basic archaeology, then she's welcome to do so, but that's not why we're here, as I was led to believe. You made this accusation against me. I responded, and I'm citing the individual who found made these oh, findings oh god can i can i bridge these two fucking perspectives please because otherwise we're going to spend the whole time on fucking minutia okay okay thank you all right so let, let's go ahead and bridge these two perspectives for the love of god let's the primary contention is not you know gpr or whether or not kids died or anything like that the whole reason is the use of definitions and words ultimately i would like to avoid semantics Con connor's right connor's right wait a minute connor is actually helping the connor's correct here see this is why i respect connor a little bit you know okay that's not true i respect connor i do just flat respect connor but 
I don't know how I feel about him being willing to go on the same side as Lauren Southern in all this. I'll talk to him about that. And instead of like fighting over semantics, I would like to talk about the concepts that we're trying to convey. The main objection that I think Lauren is poking to, that I would poke to as well, is basically the use of mass graves. When we use words like mass graves, basically what I conceptualize is people handed shovels, marched out into the woods, executed, and then thrown in shallow graves, and then bought, and then dirt, dirt loosely thrown over them. Okay, that's the primary contention here is whether or not that's what's occurred. And based off of historical fact, which I'm sure tale of two rabbits and the serfs can assert one way or the other whether or not they agree with this that's not what happened they didn't march out 200 kids into the woods execute them one at a time throw them in a ditch and throw dirt over them and there i have more points to this right but nobody made that claim they are arguing with a straw man that was created by lauren and i and this is very frustrating because uh I really wish that they would have taken that position from this from the get-go and said we never made a claim about mass graves we're talking about this this is a yeah this is a a uh, straw man but to be fair if Lauren used a debate tactic and it worked which it seems to have I'm very happy at least that Connor was the one who was able to bridge this gap and I think that's because Connor has a different intention in this conversation than Lauren does but I just want to let you Let's just bridge this gap on the definition of mass graves and keep it moving. Okay, Lauren, sure. you haven't said anything yet. Would you like to speak at all? Yeah, totally. So, uh, Lauren, you're already starting out with conspiracy theories. Whether or not you agree with the way the technology is being used, that's really not up for debate right now. Because at the end of the day, the people who have been accused right now of uh, accomplishing these crimes, um, they, in no short form, have already, um, like, you've received uh a condolence from the pope as an acknowledgement that something has happened here there has been multiple instances such as the mohawk tribe that have actually had to exhume bodies after ground penetration had been used this is not something in which the ground penetrating uh radars have discovered these bodies and then suddenly we don't have any idea about whether or not this is occurring also the testimonies that have been given in the truth and reconciliation commission which are numerous we're talking thousands and thousands of people have attested to the treatment of the children in these residential schools once again that is not a matter up for did they line them up against the walls and shoot every single one of them in the face that is not exactly what happened here once they became wards of the state as in once they became the property of the federal government or the provincial government their treatment then became their responsibility so whether they died from experimental uh starvation which is something that happened whether they died from high rates of tuberculosis which is something that happened whether they died from torture rape or abuse which is something that happened one in five children was sexually abused in these schools that was sexual abuse that was happening while, again, they were children as wards of the state. So, it so, by the way, I think that this is an effective answer. Because what he does here, um, what he does here is he points out that, that nobody was talking about mass graves. Now, I don't think he did it as clear as he could have. But here he points out we're talking about long-term issues. We're not talking about this idea of a mass grave that she invented. She made that argument. And I understand, by the way, where people could say that, right? Again, I already talked about this, how colloquially any person who's trying to understand this, who's not an expert on every issue of it, is going to hear a bunch of kids are dead and their brain is going to go, yeah, that's a mass grave. Because most people don't have a definition that is the same reason as why people will call certain things genocides that might not technically be a genocide they might it might be uh, uh some other type of mass killing it might be some other type of ethnic cleansing or whatever there are there there are all kinds of ways to play the euphemism game but what we do is you have to acknowledge like what are the most people who are listening to this story are are going to come away using a colloquial term like mass grave that her position is a, is in my in in my opinion absurd but it is very typical of genocide deniers. It doesn't matter how you want to try and skirt past whether or not these uh, these crimes that occurred. Okay, I'd like to address that. Um, sure. So, okay. I, I'm. Do you want to give? It was towards Lauren, but are you okay with counter responding? 
Uh, yeah, he can respond. Actually, Connor, can I just quickly uh, make one clarification and then I'll jump to you? Um, I never stated atrocities didn't happen at these schools. It was a very unfortunate thing in the 1800s and 1900s, early 1900s, particularly in general, that there were horrific. Literally, literally. Just textbook genocide denial. I never said anything unfortunate didn't happen. It was unfortunate that the church under oversaw the deaths of thousands of children. Big things going on at orphanages, boarding schools, residential schools, of course, and there's proof of this. But you have asserted, and I don't want to see you walk back on this unless you're going to admit it, that these were mass graves. You have No, they didn't. Am I wrong? Did am I wrong in this? I don't believe that they ever asserted that it was mass graves, did they? Anyway, regardless, once again, even if they did, even if they did say the word mass graves, that is still a semantic problem. It's a, it's a bad rhetorical step. I agree it is a bad rhetorical step. Okay, so I'm uh, with all due respect, one random tweet from months ago does not qualify, in my opinion, as like being wrong about this. Asserted that they are evidence of genocide when the very chiefs of these tribes who you're saying are talking about the lived experience in the area have stated these are not mass graves. J.E. Beck says maybe Lauren means a tweet that somebody made. Well, yeah, but wait a second. Hold on a minute. If that's true, if it's about a tweet, that's different. And I don't think that that's a fair argument. But again, here's the problem. Here, The problem that we have so far is that Lance didn't reject the characterization. And I understand why, but he should have rejected that characterization and it would have made for a conversation on the substance and not on the semantics. Because it's very convenient um, for uh, the media use the word mass grave. Yep, well, great, so who cares? Okay, hold on a second. No, 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 what? I'm interested in this. You know what? Let's find out. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Bum, bum, bum! A mass grave is a grave containing multiple human corpses which may or may not be identified p prior to burial. The United Nations has defined a criminal mass grave as a burial site containing three or more victims of execution, although an exact definition is not unanimously agreed upon. Mass graves are usually created after many people die or are killed, and there is a desire to bury the corpses quickly for sanitation concerns. Although mass graves can be used during major conflicts like war and crime, in modern times they might be used during famine, epidemic, or natural disaster. Okay. So, every single person in here... I just want you all to just recognize is full of shit. It is perfectly reasonable for anyone other than a literal UN scholar to come to the conclusion that this is a mass grave. I'm sorry, but you are just dead wrong if you try to mis uh, if you try to misrepresent that. You're just wrong. Only the UN, the UN criminal definition is three or more victims of an execution. But it literally, there are three citations right here that exact definitions are not unanimously agreed upon. The argument that this isn't a mass grave when it indeed contains many, many bodies, many, many human corpses, which may or may not be identified prior to burial is bad faith. Absolutely bad faith. And here's the funny thing. I agree that this is effective rhetorically on Lauren's part, but on a, as as thinkers, as critical thinkers, everyone should look at this and see how manipulative it is. I wish that that would have been called out immediately, but let's see. Let's continue. Some of these, if the bodies are found, we don't know whose graves they even are. They could be a mix of settler children as well who died oh hey rare cheddar watch this there's a really easy thing that i can do for you it's called this bye bitch i'm tired of your garbage i've engaged with you like four times and i just don't care 
died of tuberculosis. And there was a pandemic going on at this time that the residential schools were at their peak. Uh, these could be various reasons, but they were no, not- like, Seriously though, I'm not gonna hesitate to ban, I'm not gonna hesitate to ban people who are annoying waste of time. Hey, Vadim, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Mass graves. And that is what I am calling you out on. That's what I'm calling out all these activists. How much did it cost to dye my hair? For this hairdo, I had it done two months ago. It has lasted very well. It cost me about $450 for uh, this and for the under, the undercut with the painting, which is faded now. You can't see it, but if you go watch my old streams, you'll be able to see that both sides were styled very uniquely. It was a huge project, but it was, uh, it was very, very much worth it, in my opinion. This song. It was a, I saved up for a long time. I haven't had a haircut in forever, so it was a big deal for me that have made this claim. And dying of tuberculosis, dying of disease. Well, of course we can talk about horrific, uh, the, the horrific conditions. To say that people were intentionally trying to give children tuberculosis, I think is absurd, but I'll let Connor keep going. Okay, yeah, so I just that. wanna jump ahead descriptively because at the end of the day, like they, this is what I guess frustrates me about this conversation. So we can describe wrongs and evils uh, on a spectrum. And we can just acknowledge that they're evil and that they're wrong. So for instance, uh, Lauren and I are both parents. If our children were taken from us, uh, forcibly taught another language, uh, wards of the state, and then and then by the way, like the, the demographics or, or the stats that I saw was literally like 70% uh, tu tuberculosis, like 20% like fire and 10% death from exposure during attempted escape. So if my son was kidnapped from my home, forced to learn another language, given a different name, and then tried to escape back to me and died in the woods, I can't think of a more horrific thing to experience, except for my family being dragged out all at once and being executed. So on a spectrum, it's pretty much like the second worst thing that I can imagine. And I think that we can concede that while also basically trying to get into the historical detail. And by the way, like this isn't so much so, so whenever I'm trying to describe past historical wrongs or anything like that, I'm not trying to excuse it, okay? I'm trying to be descriptive about the historical past. And then what I would say, I'll just jump out on this limb, is that by definition, by the UN's own definition, kidnapping children um, and then basically trying to destroy in whole or in part a, a certain d demographic group or whatever is the definition of genocide. The question is, when did this end? Whether or not this is comparable to other historical atrocities, which uh, if you're if, on a spectrum, you can probably say, um, and then whether or not that justifies current vandalism and current attacks on Christian churches. That's kind of like uh, the crux of it for me. Okay, one moment. Uh, I was given a link by Lance that I put in the chat about tuberculosis, and I will also put it in the group chat as well for everybody else. Uh, Lauren responded to Lance, so I want to give Lance some time to respond. Uh, yeah, so first off, there's uh, studies that have come out now that say researchers, uh, researchers say that tuberculosis at the residential schools was no accident. So again, that was one of the many things that were done to these children, including the fact that these children were experimented on by giving them various different degrees of uh, sustenance in that they were given malnutrition intentionally to see how children would react to different... Uh, this is like... She's like rolling her eyes and stuff. I feel like this is like phenomenally disrespectful. Different amounts of say milk and vitamins being given to them. The other thing to talk about when it comes to uh, children and the residential schools and uh, their atrocious numbers is again, the mortality rate was about 40 to 60% in these Indian residential schools. Uh, if they are, like we've all established, I think we all agree right now that they were wards of the state. It doesn't matter what the cause of death was, even though the cause of death in many cases could be things like, again, physical or sexual torture, uh, including traditional torture. There was an electrical chair in one of these schools. That being done, it doesn't matter if they died from starvation, it doesn't matter what, if you are taking children from their parents, you become responsible as their guardian for what happens to them. So all the deaths are responsible uh, okay, under can the I... residential school system. And finally, my last point is going to be this. We cannot talk about this as if it's something that happened a long time ago and just a sordid part of our past. The last residential school in Canada closed in 1996. Okay, if you want some context, last time Canada won the Stanley Cup was 1993. Fucking Nirvana was still playing, you know. Okay, this is the thing that really upsets me. This 
talking about, like, uh, I am like, the the way that the way that she goes about this is so, ca it is so categorically Nazi. I'm sorry. There's a, you know, there's a saying. Hold on. Can I find it? Let me see if I can find this real quick. Hold on. I can find this. Um, let's see. Where is this quote? Here we go. Here we go. From 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 Jean Paul Sartre, never believe that anti Semites are completely unaware of the absurdity of their replies. They know that their remarks are frivolous, open to challenge, but they are amusing themselves, for it's their adversary who is obliged to use words responsibly, since he believes in words. The anti Semites have the right to play. They like to play. Excuse me. They like to play with discourse, for, by giving ridiculous reasons, they discredit the seriousness of their uh, interlocutors. They delight in acting in bad faith, since they seek not to persuade by sound argument, but to intimidate and disconcert. If you press them too closely, they will abruptly fall silent, loftily indicating by some phrase that the time for argument has passed. Now, I want you to notice something here. I want you to notice that... Uh, this has been shown already. And we're not talking about anti-Semitism here, but we're talking about anti-indigenous mentality. And that's exactly what's going on here. You see Lauren laughing and going, oh, and, and making silly semantic arguments about something that is currently affecting an incredible amount of people. It's not just a lack of sensitivity. It is flaunting. It is flaunting the lack of care. It is flaunting the cruelty. And if you call them out on that, I'm going to do it because I don't care. I will call these people out on it. But most people, if they call, if you call somebody out on that, you look like you're being petty. But in truth, it's very obvious. This is about the death of children, and she's laughing about it. She thinks it's a funny game. Just remember that when you talk with Nazis, when you consider nazis you no know, like that's that's not generations ago okay i i, I need to interject with one stat there, there's one stat that i just need to clarify yeah of course okay, okay so lance you're you're saying that the mortality rate was 40 to 60 percent you're talking about like individual schools right not like the whole the entirety of the program right so according to the Dr. Bryce report, which was the medical inspector for the Department of Indian Affairs, he said the over sum total death was around 40 to 60 percent mortality rate for children in Indian reservation schools. OK, th then I want to address this head on, because basically the current historical estimate total for, for deaths is around 4000. As we've as we've already talked about previously in the debate, total participants are around 150,000. That puts the death rate at roughly two and a half percent. So if you're talking about yes, the roughly 40 yes. to 60 percent. Yes, it is. Exia Ross, you've brought up a great point. This is the detention camp versus internment camp versus death camp debate. Yep. It's playing. It's wordplay. It's wordplay that lets you avoid talking about the actual issue. What I read was that there were some schools where there were fires. So as a result, like 70% or 60% of the student body died in that fire. I also read that there were tuber tuber tuberculosis outbreaks. So within that subset of a specific school, like let's say there were 30 kids, 60% of them died in a horrific way. And I, again, like whenever I'm being descriptive, I'm not trying to minimize this, okay? I'm not trying to minimize this, but I'm just trying to clarify that 150,000 students weren't taken into a boarding school and then 40 to 60% of them died. That's just not factually accurate. I also have one thing I want to respond to Lance here because this is really important. Sure. And Would it be it... possible to allow Lance to respond to that first and then? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So from, right. yeah, yes. so, from the, so from the same study counterpoints, it turns out that 90% of them suffered severe physical, emotional, or sexual abuse at the hands of the people who were guarding them. As a result of that, many of them also committed suicide. So it isn't simply a, a matter of them uh, dying in fires, a matter of them dying by tuberculosis, a matter of them dying by starvation, which of course were all accountable reasons. If 90% of the children are suffering one of those conditions, I think you'd all agree that on some 
like the sum total of this, this was an atrocity being committed. Sure, and okay. just because that was directed Wait. at me. Yep. Yeah, but Lauren so was fast. next. If so you fast. if you've okay. got a quick point, yeah, go and then I'll yeah. Okay. So so fast. Again, whenever I'm being descriptive, I'm not trying to minimize what the fuck happened. It was fucking awful. I am just trying to be descriptive so we are accurate. Because if I heard that 150,000 of my countrymen were or, or ethnicity or whatever were put through a system and 60 percent of them died then maybe i would be molotov cocktailing some shit, right that's why we need to be very specific about what happened historically and that's part of the reason why i wanted to have this discussion okay also uh lance people ask you for the source and what you've provided could you send that over to me yeah, yeah of I course over to lauren Cool. Yeah. So this is something that really rubs me the wrong way. Whenever people talk about residential school programs and compare the residential schools that were opened in the 1800s to the ones that existed in the 90s and were closed down. Then if we talk about, for example, uh, Lance talked about an electric chair existing and then said the last residential school that existed was shut down in 97. That school was called Kavalik Hall and 96. it was closed in... 96. It was closed in the Northwest Territories. It was not set up as a residential school. In fact, it was a whole legal battle with the Canadian government to even get it registered as a residential school because what it actually was, was it was a hostel slash boarding room that was set up for kids who did not have families that were near high schools because they were too rural. So the Northwest Territories government said, okay, we need to create boarding in the town. Again, and then if kids nothing. are way far out in the middle of nowhere, we can give them all of this is this is this is another thing, by the way, this is another categorical textbook, textbook genocide denier. It's well, oh, it wasn't technically a residential school. It was actually a um, it was actually a um, temporary boarding facility that was used long term and people ended up living there because they were too rural and their families got displaced by the government. You see, this is so frustrating. And this is what they do, by the way. This is um, what, again, textbook genocide denial. Like, imagine if somebody was like, this is, this happens with, um, this happens with, uh, with, um, uh, Holocaust denial. Yeah, they weren't they were work camps, not death camps, that type of shit. Let's continue. Yeah, exactly. It also brings up the question of why was it necessary to get a boarding facility there? They just didn't build high schools for those kids? Yeah, I wonder why. Exactly. And the option to go to high school so they have somewhere to stay. An indigenous kid came out, stayed in this boarding area, and then later took the government to court to get reparations for residential schools claiming that it was a residential school because he was removed from his ham family home by the government for the purpose of education and that he started speaking his language. Uh, he started forgetting some of his language while he was going to an English speaking school. And thus that was part of the destruction of his history. Citation needed. And but to see, compare- okay. Okay, this is a great moment. Okay, we're going to pause here for a moment. We're going to pause here for a second, and we're going to do a quick analysis. Actually, does anybody remember what I've said about uh, talking with um, uh, about talking with demagogues in the past? Does anybody remember what I've said about that? Anybody? Because I've talked about this multiple times in the past. Um, that uh that demagogues you can't you have to be very careful with um you have to be very careful with engaging with demagogues because demagogues are they will play very fast and loose with the facts you want to know an example of this rob nor i want you all to real quick just think about uh, if you've seen any of my debates with rob nor rob nor will fire off a million examples of who knows what? He'll be like, CRT was used in the Coca-Cola facility in Maryland, uh, in, in Baltimore, Maryland. It was also used in T Topeka, Kansas. And, it, and, and in the training that was here, you could see that white people were, de were demonized in the, in the Topeka, Kansas Coca-Cola training facility. In, in Florida, there was a, uh, there was a Google, a Google uh, demonstration in which uh, there was a moment of an hour of silence where white people couldn't talk. And then so there will be a hundred of these. 
a hundred examples, all of which prove absolutely nothing. They don't make an argument. But if you try to, you're stuck in a position because you either ignore it and then let their point sit, or you go and you try to debunk a million different stupid nonsense examples, some of which might have been completely made up. I've done this before. There's a time and a place. Um, there's a time and a place to call people and fact check them. Like, for example, I once called Rob Knorr on one of his citations. Turns out he was citing Andy Neo. Just a blog, a vlog by, or not a vlog, a, um, a blog by Andy Neo was his citation. So, yeah, but here's the thing. You can't do that every time because it will send you on a million different rabbit holes. And that's what she's doing right now. She's, there is no way that anybody can verify any of the shit that she's saying. She could be making it all up. And what, what are you supposed to do about it? What are you supposed to do about it? I can tell you, but we'll talk about that as time goes on. This is something that, um, this is something that's, that, uh, I think people need to think about because, um, demagogues use dishonest tactics. They are not honest. They will lie. That's what demagogues do. And, if you don't know how to expose a demagogue as a demagogue, you run into trouble because you're giving a platform, even if it's a smaller platform, quote unquote, you are giving a platform to a demagogue. All right, let's continue. We're, we're going to go over all of this. This to schools where there was abuse going on, where there was tuberculosis outbreaks and where people were being forcibly removed from their homes. And comparing that to schools where it's like, hey, you know, kids that are in rural areas can't have a high school education. Oh, so let's you, create a hospital moment, for them. One moment. Like, Wait. That's absurd. You can, can read the case. Can you give me I think everyone give me a watching moment. this to read the case. Stream is, uh, seems to have crashed, which is not uh -oh. great. Can you guys still hear me? I can. It looks like it's still. Oh, is it going on mine? Crash yeah, it's still going one. on mine. Huh. Um. Well, that's very annoying um okay well i guess we can continue if everybody else is still streaming it then we'll let it keep going uh lance you can respond to that of course uh yeah i guess my first response would be that if your assertion is that nothing bad happened at that school and then therefore it doesn't matter um my statement as to which uh the last residential school closed in 1996 i think you're just resorting to pedantry that doesn't change the fact that it was still considered a residential school and uh, i would also like you to provide evidence that nothing bad ever happened in that institution regardless of that fact it doesn't change the overarching problem that these residential schools are not a sordid part of our past we're going to eventually have to evolve into the child and foster care system because that was an evolution of the residential schools and also talk about the fact that within the criminal justice system of canada almost 40 percent of all the indigenous inmates are uh survivors of the residential school system so the trauma that occurred in the residential schools did not simply end once the schools themselves closed they would then continue as the individuals would work into society um, and I guess that that's where I would true that one leftist with, kill uh, I know Tail hasn't talked very much if he wants to inject something here oh. okay I mean any, any, I've got a response to, to that yeah. yeah anybody's free to grab it if Tail okay because okay. yeah, stating prove to me that nothing bad ever happened in that school is one of the dumbest statements I have ever heard. Something bad happens in every school, whether it is the fanciest, nicest, well. Rape and death by tuberculosis do not happen in every school. Okay, this is, this is so, this is such a dishonest point. Holy fuck. Okay. Lauren is, in my opinion, so loudly genocide denying here, it actually is stunning. The whitest school on the planet, bad things happen at every school. The argument there is that 
Wait. Schools in the 1800s deliberately I'm sorry, I'm sorry, wait, hold on a second. Wealthiest, whitest school on the planet. Wait, what does the whiteness of the school have to do with any of that? I really feel like that example didn't work. Bad things happen at every school. The argument there is that schools in the 1800s deliberately removing kids from their parents, taking them in, they're being abused, mass disease, horrible conditions, is different from a school that is set up or a housing area that is set up voluntarily for kids to go and stay there so that they can be somewhere with a high school in the area. Like you- Voluntarily. Notice that right there. Wait, hold on. I want people to pay attention to what was said there. They're voluntarily going to to a high school that you have to go to. It's not voluntary. That is not voluntary. Like, but again, see how she is able to just breeze over all of these things? The facts are, are meaningless. The facts are meaningless to Lauren. You have to acknowledge that there is a difference between a lot of the schools in the 70s, 80s, and 90s that when people talk about the residential school system still existing were voluntary, they weren't being removed from their homes. They're called residential schools because they were still technically under colonial education, so they were not being taught their languages, they were not being taught their culture. And we can talk about how that could be a problem, but to compare how that- How that could be a problem? How that could be a problem? Dude, are you for real? Are we for real right now? To the residential schools where children were being ripped away from their families is just not even on the same level. And I find that extremely disingenuous. Sure. So if that's the dumbest thing you've ever heard in your life, you've lived a more privileged life than I thought possible. And I'm just going to say this, the burden of proof would then be upon you. If you're going to assert that this school doesn't really con uh, constitute a residential school, because at the end of the day, nothing bad happened here related to the same systems in place from the other residential schools in Canada, then again, please demonstrate that with some kind of factual evidence. I mean, okay, so the Canadian government argued that it wasn't a residential school, but, and I'm telling you, sure, it is registered as a residential school. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. The Canadian government who perpetuated this. A very, very good, a very good source to ask on this. I hope, I hope they get her. School, I hope they get her the on that. That's ridiculous. Is, this individual who wanted to get compensation was able to make the argument so she's doing what she's doing here is called a character assassination on somebody we don't even know who this person is she's character assassinating she's saying oh this this person who made this report was just lying they were just made it up they just made it up she's just appealing to i mean we don't even know does this person actually exist and i was removed from my family to go to an education system which did not uphold my language and the removal from the family was voluntary his claim that it was his only option and he claims that he was told he should go there even though he only has a signed affidavit and no proof of that people can go read the case themselves so it's it, like i'm just saying if you want to say that's what residential schools were and say that's the same as all the past ones, then I'm actually not feeling that bad for the past ones. But of course they're not the same. Whoa! But there you have it. Of course. <laughs> like... Yeah, and what I'm saying is that you're being caught in the pedantry of trying to assert that this one residential school doesn't count. Northern. When, you know, at the end of the day, the my statement, and it remains the same, was that the last the residential 90s. school closed in 1996. That is just a factual yes, but statement. They were not, okay, well, can we okay and now you, and now you would like to establish on top of that. Yes, and if you want to. And can you establish then that nothing bad happened in that school? And if you can, fine. But at the end of the day, again, this is pedantry. It's just like, okay. this is, the, this is probably is one of the weakest Wait, gotchas we'll, I've seen so far. It's not. Yeah, okay. this is this is no no the surfs Lance is very correct to call this pedantry here. I think he could do a better job explaining why it's pedantry to the audience because right now I don't feel like he's done a good job establishing why it's pedantry to the audience because audiences don't always know that. What I would have said is okay, here's how I would have done it. If it was me in Lance's position, here's what I would have said. I said, 
All right, let's grant that. Let's pretend that it wasn't 1996. Do you know when the last school was before that? And then she would go, oh, I don't know. And I would say, 1994. What are you going to say about that one? You got, you, you're going to say that one was made up too? What about the ones before that? What about the ones in the 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, 30s? How many years? How many you want to knock off? It's the exact same thing that you can do with COVID, with COVID denialists, where you go, okay, let's pretend. Let's just pretend real quick. Let's pretend that there were that in Florida somebody was putting motorcycle deaths as COVID deaths. How many do you want to take off the count? We have 630,000 dead in America. How many you want to knock off that? You want to knock off 100,000? You want to knock off 200,000? You want to say you're trying to tell me that 200,000 motorcycle deaths were actually written on COVID? Well, guess what? We still have 430,000 dead. So you can sit here and pedantry all day. That's what you should. That's what should have happened. That's what should have. And and this is that's a criti critique for for Lance here is that he didn't make the pedantry become clear to the audience. Because you could, you just go, okay, oh you have oh you have a huge problem with the 1996 one. All right, let's pretend that one doesn't exist. 1995. 1994, 1993, 1992. You got one for all this? Oh, how convenient. You're just making shit up to say that none of these matter when there's an, a mountain of dead children. That's what you have to say. That's what you have to say. You have to, when it, in order to, uh, you have to short circuit these types of gish gallops. You have to short circuit these types of, uh, of rhetorical nonsense. You can't just try to address them on the facts. Because if you do, you'll just end up talking about 1996. Give, let him say, okay, maybe let's let's pretend. I don't agree with you, but let's pretend 1996 was all made up. I mean, he did call out the pedantry. I just think he didn't know how to express it to the audience. That's all. It, it, people make mistakes in in their in their stuff. I think this was a mistake. Okay. So for another example. Oh, by the way, um, sorry. Let me actually build on that a little more. That's actually, uh, here's another thing. Ul Ulani Savanti says, do you have a theory as to why Lance didn't call out pedantry? Um, Lance did call out the pedantry, but I don't think that he elucidated the audience on it enough. And here's the reason why. This happens frequently. Um, during, like, back during, you remember, everybody remember the atheist era of the internet? There was a big movement to have science people not debate creationists ever. Like, just don't debate creationists. And the reason is because most science people would go in with in good faith. They're not trying to, um, to teach the audience or manipulate the audience. But creationists, um, but uh, fucking Nazis, genocide deniers, these types of people do. They don't care about manipulating the audience. They want to manipulate the audience. So you have to, if you're going to debate somebody like that, you have to be ready. And here's the thing. It's unnatural for most people to think about this per particular aspect, right? It is, um, it is unnatural for people to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need to show the audience where, where I'm coming from with this. A lot of people make that mistake, and this is one of the dangers that people talk about with platforming. And don't, don't worry. We are going to go talk about specifically this at the end of this because i have a whole we're going to wrap this whole thing up at the end with a discussion about platforming and debate in general so stick around because i have a lot to say about that and actually i'm going to zoom in my camera a little bit because i'm noticing i have a lot of headspace and it's kind of weird so here we go there we go much better oh look at that that's so much better oh that's so much better let's continue so much cozy of this and why it matters is some of the places called residential schools that retained the name residential schools well into the 80s and 90s were even run by native bands themselves they were handed over so if you're going to talk about how these residential schools were committing atrocities well into the 80s and 90s then we're going to have to start punishing and asking for apologies from native bands themselves like the Kawases band who held on to the residential school and ran it for 16 years What? So yes, it does matter what happened and what these schools turned into later on. True, Laura. Either of you are free to respond. Oh, sorry, I didn't. I didn't know if Tail is still here. At this point, I'm just baffled. So okay, so far well, I'll let you speak. We've denied the Indian Act. We've denied the removal policy. We've denied that 
because one guy said a bad thing incorrectly once, therefore all atrocities never happened. We've denied- No one is saying no atrocities yeah, that's, happened. That's what we said. Wait, wait. That's what we said. Let him, let's let him finish. We've denied <laughs> mass graves exist. Lauren? Lauren is genuinely one of the most disrespectful, like, of the topic I've ever seen. Like, she's got her fucking white claw. She's like, oh my god, I can't believe that. It's, oh, I hate it so much. I hate it so much. As somebody who's very expressive, I hate this so goddamn much. Even though the definition of mass... <laughs> oh my god, bestie. Did you just hear... Did you just hear? He just called me out on genocide denial. Is big. So at this point, I'm just lost. What definitions are we even working with? I'd really like some clarification on some of this. I mean, so there's a I, graveyard, to, a mass grave? If we're going to throw out the Indian Act as even a discussable topic, then feel free. I have no trouble with that. Because as I was looking and at here, um, Twin Rabbit is making the same problem here, or is making the same mis same mistake here. Okay, Twin Rabbit is bringing up the Indian Act, but most people watching this don't necessarily know all of the details of the Indian Act. They might know what it is, but they don't necessarily know all the details, so they don't understand his appeal. That's a big problem. You'll notice that one of the things that I talked about in my analysis of Xander Hall versus um versus Lauren Southern was that Xander Hall did a very good job walking an, a, an unfamiliar audience through each topic. He would ask questions that would go, oh, hey, um, here's a, like, like, okay, so here's the thing about trans people. Did you know that this is how HRT works? And he would explain that out as a part of his argument because it walks the audience with, with him. That is like super, super, super um, important to do and that didn't happen here so there's probably a lot of people who don't really know what's being said here let's continue led to believe the initial True. conversation was on restorative justice if we're going to backtrack on that topic Okay. Okay, we're not we're not backtracking on shit. If you want to talk about that topic, then start talking about that topic. But like seriously, all right. So I, I literally took ten seconds to Google the word mass grave. It says a pit dug in the ground to receive a large amount of corpses. If a lot of bodies are buried individually because they're dead, then it, like is a cemetery a mass? This right here just goes to show you how fucking disgusting lauren is she's like oh thank you thank you for just you know for proving my, oh, my awesome point about about fucking mass graves like this is just this is unironically disgusting No, I get it. I get it if you're having, like, a spicy debate about something that's, like, less, um, you know, that's, like, less significant. But this is an ongoing issue. Even, like, I don't know. This is just so fucked. Th honestly, I, I, I know that this is, like, body language critique, but it's completely valid in my opinion. Somebody behaving like this while discussing, while going back and forth about a genocide is just unbelievable. That's great. Do you have evidence that they were all individually dug, according to Lauren? I'm, they calculated okay, I'm using, that they were on. individual bodies with the GPR. Lauren, Lauren I got it. I'm Lauren. not trying. Okay, let me not be a dick. Okay, I'm not going to be a dick. I'm just going to try to break it down. So, Are you uh, both incapable of letting me finish a sentence? According I am perfectly. To Lauren, only mm -hmm. only a few moments ago, we're talking about pits, right? According mm -hmm. to Lauren, GPR is incapable of identifying bodies. So, how would it know whether or not they were all buried at the same time? Okay, so, let, so I'll, I'll address this because I'm not Lauren, if you want me to. Feel free. Okay, what I would say is that based off of all of the reading that I've made, there's plenty, and for the audience at fucking home again, I'm just trying to be descriptive, I'm not trying to justify, okay? I'm trying to be descriptive so we can all get on the same page descriptively. All right, on the same page, let's keep going. As far as I can tell, 
from what I've seen from the historical record of the Canadian residential school system, what happened was, let's just call it cultural genocide. They took kids forcibly from people's homes, brought them to a boarding school, forced them to all live together with very limited supervision because of poor conditions, malnutrition, and uh, basically lack of supervision. Kids were abused. Kids had improper medical care. They had improper uh, nutrition. And a bunch of them died from very, e I, I don't want to say tuberculosis is an easily preventable disease. Honestly, no joke. I think Connor is so far a, a net positive on this panel. So far, Connor is actually a, a net positive. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. This is this is a good point that would have bef that benefits Lance's side. But it, from so disease, far, so far, okay? of course, a significant chunk so of them far, died from disease from the conditions that they were forced into. Okay, we're conceding that point. Now, also on top of that, a lot of them died in fires because these these buildings were built like shit. Okay, so a decent chunk of them died from fires, and that even on top of that, some a lot of kids tried to escape because the conditions were so poor and they died from exposure. That is the historical record as far as I understand it. Now, if we're gonna bring this down to the American level, I can tell you that the United States of America, especially uh, before the 19th century, does have mass graves, guaranteed. Because what we did instead is we just fucking killed Native Americans, okay? So um, again, this is a spectrum of awful. I'm not trying to say it's good or bad, I'm just trying to be descriptive. So when we're talking about these graves, we're probably talking about kids who died either from tuberculosis, fire, or exposure, and they were probably buried after they were dead. Mass grave to me, because maybe I'm just a lay person. Okay. Unironically, though, maybe I'm too into leftist politics, but don't Connor and Lauren come off as complete assholes here? Aren't their liberal-leaning people more susceptible to the rhetoric, rhetoric used by Lance and, and Tail? We will get into that. However... I think that Connor is touching on something important here, which is Connor has elucidated the issue, which is that um, Lance and and uh, Twin Rabbit are using a more colloquial definition of mass grave that Lauren is fixating on. Now, Connor has other things he wants to talk about here, but he's correct in saying that's where the disagreement currently lies, and Lauren won't let it go because that's how that's what propagandists do. Uh, demagogues will never let go of something like that. And this is why I say that Connor is here in good faith and Lauren is not. In my opinion. But mass grave to me implies that we are marching people out into an area, we're fucking killing them, and we're throwing them in a pit. That is my understanding of it. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. Absolutely, Pat. As opposed I would to be digging happy a to. hole for all of the bodies of the kids who died in the fire that all happened at once? Yeah, do you I, think that the priest set the fire, or do you think it was accidental? Because that's kind of important. Do you think that there's no such thing as a mass grave at these residential schools using the conditions that you yourself just set on the restriction of the definition of that term? Fine, Tail. Again. You fucking win, okay? Maybe seven kids were all buried at the same time, and it's a mass grave. Can we get to the fucking descriptive part of it? Like, can we, can we get back to, like, reality? This is this is where that is where Connor does sound like an asshole. I don't understand why um, Twin Rabbit wouldn't accept what Connor said before, but now Connor just sounds like a fucking dick. Being like, "Oh, seven people died." That's fucking. That's not. That's not gonna fly well with anybody. I would love to. I, I never please left jump it. in here. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. Um, so the. We're, we're talking about the mass graves that the media have alleged happened, that Lance has been tweeting about, that progressives have been tweeting about, and you're saying that they are mass graves where people just dug pits. Because I just want to let everyone know, GPR technology can only find anomalies in the soil. It can't find bodies. So the way that they are trying to find or how they claim they're trying matter. to find... Doesn't matter. Again, the... she's going back to the exact same thing Right back to that talking point, literally meaningless. Meaningless. This individual. Uh... Yeah, I know. We know it's not true. Hey, it's Vadim. Yeah, we know. We've confirmed that it's not true. But here's the thing. I Here, uh, Vadim, I did a drawing. Look, here. See this drawing, Vadim? We did this drawing, which is 
um, we have documents. We have documents from the Catholic Church. We have documents from the Canadian government. We have Native American documentation from Native American communities. We have oral history. We have film interviews. We have uh, recorded text interviews. And we also have radar. If you... Uh, if you, if you, even if you knock off the radar, which we can grant it, I don't agree that you need to. I think that she's lying, but let's pretend you knock it off. We still know exactly what happened on those spaces. We still know exactly what happened in all of these places because we have all of this other data. Zoop. Let's continue bodies or find these numbers how they're getting the 250 number how they're getting that 750 number funky boss one says not exact full proof obviously you can never have full proof of anything that happened in the past that's archaeology you can never know exactly what happened but you can know within reason w well within reasonable doubt and there is way more than reasonable doubt Let's continue. Is they're saying they're finding burial spots. You don't and need to graves. give on that. And that's why some have also been mistaken for great for that they've said they were, you know, native children buried, but it ended up just being a graveyard. So if we're talking about GPR technology that is finding individual graves, and these are what is being called mass graves, they literally cannot be mass graves because it's only detecting individual burial spots. No, that's not true. Funky Boss, see, this is where you're getting into genocide denial. It couldn't just be an overgrown graveyard. See, this is where you're dead wrong, because we have numerous sources of information pointing to the location of the grave. They don't, the, the GPR, the ground penetrating radar, just proves the locate, the exact location of it. We already have the documentation necessary. We are, it's not my sources. It's literally the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, which was run by the state of Canada, too, has signed off on this. You're just, you're just lying. See, this is where I started. This is why I, my sense for genocide denial is, like, perfect. I can always smell it. I can always smell it. So, no, this whole idea that you're saying that yes it was pits and bodies were thrown in no based on the technology that was used and the way they are counting and getting these numbers it's impossible nope i've already conceded it you can't take it back it, forever that's the record now okay i see all right mass graves whatever um I got, anyways, okay, the reason, okay the if that's, if that's... To establish what crimes what? happened to talk about haha <laughs> funny retributive justice is we need to know what the retributive justice we're discussing was for, right? Sure. That's why we're Abs discussing Absolutely. It. Okay, so I'd, I'd, I'd like to answer that one for you. Uh, this is a question to both CounterPoints and Lauren. Uh, as of now, how many priests and nuns have been convicted for sexual crimes against children as a result of the uh, residential school system? Dude, I'm on the same page. If priests and nuns committed sexual assault against kids, put them in jail. But like, you know, <laughs> build a mask. Never mind. But... Like this. Lauren Southern is an absolute piece of shit. Just so you know. Just so we know. No, no, no. That was intentional. That was obviously intentional. Do not mistake that for what that was. That was absolutely intentional. Absolutely disgusting. One of the most just absolutely disgusting I... shit happened in the u.s this shit happened at boys schools in florida this shit happened in ireland it was horrific and i hope sure. every Dude. one of those things is investigated we don't disagree on that and if it didn't happen it should happen what sure. we're disagreeing on is whether churches should be burned down today and whether there were mass no you're not disagreeing on this now okay Lance needs to clarify his position here because they have not Lance said he does not condone church burnings from the very beginning. Lauren is reframing this in her favor. Graves. So and 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 do you do you want to attempt answering the question because Lauren seems unable to? How many? I don't I don't know. No, how many? I, 
Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to answer how many. I was going to back her up on a moral point. So, no, please okay, tell me. Sure. No, I'm, I'm sure we're all against pedophilia. So as of now, there's been 40 convictions, and that means that there's been 37,951 complaints that have been levied. They have not been pursued. As of now, an estimated 5,000 priests, nuns, and teachers have committed sex crimes against these children, and they're not being charged for that. The first time anyone was put to task for this was in 2008, and that was somebody who had molested 17 boys, and that was the first major conviction. Jesus so this is what I mean Christ. when I say that there hasn't actually been uh, retributive justice in this case, right? If we're, if we're dealing with thousands and thousands of priests, nuns, and teachers who had sexually molested children, that would be a place to start. I mean, unlike the Catholic churches who at this point, we do not know who's burning them down. In this case, we do know who committed these heinous crimes. Okay, then to address this head on, yep. this, this is where, like, again, I am not your enemy in this fight. Mass death does not equal mass graves. Mass grave has a specific definition. Obviously there was mass death of indigenous people, but that doesn't mean there were mass graves. Wrong! Wrong! We just did this, Genji! We just did this! But I'm gonna- I see I'm gonna have to keep doing this over and over again. Wrong! See, it's funny. There isn't actually a specific definition of a mass grave. There is a mass grave by the UN standards, and then every country in the world- In fact, this is- if you could- you know what? I'll just show it again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Watch this. Here we go. Watch this. We'll just do it again. I'll do it over and over and over again. It's okay. Look, bam, here we go again. I just did this. A mass grave is a grave containing multiple human corpses, which may or may not be identified prior to burial. The United Nations has defined a criminal mass grave as a burial site containing three or more victims of execution, although an exact definition is not unanimously agreed upon. As you can see, we've already gone and looked at some of these sources already. Okay? It's super, super... So what definition are you using to describe these as mass graves? I'm not! Oh my god, you people! I am literally not! I am saying, I am saying that it is perfectly reasonable for almost any person who isn't- I'm gonna say this again. It is perfectly reasonable for almost anyone who isn't literally a representative of the UN to colloquially refer to the site of many, many deaths where many people were buried in a single place as a mass grave. That is beyond reasonable. And if you believe otherwise, I suspect your charitability, your ability to be charitable, because any person in their right mind would be able to go, okay, yeah, a lot of people would call that a mass grave. There isn't a single definition of mass grave anywhere. The UN has one, which is contested. This is the same problem, by the way, just so you know, this is really simple. Just so you know, this is the exact same thing that tankies do about genocide. This is the same thing that Nazis do about the Holocaust. They go, oh, well, it doesn't fit the 1932 definition of genocide, so that means it can't be a genocide. It's like, well, you realize that many people have definitions, working functional definitions for genocide? This is the exact same thing that they do to excuse all kinds of, of atrocity. I find it disgusting and also obviously patently bad faith. It is the, that is the definition of bad faith. It is fixating on, oh, you know what? This is a lot similar, man, this is reminding me of something else, you know? I honestly believe they think the semantics argument is useful because it's the only way to avoid getting steamrolled. If you go in the debate with no legs to stand on, i.e. if you haven't read the, the Truth and Reconciliation, all you can do is argue semantics. No, 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 no. Don't mistake that. They argue semantics intentionally. They argue semantics intentionally. Because it's, it's, it wastes everyone's time and no, none of the substance is there and it buys time for the conspiracy theorist, the, the, the denier, to spread conspiracy nonsense. It buys time. Defining your terms should be step one in a debate so it can't continue to be brought up. I would agree with you, but it doesn't matter here. It doesn't, nobody, okay Genji, you are actually, you are actually stupid. You people are actually stupid. See, this is the thing that we're witnessing this happen right now. It doesn't have to be mass graves to be horrific. I literally opened with that argument. 
You morons. Literally, I talked about that. I'm reading the Twitch chat because it's it's hilarious to read these it, these people who are in here whose brains are so the the brains are are they're so like uh what's the word they're crystallized they're like uh, calcified their brains are made out of bone you ever heard of that disease do you know that's a real disease there's a disease where your brain starts to turn to stone basically no they're not smooth brains they're like stone brains their brains are slowly converting into rock and they so they see something on the internet. And they go, oh, I heard a big boy on the internet say that. That means it must be true, and I will defend it to the end. Fucking Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's continue, okay? Let's fucking continue, all right? Jesus fucking Christ, I'm going to lose my shit on these people. At all. So if anybody <sighs> touched any kid of any background and abuse them, then what I think the system should do to them is not even fit for Twitch, okay? And I don't care who that person is, what part, what institution they're a part of, whether or not they're a member of my race, whether or not it was an institution supported by the government. Go after them with the full force of the law and punish them accordingly. Would you both state that uh, at this point the Catholic Church should stop withholding the names of those who may be guilty? If you're talking about putting them public and you're saying may be guilty, no, I don't think people on trial for sex crimes that haven't been confirmed guilty should be put public because usually what happens is if they're found innocent or falsely accused, their lives get destroyed for something they didn't do. So until there is a crime and a conviction that happens, of course, keep the names private, but I think those convictions should be, um, you know, they should try to get those convictions if the person is guilty to the utmost of their ability. Now, we have to recognize, and this is a horrible thing, but it's very, very difficult to prove these crimes retrospectively that happened a long, long time ago. And if we're going to have a justice system at all, if we are going to have a system that says innocent until proven guilty, that has to be the standard. We can't just throw people in jail because... That's a good point. Apache28 from Twitch chat says she's giving a lot of grace to the to the priests and nuns, but she's giving none. She's just blame. She's just like, oh, yeah, it was the leftists who burned the churches. Huh. That is a great point. That's a great point. As we think or just based Thank on you, an Wendell accusation B. without proof. And, you know, that sucks. It sucks that reality is like that. But you know what also sucks? People who did nothing going to jail for the rest of their lives for a sex crime they didn't commit. That's just... Yeah. I'm curious why we keep setting this as a long, long time ago. I was still figuring out Windows 95 when the last of the boarding schools in Canada was closed. There were even still a few that are open today in the United States. These are ongoing crimes. We address that, keep up. Then address it again. Okay, not to mention, even a, a rape committed against anyone in the 90s would be very difficult to prove and get evidence for today. I'm not even sure when we started getting these systems in place for rape kits in Canada. Like, when did that even come about? I'd have to research that. But this is, like, it's very difficult Can to prove I, these historical I, cases. I, I just want to address this point head on because I don't want to feel like we're dodging. Okay, so what we said was that during the early 20th century and during the late 19th century, they were brutal fucking conditions. And as these things became less and less acceptable, some of these schools were turned over to native control. Some of these schools that ended in 1996, as Lance pointed out, that Lauren supposedly has a study for, that I don't have a study for, was literally just a fucking boarding school for Native American kids. Now, I can't prove to you that no sex abuse happened, because whenever there's fucking teenagers anywhere, fucking sex abuse happens. Sex abuse happened at my white suburban bullshit fucking school. Kids were doing cocaine in the fucking bathroom and having fucking sex. I can't tell you that nothing bad happens anywhere, okay? But what I can say is that if you wanted to pick a school that you wanted to live in as a fucking time traveler, then you wouldn't want to go to the one in the 1920s because there was probably a significant chance that you would get your ass kicked and nobody would give a shit. You would die of tuberculosis or you would die in a fucking fire. Whereas if you went to the boarding school in 1992 and 
it was Native American run and it was fucking, then basically there's a strong chance that it was just a normal boarding school with all of the boarding school problems that we have today. So that's what I'm saying. Okay, so okay, the key, so, the key difference clear. here, I, wait, I just have wait, one quick point. Wait, wait, no. When I'm talking to what he talked. Uh, so far, um, I just got the time. Uh, so far, Lauren has talked more than both Lance and Tail combined. Uh, so I want to make sure that I give more than both Lance and Tail combined. Uh Lauren Southern is straight up. Holy shit. Oh my god. What a fucking nasty fucking bitch. 1488 bracelet, by the way. Remember that. Remember, we all got to we all got to witness that. Yeah, that's right. Her her own right wing friends told on her. She's been wearing a fucking uh, exp thousands of dollars uh, Tiffany bracelet that's engraved with 1488. Yeah, kind of funny, isn't it, huh? Yeah, kind of funny how that goes. It's all right. We'll get there. Don't worry. We got a lot of stuff to talk about Lauren Southern afterwards. All right, let's do it. Uh, so I want to make sure that I give Lance and Tail some time to speak uh, uninterrupted for a little bit. Uh, Lance? Sure, I just wanted to address counterpoints. Uh, the difference there between what you stated and what happened is that they didn't choose to go to these schools. They were taken and forced to go to these schools. So even if you do say that there are institutions in which there are multiple people committing uh, sex crimes and whatever that is, this is still a situation in which the children were forcibly removed from their parents and forced to be in these schools. So again, as wards of the state, everything that occurs to them is the responsibility of either the sure, Catholic we'll Church or is. do say is that they didn't choose counterpoints. Uh, the difference there between Wait, no. When I'm talking to what he's talking. Uh, so far, um, I just got the time. Uh, so far, Lauren has talked more than both Lance and Tail combined. Uh, so I want to make sure that I give Lance and Tail some time to speak uh, uninterrupted for a little bit. Uh, Lance? Sure, I just wanted to address counterpoints. Uh, the difference there between what you stated and what happened is that they didn't choose to go to these schools. They were taken and forced to go to these schools. So even if you do say that there are institutions in which there are multiple people committing uh, sex crimes. And True! Some uh, material squirrel, material squirrel from chat, uh, from Twitch chat says, the only people denying this shit are internet Nazis. Literally not even the people responsible are trying to lie about it at this point. Yes. Yes, that's true. The Catholic Church isn't denying it. The state of Canada isn't denying it because they know. They know they're fucked. So why do Nazis do it? Because remember, this is important, everybody. Pay fucking attention. The Volk, okay? Why do white identitarians, white supremacists, Nazis, fascists, why do they do this kind of thing? Because they need to preserve the idea of the Volk, the folk. They need to preserve the idea of a, of a greater past that once existed. And as it turns out, doing rampant genocide is uh, a pretty good way to destroy your image. So it's important for them to do the genocide, even if the state and the other people involved in it have already admitted to it. They Nazis do this because they need to preserve their glorious image of the past. I know, but I, d yes, I know, Satariel, but given that, um, given that I, uh, I a am speaking, I need to pronounce it a little bit different. Let's continue. Whatever that is, this, this is still a situation in which the children were forcibly removed from their parents and forced to be in these schools. So again, Canadians as aren't Nazis? Fuck right off with that. Who said Canadians were Nazis? What the hell are you talking about? What is wrong with you people? What is wrong with chat? What is happening? What the hell is happening? Words of the state, everything that occurs to them is the responsibility of either the Catholic Church or the government of Canada. Okay, let's let's get to the meat of this real quick because no one's denying bad things happen. No one's denying bad things are bad. What there that's not true, though. You are. You're downplaying them. The only disagreement here is you guys seem to think there are mass graves. I didn't compare Canadians to Nazis. What are you talking about? Okay, Funky Boss, you need to take a sit. You need to take a seat. You need to think about your feelings for a little bit and sort through them. Do some mindfulness, okay? Whew. You know, sit down. Think about what you're feeling and why. 
Take a moment, okay? There is no evidence for them. Um, do you still think there are mass graves after this discussion? How many bodies have been exhumed at these graves that have recently been discovered? So that's... Interesting. We already talked about this, didn't we? Didn't we already talk about this? Ooh, we already talked about this. The exhumation is a issue with every single genocide, every single atrocity. There is always a controversy over it because as it turns out, exhuming bodies is traumatizing, dangerous, and unsanitary. So obviously there is always controversy over this. They're, they're, they haven't decided whether they're going to exhume them or not. Again, right back to the fucking talking points. Seems to be the only thing that you're trying to propose is your conditions. But if you didn't listen to what Dylan just said, he said that you'd spoken the most in this debate, and so he was going to give Tail of Two and Rabbits a chance to speak. Okay, he's happy to. I was just trying to get back on topic and then to the church burnings, Your topic, but, but yeah. Well, Tail, that's the you... topic we agreed on. Okay. Tail, if you want to speak, you can. You're you're free to speak. At this point, I'm a little bit lost. There's been a lot of philosophical quibbling over the definition of the word mass grave to the point Good where point, someone yeah. had to Google it because they didn't even know the definition coming into the game, which I think is a little inappropriate. If you're going to be discussing a topic, you should at least be mildly prepared. And when we're talking about things like ground penetrating radar, I again go back. If we're going to challenge the findings of those who have done the research then you're challenging the foundation of archaeology in the Americas. If you would like to do that and lay out your argument for a better technique for identifying locations that should be excavated, I welcome you to do so. You haven't proposed anything remotely resembling that. What you did instead was to say that you went to school with a person whose name you can't pronounce, who is somehow vaguely related to a company who's oddly not listed anywhere on the company's prospectus. That's not terms that's not definitions and that's certainly not facts that's just random anecdotes i have just posted the Lauren, article hold on, okay, I, got I mean i think that's i think i think what was just said there is pretty solid i think that this this that argument that was dropped there was pretty good but let's see how it goes I Lord, please, for the love of this guy sounds like a douche. Okay, well, look, this is why you lose. This is why I lose ho hope in humanity. Just because someone sounds like a douche doesn't mean that they're a bad arguer or that what they've said is wrong. Like, I recognize that some people like, but it's true, though. This is why Internet. This is the thing you have to remember with Internet debate. And this is something we're going to talk about. In fact, you know what? I'm putting this on my on my list. Yeah, I have a list. I have a list of stuff we're going to talk about at the end. Let's continue. Oh, God. Tale of Twin Rabbits. I'm pretty sure your brain is running on 1995, okay? We're fucking 30 minutes into this goddamn debate talking about, like, I don't know, terms about fucking murder and descriptive reality and history and all that kind of shit. And you want to talk to Lauren about fucking GPR and whether or not she can offhand fucking come up with a new way to conduct anthropology? I don't give a shit. Fucking catch up. Because basically what you're doing right now is you're acting smarter than everybody else in the fucking room while saying absolutely fucking nothing. If you want to take your fucking galaxy brain I mean, I fucking you, ten Russia. head We're gonna talk your about individual that. experience, then please educate us. But if I have to hear fucking Lauren's a dumbass about GPR one more fucking time for 35 fucking seconds, I'm going to fucking lose it. So either educate us, talk about the subject, keep up with the fucking conversation, or just don't bring up GPR again. Because I don't give a fuck and I don't trust Lauren to reinvent anthropology in the next fucking ten minutes okay, okay well so um okay so once again this is one of those moments where connor uh loses his cool and comes off as a massive fucking a massive fucking dick i'm sorry but that was like massive level dickishness sorry connor Yeah, I don't think that I don't think he did anything good there. I think that was a I think that was out of line, and also he came across sounding like a fucking asshole. Let's By move. the way, I I just wait, really need true. to make wait, the point wait, that wait, I am not wait, making wait, this up. Wait, I am wait, citing. Wait, no, no, no Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. Okay, sorry. Please, in the future, do not do that. Okay. Yes, sir. Rabbit. Lauren doesn't respect Dylan at all. I want you to respond to Connor. He said a lot, or if you want to respond, it's completely up to you. I mean, if he needs to take a little break and get a glass of water, that's fine. I have no objection. 
Okay. I, I want to throw it over to Lance since, again, um, I the time is uh, extremely lopsided at the moment. I want to make sure both sides get ample speaking time. Lance, do you want to say anything? Uh, well, just uh, to counterpoint's uh, statement there, if Lauren is making the assertion that she believes, in this case, that uh, this technology is not representational of the fact that there are mass graves, or perhaps we're lost again in the semantics of what constitutes a mass grave, then that is not on uh, tail to have to uh, educate anyone on. He's simply stating that she is putting into question the findings, which have already been agreed upon, by the way, by most of Canadians. Um, this is not something that's being uh, disproven. This is, uh, again, being stuck in semantics. And I can see Lauren's losing her mind in, in the process of hearing oh, this. Okay, thank um, you. There's a reason why multiple people, including you, uh, everyone here's favorite, Justin Trudeau, has come forward and stated that, yes, we'd like to apologize for this. We have acknowledged that this was genocide, that it is an ongoing process. This is process. actually a good point on Lance's first part. Prime Minister to say that. Uh, I'm no fan of Justin Trudeau, but I think it's reached a point now where this is not something that is being, uh, let's just say, debated. But I'll, I'll, I'll leave sure. the detail to, to finish up. Well, and I understood that the topic was supposed to be retributive justice, and we still haven't talked about that. So talk and about I'm... it, Roby. Can I respond? Just a two-second response here. Oh, no. Uh, or hold on. Not just okay, hold I on. thought you were done. Okay, you can continue. Well, I got interrupted there by counterpoints for just a moment. I was willing to let him finish, I suppose. But in any case... Does it get quiet? I'm not particularly interested in educating you. If you would like to talk to me after, then that's fine be happy to provide plenty of information on the subject of ground penetrating it radar. Reset. I know it frustrates you when I say that term. I'm not concerned with that. And that wasn't hmm. what the thesis of my statement actually was. I said we're quibbling over definitions because I haven't been confronted with any facts. So that's my concern. If you would like to somehow contradict what I said there, you may feel free to do so. But as I understood it, the topic here was about retributive that is, uh, justice. So tale I would of twin like rabbit. to know what the two of you mean when you talk about that so that we can discuss it. Hey, Connor, I'm not interested in discussing Dare mansplain. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mansplain. Uh, don't you oh, dare. Give me one minute because I just <sighs> really need to respond to this one point. It's we, I, we have to determine if there was a genocide I, or not I, because that was part of this topic. So that's why we are discussing this. And I really need to respond to the fact that we have to determine if there was a genocide or not. Notice! Attention! Chat! Fucking pay attention to what was just said there! Remember just a few minutes ago when she was claiming that they weren't arguing about whether there was or wasn't. Now she's moved the goalposts to the question of whether it was or wasn't. You have to pay attention to these type of sneaky, sneaky tricks. Lance and Tale of Twin Rabbits have just spent this whole, their whole last chat talking about how I have not provided any proof and I'm trying to reestablish the whole field of archaeology and anthropology and that I've made this up. That is not true. I've linked the Globe and Mail article in our Discord chat and this is what the researchers who found Mail? the initial graves that sparked this all off said. My findings cannot be confirmed unless... Ex now she's putting... Now she's putting the quotes around the graves. Notice that? Observations are done, which is why we need to pull back a little bit, and they are probable, probable burials. They are targets of interest for sure, said Dr. Bellio, who has about a decade of experience in the field, including working with the RCMP. She said the sites have multiple signatures that present like burials, but we do need to say that they are probable until one excavates because we actually don't know the story behind them. We don't know if there's even. This is a legal designation. What she is saying is meaningless. Obviously, if you have a radar scan, that is not seeing something with your own eyes. It is conceivably possible that you're misreading what's there, but we have numerous points of evidence that point to this exact thing. So she, her argument here is meaningless. It's literally just conspiracy mongering. She's saying, well, you don't know. It could be not a grave. What if it's just a, what if it just so happens to be something else? Even though we have documents from the church 
documents from the government, documents from Native American community groups that all point to the grave being there. It doesn't matter to her because she's just trying to sow uncertainty into everyone because she is a genocide denier and a conspiracy theorist bodies in there. We don't know if this is an overgrown graveyard. And these are the facts. I'm citing the researcher. This is not something I am making up. And you guys need to stop asserting that. Okay. Sure. Uh, so, can I can I respond to that? Or? Yes. I, I just want to make it very clear. I, I see kind of raising your hand. Um, I really want to give some and I'm going to this is the last time I'm going to do it. So please take uh, advantage of the opportunity that you guys have <laughs> like the the, the um, it's not a lack of understanding. It's a deliberate it's not a lack of understanding, everybody. It's a deliberate obfuscation. You have to recognize at this point, we have an abundance of evidence that Lauren is being deliberately obfuscating here. This isn't a, this isn't a lack of, uh, this isn't ignorance on her part. This is intentional. The difference in speaking time is very great right now, so I want to make sure. Yeah, exactly. S the, Susan Turpin says, there was a big old commission about six years ago where the Canadian government was like, yes, we, we acknowledge all of this happened, and they didn't deny shit. She's just denying shit that happened. Yes, that's how they do it. That's how genocide deniers do it. Oh, yeah, uh, Kino, I had to move my camera around so the, the color balance is a little off, but it looks kind of nice. Sure that both sides are probably represented. Good to see you, by the Lance, way, Kino. Uh, floor is yours. Yeah, sure. Okay, so when it comes to uh, the finding of the children, what you're doing, Lauren, is you're not pre uh, presenting any facts. What you're doing is that you're trying to selectively use parts of an article, the Globe and Mail article, I have it before me right now, in order to assert a conspiratorial claim. Now, if we look at, let's good say- Good call. Now, I think this should have come much earlier, but this is a good call. And by the way, just so you know, this looks fucking terrible. What you're doing Just is so that you know, trying to this right use here parts of an article, looks fucking the terrible. Article. I have it before me right now in order to assert a cons The problem is, though, that a lot of people listen to this on audio and don't see her shitty ass expressions. Like, look at this. Like, hold on a minute. Hold on. Parts of an article, the Globe and Mail article, I have it before me right now in order to assert a conspiratorial. I just need, I need some screenshots of this. We need to get, like, as many screenshots of this all the way through. Like, holy shit. The soy facing through this entire thing is just ridiculous. And remember, I love my expression making, okay? I love it. I love making expressions. You know, you all know this about me. But this is truly, this is truly something else. Claim. Now, if we look at, let's say, the truth and never. reconciliation. There claim. will never, ever, ever be a Lauren emoji ever that is embarrassing all right which is the largest study that has that. ever been done in this field isn't this strange coming from you oh i found out so that means that you're probably from ggg right because that's the you're the people who are obsessed with that isn't this strange coming from you no i am very open and honest contrary to popular belief um i'm very open and honest about the way that i express myself you all think it's an own when you say that i'm expressive but I'm expressive and I'm also respectful. You don't see me fucking soy facing over the genocide of children like you're fucking idiots. It's so funny. So fucking funny. You people think you're so smart. You're actually, your brains actually don't work. Hey, what qualifies you to analyze debates? What credentials have you got in the field? I'm just curious, not doubting. I like debates. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, I have been debating my entire life, uh, both formally and informally. It's something I've done. I've had. A, I've ma built a successful channel, almost entirely on, well, predominantly on debate, and then my channel exploded because of other content that I do. Um, and, uh, I, uh, love it. So, yeah, I think about it a lot. Yep. That's why. And my arguments are good. You don't need to have, I don't need to have a fancy degree. Am I right? Am I correct about the debate? Probably. I probably am. Woohoo! Let's continue. It is one that was started. Credentials for debates don't exist? Excuse me. Excuse me. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. 
Have you not seen? Have you not seen? My PhD? I mean, my letter that was given to me by Socrates that called me a philosopher? Thank God. I traveled back in time and I met Socrates and he gave me a debate approval letter. No, you can't see it. Let's continue. In 2008, it cost over $100 million to do, and it was one that interviewed thousands upon thousands, again, of indigenous survivors who had experienced the horrors and atrocities of the residential schools. The consensus and the broad consensus by this commission was overwhelmingly that not only did this con- You want to know where I learned? You want to know where I learned debate? Socrates. Everyone else was just a clone constitute genocide, but that there was multiple, multiple children who had died at these schools and yes, were buried near the schools themselves. This was part of the findings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So what you're trying to do and what you often do and what I'm- Did I win the belt? No, but I did get my own belt. Look at this shit. Look, somebody sent me a belt because they thought I did so good. Somebody thought I did so good that they fucking sent me my own belt, which is, that is cool. That is so cool. This is a viewer award. Like a viewer was just like, I think you did so good that you deserve a belt. And they sent me a belt, which is fucking pog as shit. It, it's really pretty awesome. I really like it. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. I'm sure Rebel News has taught you very well to do. It'll be in the background. And take we have a lot of work to do. So. of an article like you have here in the Golden Mail and then utilize that to try yeah, to extrapolate a theory. And that's just not going to cut it. Yeah, it makes me the people's champion. Indeed, the people's champion. True, though. Let's talk. continue. Oh, look, we got her. We got fucking Lauren over here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Lauren taking it so seriously. All right, let's get back to the fucking topic, all right? Hold on. Ducks Jen has a serious question. Or Doug Zen. As far as the debate is going, isn't the point of Connor and Lauren that since the bodies have not been con confirmed as such yet, there is a problem with the media portraying the issue as such and the repercussions that those may lead? For example, burning churches. This is the problem. The bodies do not need to be confirmed for this to be confirmed. The Canadian government and the Catholic Church have already confessed to the crimes. Genji Dodgeball at 2 a.m. Can DM really make fun of Lauren for making faces? Didn't I literally just... Didn't I literally just at talk about this? God, these people are truly stupid. These people are truly stupid. I think they just can't listen. Stone brain. I swear. Stone brain. Digging up, a gra digging up any graves and finding the skeleton of any kids would f tell us almost nothing new. Yes, that's exactly the thing. We already know, and, the and they have already confessed to it. So their argument is full of shit. Uh, ducks, ducks in, it doesn't matter about that particular site. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if that particular site was confirmed. Her, um, her, her argument is to, is to discredit... I mean... Wait, hold on a second, though. Literally, just a few minutes ago, Lauren said uh, that she was debating whether or not there was a genocide. She's let that slip. Lauren is not being honest here. Lauren is not being honest at all. The graves aren't even... Yeah, the graves aren't necessarily needed. I do agree with you on that particular one, Corporeal. Hey, I do agree with you on that particular one. I don't think the graves are necessarily important here. The graves... And, and keep in mind, the graves made the story come back into the public consciousness. This story already was reported on years ago when this first when this process first started. It was just this um, huge piece of evidence that appeared that is shocking to many people. Let's continue. About now. Uh, I think eventually we should move on to the idea of Catholic Church. Payne Sama says, to what benefit does this provide them? Genocides are common throughout history. It just seems creepy as fuck for her to pull this shit. I, I'll say this again. I'll probably end up repeating this multiple times. It is because people who are identitarians, white identitarians, far right people, have a, a, they have a vested interest in, in cleansing the history of their nation because their nation can't just be a good one. Their nation has to be the greatest ever, chosen by God, the chosen people who deserve to rule over the earth. 
And so, of course, they must deny genocide. They must say, nah, 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 it was justified or whatever. Let's continue. Churches, because that's something you wanted to talk about. But one of the final points that I wanted to move on to, if you want to talk about Canadian genocide and talk about the process, is move on to the child care and the foster care system. But I see Cameron points us his hand up, so I'll let him talk. Yeah. Okay, wait. Please. One more one second. I just want to give one last opportunity to tell Connor. <laughs> Law and order, no. okay? I just want to give one last opportunity to tell two rabbits to speak at this point so we can rebalance the time slots. Rabbit? I'm fine. Counterpoint seems very interested to go. Okay, Connor. Thank you. So, you said no facts were given. But basically what I would say is Lauren and I have come at you with a bunch of descriptive facts. And not only that, they fit a shitload of your narrative. We've already said that there's probably a few thousand mm -mm. students that died uh, in the rest no, of No, Connor. No, that's not true. You and Lauren aren't in agreement on this. Lauren just denied the genocide. And you didn't catch it. Is Counterpoints a genocide denier? No, he hasn't engaged in genocide denial so far. However, he is helping a genocide denier, which I don't know if he's doing that intentionally or not, but it is a big deal. Central school system. As a matter of fact, the current uh, official estimate from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission puts it about 4,300, okay? Uh, based off of the narratives uh, collaborated or whatever the fuck the word is at the Truth and Reconciliation, um, it was largely poor conditions, disease, abuse, uh, exposure, and fire. Those are the majority of the things. Yes, Vox Humana says this is the same reason why the radical right is so up in arms around uh, critical race theory. The ultimate goal is to scrub American history of inconvenient truths. That is very true. Yes, revisionism and right-wing right, right -wing revisionism. Wait, you realize that this is a thing that, hap that happens in Japan, too. We don't even need to talk about the United States. The conservative government of Japan has pushed to, um, has pushed to censor the uh history of the war crimes they committed in world war ii this happens all right-wing governments do this because they're motivated their ideology tells them that they need to have a a d almost it's not necessarily always literally divine but they need to have a supernatural claim to power and the way you have a supernatural claim to power is by claiming that you're a unique people a unique people that never does anything wrong the primary contention that I've had historically in this entire conversation is whether or not we should use the term mass graves, which I get is a little bit pedantic for two, tale of two rabbits or whatever. But at the same time, when somebody says mass graves to me, I'm assuming marching a bunch of children out into the fucking woods and executing them and then shoving them into a ditch and then throwing fucking dirt on them. And as I've already conceded, if that was reality, then I would be doing some fucked up shit right about now. Okay? And it's not that any of this is not awful, but there's a spectrum of fucking awful. So whenever I'm trying to be accurate descriptively and I'm presenting these facts I'm live. to you. CDN, I'm live. We're reacting to a debate and analyzing it. These facts that are like ag agreed upon by the people who support your narrative. The reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want people to go out there and say, there are mass graves in Canada. There, there's 4,000 kids that were discovered, and basically the, the Canadian government has been committing genocide. Oh, shit, that sounds fucking awful. That sounds like the fucking Canadian Mountain Police walked a bunch of kids out into the woods and shot them in the back of the head and threw them in shallow ditches. That's what people think when you say that shit. So when I'm being— I disagree with this. See, again, this is—I this is, disagree with this claim. Uh, Connor is asserting that, that claim without evidence. There's no evidence that people think that. In fact, the—in fact— uh, colloquial, like, uh, anecdotal data would seem to indicate otherwise because the prevalence of people talking about mass graves is it indicates that people do actually use the term mass grave to describe what Lance is saying. So Connor is just... Um, Connor is not making a good argument here. Although, it's probably rhetorically effective, but... Um, but... Uh, but... I, I do think it's worth distinguishing that Connor's argument here isn't good. It presumes the idea that most people would think the way that he does, but that's not actually true. He needs to actually, he would need to actually show that, and he hasn't and isn't. Descriptive, and I'm being pedantic, and I'm trying to boil out these fucking definitions. It's because when people say that shit, they have emotional and mental and logical justification to go throw Molotov, cocktail, uh, Molotov cocktails at shit. But when you say in... 
Okay, the fact that Lauren is over here making, like, hold on a second. The fact that Lauren is over here making, like, prayer, like, being like, oh my god, thank you. Thank you so much. The fact that she's doing that right now is fucking hilarious. Like, that is... <laughs> oh my fucking god. Let's just rewind here and I'll show you exactly why. Just listen to this. Say that shit? They have emotional and mental and logical justification to go Hold throw on. molotov cocktail uh molotov cocktails at shit but okay do we not remember that lauren southern was cited as an inspiration for the christchurch killing and right now connor is making an argument in favor of uh, in favor of the fact that emotionally charged news and commentary can create stochastic incidents. And Lauren is here clapping that on, even though she regularly claims that she cannot be blamed for the shit that happened. Yep. So, uh, it's really funny. It's very funny. Yeah, no, she was associated with Identity Europa, a group that uh, the Christchurch shooter uh, uh, claimed was a huge inspiration. Uh, Lauren Southern is about one step removed from that and yet she always says oh no that's that's ridiculous it's ridiculous it's fucking ridiculous and yet here they are right now in front of all of our faces making an argument that is even more tenuous than the claim that, Lor that Lauren Southern directly inspired a terrorist act it's ridiculous when you say instead that there were horrific conditions the Canadian government committed cultural genocide. It was not addressed up until like 1996. On top of that, there's systemic issues that extend into the modern day that are unaddressed that Canadians only seem willing to reconcile with right now. That's a massively different narrative. Now, maybe the anger still needs to be there. Maybe the passion still needs to be there. Maybe the reformation still needs to be there. But at the same time, it's not the same as mass execution of children. So that's where I'm being pedantic and annoying. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'd like to address that directly. So you've already acknowledged that under the conditions of the residential school system, every single death that occurs is because they are, again, wards of the state, right? So it doesn't matter if they're dying from tuberculosis, doesn't matter if they're dying from malnutrition, starvation, there's still deaths that are responsibility of the provincial or federal government, correct? I Okay, what I would say is, while not necessarily biting that bullet in full, I do think that it is their responsibility, mm. and it is mm. their wrong. Uh, so I'm not trying to split I hairs here. I'm trying to be very specific. Some of these things are not controllable, okay? Fires, tuberculosis, all that kind of stuff. Some of that stuff isn't controllable. But at the same time, there's something called liability, which means responsibility. The government was in charge of these people. The, uh, the Native Americans whose children were forcibly taken by the government lost something that is very important to them. There is something, th there's nothing more important to me in this world than my son, okay? So since the Canadian government took children and either accidentally, like accidentally or negligently killed them, they owe the families whose children were killed something, where that's restorative justice, systemic change, you know, all that kind of bullshit. We can talk about that in the next uh, the next segment. Yeah, sure. So it, it seems to me like it's just a point of disgust that you want to reach, right? So for you, it would be egregious and beyond the pale if the children were taken out into the back of the woods and they were shot in the face. That to you is like, okay, that justifies me burning down a church, apparently. Whereas I would say that in this condition and the things that happened, when the statistics show one in five of the children Thank you very much, my curious arrested, George. Thank you. That to me is horrifying enough in and of itself to not even have to bring up the other things. Again, those things include experience experimentation those things include torture those things include physical and sexual abuse all of which to me are beyond the pale so it doesn't matter to me whether or not we're going to quantify this in this kind of strange scale of eyeballs right which is more horrifying are they shot in the face or are they all just sexually molested by priests either way again as wards of the state the canadian government the catholic church were responsible for overseeing their safety they failed horrifyingly at that okay but descriptively i know lauren you want to go but i'm very excited so um, basically, descriptively, th this actually very closely parallels onto the BLM riots uh, of the previous year, okay? I can understand descriptively why riots are occurring. System you know, systemic injustice, uh, you know, over-policing, the drug war, like all that kind of stuff. I can understand descriptively why these things are happening 
while not thinking that they're necessarily morally justifiable. So that's the... This argument is so obnoxious to me because this is this argument always boils down to an argument about individual responsibility. It's basically saying, well, yeah, I get it. Things are so bad that people are breaking under the pressure, but any individual person who broke under the pressure is still bad. So it is a false concession. It's saying, well, yeah, things are bad, but that doesn't mean that you should be angry. Well, what? how do you justify what happened to them in the first place? This isn't even a matter of two wrongs make a right. This is somebody is actively like, let's take a look at some of the like most severe protests that occurred or the most severe, you could even argue the most severe uprisings that happened during the George Floyd protests. Um, there was uh, like a lot of the people, the most severe ones, there was like looting and stuff like that happened in places that were the most impoverished areas in the United States. Do you remember when there was like the whole Chicago, uh, Chicago BLM um, or George Floyd uprising and there was like tons and tons of looting? That all happened in the most, the places that were most affected by both policing and uh, unemployment during COVID. So like you actually, you can't just pivot away to this like idea of personal responsibility. People chose to make, to grab an iPhone when, when, when somebody breaks a window because, specifically because their situation is bad. Like it, it, it's a very childish uh, interpretation of the world to pivot from like going, yeah, I recognize why people would be under duress um, and then to go, but you know, but on a personal level, you know, you still, you still shouldn't do that. It doesn't actually say anything. You're not making a statement. You're just sort of being like, I don't really like that very much. Oh, hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, sick. There's sauce and everything. Thank you very much. Oh, can, um, would you mind refilling my drink over by it, please? Thank you so much. Yay. We got some food. Okay. I got some food to eat. All right. <sighs> I'm going to eat my food here real quick. Let's continue. Because, yeah, I do have a strong, I, I do have, there are certain aspects of my accent that were influenced by New England. That's true. Can't you argue the BLM riots were as legitimate as the U.S. Revolution? Of course. Of course you can. In fact, in fact, You might discover there's a lot more legitimacy to rebellious movements than you might think. The American Revolution was a, was a bourgeois insurrection. And that's the only reason why people look back on it is because it was a bourgeois insurrection. It was. It was a, a, an insurrection of landowners against the crown. Sorry. It's really funny how in a a how when um when poor people rise up and say no taxation without representation, they're demonized and they're rioters, but then when a bunch of business people rise up and say no taxation without representation, those guys get to be revered as the founding fathers, the heroes. Yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's a little weird. Huh. A little strange, isn't that, huh? Yeah, it was literally about rich people not wanting to be taxed. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Oh, thank you so much. Can Connor is not Canadian. All right, let's continue. Let's continue through this. I'm going to eat while we watch. That's the same parallel that I would exactly draw to this thing, where I can understand that if your uncle or something like that was a part of the residential school system, he was sexually abused, and then a story comes out saying that there's mass graves in Catholic churches, and there's a, and there's a Catholic church up the block, and you're either a leftist who's sympathizing with Native Americans 
or um, you're a Native American person yourself, why you would commit vandalism. I understand that descriptively, but I also think that it's based on um, some shittily communicated information and that doesn't make it morally just, which I'm very happy to explore in the next segment because basically once we get into the details of the next segment, I think you're going to kind of see why the reaction to this stuff is also fucked up. Yeah, but see, I'm not here arguing in favor of people destroying churches. I'm, I'm not here arguing even if they were uh, the victims. Like, I can understand why it's justifiable, but I'm not saying that that is a fair course of action to be taking. I'm not here to justify people destroying churches. I mean, if, if that's where we're going to move, that's fine. Uh, I, I would start by saying at this time, we do not know who is burning the churches down. Yeah, we don't. I think okay, it's also I really throw, telling. Wait, I, I wanted yeah. to throw it over to Lauren because Lauren's been waiting a little bit. Then I'll throw it over to Tail afterwards. Yeah, that, that was going to be my next question for you, Lance, is whether you think these church burnings are justified because I made a video on the church burnings and you obviously responded with a, a long response where you claimed that my video condemning the church burnings was further victimizing the indigenous community because I was blaming them for it, something I never asserted once in my entire video. So... You know, it may have been easy to debate a straw man version of me, but now I'm actually here. Um, okay. I actually think it's a lot of progressives doing it. And we can't say we don't know who are doing these burnings when people are literally signing off with activist messages or spray painting and graffiti and activist messages. These are clearly like progressive activists like that have been what? inspired Wait, like what? by the highly exaggerated talk of mass graves, which some, some of which, like ones found in Kelowna, um, in BC anyways, were just graveyards that were overgrown, but called mass graves. So we know what? these are activists. We know they're oh, being invigorated by false oh, and exaggerated God, news. So do bad. you condemn that? And do you condemn the church burnings and, and attacks in general? Yeah, okay, so, so I, that was a direct question to Lance. I've got to let Lance respond, but then we I want to go to tail. Okay, so first off, that was absolutely fascinating because you contradicted yourself mid-sentence. So that was something to behold. You just stated at the very beginning that, like, I'm not going to assert who's causing this. There's just no way of knowing. I wouldn't do that. Well, at the same time, mid-sentence, you're like, but we do know who is doing this because there are signs and activists uh -oh. committing these crimes and atrocities. Uh -oh. uh, still, no, 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 even I if you have signs and even if you have revelations, hey, excuse me, I'm speaking. We're going to finish this. Even if you do have signs, even if you do say that, yes, at the end of the day, this must be Antifa or this must be an indigenous community who's doing it, we would still need to have direct evidence of that we would still need to have individuals who are arrested we would still need to have testimonies we would still need to have a single like criminal conviction in this regard Good point. and when it comes to these schools or sorry these catholic churches burning down yes i do condemn them i'm not here to defend people burning down religious institutions that's not what i'm here to defend okay i'm gonna throw it over to tail and that was directed at lauren so we'll bring it back to lauren well, I do also find it interesting that we keep trying to move this definition of what was an acceptable level of death, like whether or not the fires at these residential schools can be attributable to some I sort of nefarious intent. And my answer okay. to that would be, well, maybe if they hadn't had the removal policy in the first place, then those kids wouldn't have died in those fires. But it is a curiosity to me that we do keep talking about these church fires. The church fires have been happening since long before the information came out about these kids. I mean, for for example, on November 1st of 2020, there were two Southwestern Ontario churches that were roughly 10 minutes apart. They were both set on fire. There was a series of arsons that Some were attributable to a man who was apparently arrested Some over COVID violations just the week before the news was released. Uh, that was, uh, by the way, attributed by rebel news no, to cultural fries. Marxists who were trying to rebel against mask regulations. So what is it we're talking about right now? I'm not in favor of church burnings. I think it's bad because it tends to destroy the records of these kids who were murdered and tortured. I, I think it's a bad idea overall, but I'm not seeing any evidence whatsoever that it somehow sprang fully formed from the forehead of Antifa five minutes after they found out that something was amiss at the residential schools. People have known what was going on at the residential schools for years. The Truth and Reconciliation okay? Commission came out in 2016. Yeah. So we've had plenty of time to process this information why are we suddenly worried about all of these church burnings? They've been happening for quite a while now. Well, by the, Lauren, by the way, I this mean... wasn't a secret to indigenous communities. Uh, like right? this was one of the things I, where it was a revelation to Canadians. I, I, Lance, Lance, I, I said, I yep. said that Lauren would be next. I can, I'll get it back over to you, but I want to be fair. Lauren? Yeah. Um, hmm. There, even the mainstream media, even if you go look at the most leftist sources, they're not denying that there is a link between these church burnings and the recent reports. Why? 
because the media headlines, even the prime minister are talking about these mass graves, which the media are asserting and exaggerating are mass graves. And that's why this whole previous conversation was important. Of course, it's linked when you have 12 churches being attacked one night after a mass media storm about mass indigenous graves and the churches have writing on them that say in, save indigenous children. The idea that you could assert this has no link and that it's just random church burnings, I think is very, very silly. And Connor, I, I see you're putting your hand up there. I, yeah, but I how see. do you conclude that's the left? You just conclude that that's people who all that she's done there is concluded is is confirmed that it's people who are mad about the situation, not that it's leftists. She's the one who's trying to assert this ridiculous position. Uh, on hippy dippy, we usually have a hand raising role, so I think I've I've kind of like done it like, like yeah, the we've, guy all been, who we've all been doing dogs, it. you know. Oh, yeah, sorry, so I know I'm not the mod. <laughs> so it's like a, a what's a Pavlov? You know how Pavlov like made the dogs like twitch if he did a certain thing. It's kind of like that, so that's why he's raising his hand. We're gonna go to Lance first, and then Connor, since uh, Lance was trying to speak earlier. Lance. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna quickly say that there has been numerous indigenous chiefs as well as band members who have come out and emphatically condemned the church burnings. They've also stated that these uh, churches were an integral parts of their community. So I think to lay blame on any one person, especially again before we understand who's done it, uh, historically it has all been proven to be a very dangerous practice. So. In the event that an individual in this case is arrested, in the event that we have a testimony, in the event that we find out that it happens to be the, the dreaded communists or Antifa, in which case, yes, I will acquiesce and gladly say, well, now we have a reason to, to state that this is the reason why this has occurred. Again, I'd like to say emphatically that this was not news to indigenous communities. This was not a new revelation. Uh, they have known for generations. The majority of the families of the children who had died in residential schools were told by those schools that their children ran away. That was like, if you listen to the testimony I mean, of the sure, people yeah. who have experienced this, in the vast majority of those cases, those kids, if they did run away, which sometimes they were just killed in school themselves, they would have died on the journey. Many of them drowned, many of them froze. So it's not a case of all of a sudden this has opened up a secret. What this did do was this did reveal everything to Canadians. Polls came out afterwards that two thirds of Canadians had no idea about residential schools before any of this occurred. And yes, I think that is a good thing that they've That's learned about saying. this entire That's horrifying part saying. of our history. But that doesn't mean at that same time you can simply state that the blame of this was good. This is what I was saying. I was just saying this. We've known about the facts of this for a while. This is just bringing it back into the public attention. I think, I think, I think Lance has touched on something good here. Going to be late on any one person. Okay. Okay, Connor. Thank you. And part of the reason why I keep raising my hands is because you keep ringing the fucking the dinner bell and you keep taking away my fucking dog bowl. All right. So, <laughs> goddamn. Um. So, okay. I, I hate, hate asking questions in debates because I, I'm not trying to fucking got you you. But if we were just trying to logically think about it, as far as factional groups within the uh, within Canada, okay, we have the conservative Canadians. They're probably not doing it. I think that's safe to say, especially if they're Christian. We have, okay. uh, you know, maybe we have Satanists. Maybe all the Satanists have gotten on like a Reddit forum and they're just like, fuck churches, all specifically right now fuck churches right maybe that happened who fucking knows right somebody go check 4chan but the fucking lines that i'm drawing here seem very straightforward that upsetting news about the residential school system has been released and been the focus of media attention for at least the past okay. couple of years that's why we're talking about it right now because it's relevant the regardless of whether or not it's pissed off indigenous folk or people who sympathize them or sympathize with them is kind of a moot point but i i think here to be like you have to find evidence that this is the prime motivator why who else would be doing it besides people it. who saw the news got pissed off and decided they wanted to do something off. about it i'm not I'm talking about whether or not it's good or bad i'm just saying why are we trying to play hide the ball here about who's doing what and why uh, because I'm not stating that we have to find, like, ignore what the prime motivator would be. I, I'm sure you can make that assertion. I'm saying that we cannot claim or lay blame on any one group until we found out who exactly is doing it. You can you can That's state true. here's why I think what this is the reason why it is, but 
I think it's been very dangerous if people are going to attribute to this. Say, like, I've I've heard online uh, that a lot of people consider this to be indigenous activists, right? That they were burning these churches out of anger and malice. I've heard a lot of people suggest that it may be, uh, as you both have, far leftist groups who are doing the exact same thing. Yeah, but there's no evidence. The you evidence can, is the you can attribute here. who you think the blame is. This is so silly. This is so silly. Like, uh, oh my God. Again. The, the great hypocrisy in all of this is, of course, how frequently the right-wingers de deny stochastic terrorism. And then they'll go immediately just say, oh, it must be leftist. Because in their mind, and it's funny, wait, if you break down the argument real quick, I, 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 just want you to, I just want you to break down the argument. What they're saying is it has to be leftists because only leftists care about indigenous people. That is the argument they're making. They're, they don't, they, they're not saying it like that, but that's the argument they're making. They're saying, well, if people are burning these churches and there's pro-indigenous messages, well, it must be leftists. It's a very, very silly um, argument to be made, but that's the argument that's been made here. Okay. Uh, good job, I guess. That's a self-report. Yeah, it is. It is quite literally a self-report. Yep ass mode with the self-report yep lay out but until we know who has done it i don't think we can definitively say or claim in this debate here's who is the responsible party and here's why you have contributed or the leftists have contributed or the media has contributed towards an atmosphere that resulted in these churches being burnt down sure and actually i want to address this head on because this kind of gets into um justice right um so for me the same way that you're asking that like hey left-wing groups it could there it could be some individuals in the left-wing groups that are doing this but left-wing groups in general probably aren't doing this as a policy and as a matter of fact there's people in left-wing groups and indigenous circles that are actually discouraging these behaviors and they're not trying to encourage them they're actually saying this is fucked up please stop it's the, the vast majority like, the, yeah the vast majority of bands and chiefs who've come out have spoken against it awesome so when we move this conversation into justice, um, basically what I would assert is that this is where I would want to see justice meted out. So on a, um, I don't want to say an individual level, but on a, almost on an individual level. So for instance, you were talking about priests that did the molestation. They should be investigated, prosecuted, and uh, convicted, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether uh, maybe the church should consider paying restitution to people who are proven to be victims or some shit like that, okay? maybe maybe the government should do some do uh try to address systemic issues in order to help people out okay uh, especially people who are specifically affected by these issues i think that's all well and good what we're trying to avoid here actually very specifically through this conversation or at least what my goal would be is avoiding a cultural ethnic linguistic and religious civil war in our liberal democracy and the thing is canada's reckoning with this right now america's not even fucking close to reckoning with any of this shit. That's Whether true. we're talking about Native That's American true. affairs, slavery, that like any of that true. kind of shit, we're not even close to, to starting to describe to each other the actual historical wrongs that we have done to each other. So um, I, I want to get into this in a second, but I understand that you guys have asserted repeatedly that like um, there's an ongoing genocide. I would probably contend with that definition, but there's you can say that there's systemic issues or whatever, but I would see the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which we have stats on all the initiatives that they have started already, I would actually see that as the fucking gold standard of like transparency. Like it's actually incredible what they've done. Which is funny, which is funny though, Connor. Problem, Connor. Big problem. If that's true, why are you on the side of somebody who's explicitly arguing against the commission? Big problem. Big fucking problem. Why would you be on the side of somebody who's literally arguing against the findings of what you call the gold standard? I think Connor made a mistake here. Honestly, I think Connor made a mistake being on the side of Lauren Southern in this argument, and I think it hurts him. He's not on our side, but he is. This is an argument where they're on a team. Now, is it completely accurate? Maybe not. Does it, is everything productive? Probably not. But as far as like actually going to the root of the problem, coming up with descriptors, coming up with policy, and then trying to implement it, it's fucking amazing. Um, so I'm happy to get into that in a second. 
Yeah, uh, I'm actually just uh, genuinely surprised uh, with that response because we've just been throwing all these spicy shots. But like, I agree with most of what you said, and I think it's actually a very constructive way of dealing with this problem. At the end of the day, what has upset me most, especially with Lauren's video, is that I think this idea of suddenly talking about the moral outrage at the church burnings, which mm -hmm. I agree, uh, burning of religious institutions is something to be uh, astounded at is trying to change the narrative from something that is an ongoing crisis in this country, which is the treatment of hundreds of thousands of indigenous people. And that is the thing that we should be talking about. That is the thing we should be concentrating on. And that is the thing we should be addressing. So I think that, yes, it is horrifying that churches are burning down, but I don't want anyone to lose the concentration that things like discovering of, uh, you know, b dead children, buried children, indigenous and residential schools, if this is where suddenly the uh, public conscience has come, and this is what we're talking about, then let's utilize this as an opportunity to start talking about the issues of cultural genocide that are occurring to Indigenous people today. Because there are. Um, because there are, by response, the way. It's you. By the way, the UN recognizes that. The Human Rights Watch recognizes that. There are ongoing, um, there are ongoing factors of genocide going on today. Now, it's not continuing in totality, obviously. But this has been recognized again. You talked about my video. Lance, I, I watched your video and you actually liked the beginning of my video because I did not ignore the problems that happened in residential schools. I discussed them. You liked that aspect. Where you didn't like it was when I started talking about the church burnings. And these are not, these, these problems cannot just exist. You can talk about both problems. Why not? And we need to, because we actually have an injustice happening today that we can talk about and deal with and stop. And then the other ones, I mean, you say there's injustice happening today and the government are working on that. There, there are a lot of policies they've put in place for healing and maybe there are more we can discuss. But this is, these church burnings are a problem happening right now. And I think it's really good that people are talking. So, so are the ongoing aspects of, of oppression against indigenous people which have been recognized by numerous sources to be continuing pieces of a genocide. About them, especially when they bring in the conversation of the problems with residential schools as well. I cannot see what I have done wrong in... There, no, there isn't. See, J.E. Beck, you bring up a good point. Is there any reason to believe that the government, the full force of the government is not already being used to investigate the church burnings? No, this is scaremongering. This is all scaremongering discussing that. I also really want to point something out. Um, when it comes to the church burnings, you seem really interested in ensuring we have found the culprits and ensuring we have proper convictions. Yet when it comes to the Catholic Church, you were just saying we should be outing the names of people who have been accused, not convicted. So why does your, you know, passion for justice and innocent until proven guilty exist for the church burnings, but not for the Catholic Church? What? Sure. So that's not what I said. What I said was that should they release the records of the individuals who were involved in these churches and whether or not those records you will said show. Uh, yeah, I said as in the, the records revolving around both the nuns and the priests who worked at those churches, those are records that the Catholic Church has not released. Whether or not those people turn out to be pedophiles is something that we can investigate and whether or not those people will turn out to be criminals is another thing that we can talk about. The reason you're talking about two different things, too. She's talking about She's talking, okay, so they're talking about two different things. Lance was talking about whether the church should give over the information to the Canadian government. Lauren is talking about whether she can blame leftists with no evidence. This is a fucking monumentally stupid argument. How can, like, oh God. It's literally, they're talking about two completely different things. Lauren is arguing that she should be able to accuse leftists of burning the churches. And Lance is arguing that the, the Catholic Church should have to give over the records of who worked at these churches so that the government can pursue justice. Like, what the fuck? Am I... Am I, like, uh... Am I missing something here? Why I don't enjoy your particular uh, brand of, like, pearl clutching when it comes to talking about these issues is that yes you did a half decent job at acknowledging which i was surprised to see the residential school system and the treatment of indigenous people 
when you twist things around and then you take this as an opportunity to say, and now we need to talk about the real issue, which happens to be these Catholic churches that are burning down, you are then trying to take away from the national conversation, which should be about the treatment of indigenous people. If I was to compare the treatment of Catholics in Canada to the treatment of indigenous Canadians, where do you think they would stack up? If I was to compare the treatment of the average white Catholic Canadian to the experience of the average Indigenous Canadian, where do you think we would end up? Who needs more help and who needs more concern right now in terms of the way they're being systemically oppressed between those two classes? I wasn't comparing them. I was giving history and context as to why no, the were. outrage and conversation was happening in Canada and then discussing how two wrongs don't make a right. And that's the result like that. of what you do. Yeah, but nobody's because making an argument, Lauren. Again, straw man. Lauren cannot actually engage. Again, once again, I say it again. Lauren is a is a demagogue. She is not engaging with the questions at hand. She is repeating her talking points. She is weaseling herself back into her talking points at every single opportunity. It's very, very frustrating. Um, and you can see this happening right now. You're, you can see it. Li you can watch it going right now. When when Lance is pointing out something, she refuses to acknowledge it and goes right back to her talking point. Put those terms up. When you put them in that context, when you make those kind of videos, when you just ask questions, that's what ends up happening. And whether you're doing it consciously, I'm happening? not sure. I, I don't know if you're doing it consciously or perhaps you're doing it unconsciously. I'm not sure. But that is the end result of your work. And when you make those kind what of is? videos. What is? When you, juxtapi when you juxtapose two things like that, two opposing ideas, you set them up on the same terms, you make videos about them, and then suddenly it's going to be justifiable to think, well, the moral outrage should shift from this horrifying atrocity that has occurred and is still ongoing to yeah, Indigenous he's right, Canadians though. into, so should we, should now, we should now talk about Catholic churches and the burning of them down. That, that is the problem with both? your particular I, brand of content. I, I think, and I guess it's maybe just my audience, but my audience have the ability to juggle two ideas at the same time. I can explain past. See, now, Lance fell into a trap here because this is exactly, this, uh, this is a little frustrating. I understand his position here. He's correct in making the argument that she's distracting, but he failed to illustrate how that's the case. And so now she's like, what, we can't talk about two things? What he should have said is, you don't talk about you don't talk about this ongoing genocide. You don't talk you haven't talked about the history of it. You don't teach your audience about this. But the moment there's one church that's burnt, you jump to conclusions and say, "Oh, it was the leftists. Oh, the leftists must have done this." Where's the videos? Where's the videos in which you talked about all of the 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 dead the dead skelet or the dead people that have been uncovered? Where's the video where you go in? Oh no, but then one church gets burnt and you're all like, "Look at the left has gone too far." So, hmm. 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 Anyway, let's continue. Atrocities and then say, here's also a present atrocity happening and they can say, wow, those are both bad things. Like, I don't know about your audience, but my audience can juggle two, two things at the same time without an issue. And, and it's with design. Because by doing that, by pushing that narrative, they will be forced then to look at that and be like, well, you know what? I was a little bit upset about what was happening to indigenous people, but I should be a lot more upset now at the Catholic churches that are burning down because you've said so it So we up shouldn't that way. talk about the Catholic churches because it takes away. No, you can. See, this is the problem. Now, that was, a, that was a relatively good response from Lance here. That was a relatively good response here because he said that it puts them on, on two places, but what he, sh or that it puts them on an even, on an even ground. But what he should also say here is that you just said, like Lauren just a couple seconds ago, said that they should be worrying more about the churches because those are going on, those are ongoing now. He should pin her on this. Let's see if he does. From indigenous issues. You can is talk about the Catholic serving? churches. You should not juxtapose the two of them as if one is now going to be able to justify or accuse the other of being wrong. That's not what I did though. So how should yes, I have made my video? Yes, it literally is. You just did that. What I did was I said, this is what happened at indigenous residential schools. This is why it was bad, not a good thing. And then also there's this not a great thing happening today. And both things are I bad. I know that Connor was in there. And we yeah, need to I talk know. about it because it's happening right now. How should I have done that video differently? I feel like you're nitpicking and trying to find a problem with me because you didn't actually have an issue with that video, which is why you made up your issue what? in your response, which is that I was blaming okay. natives, which I never did. 
What is Connor's face here? <laughs> what is Connor's face? Oh no! What an unfortunate pause screen. Oh my god. Otherwise, you would have had an. Act I don't know. I, here, I'll give you the. I'll give it to you, Jazz Dog. Don't worry. Hold on, Jazz Dog. I'll get it to you. Hold on. I got you. I got you. I got you. Here, Jazz. I'll get it to you. I know you got some. I know you're. I can feel that you're. I can feel you're reaching for the memes right now. I'll get you. I'll, I'll cover you. Don't worry. Where'd it go? Where'd my fucking shit go here? Here we go. Here you go, Jazz Dog. Enjoy. Have fun with that. Have fun with it. Okay. Let's continue. Actual critique in your initial video. Oh, I can answer that question quite easily. The information, I find it interesting that we've just glossed past the fact that these church burnings have actually been happening since long before the news was released. But in mm -hmm. scouring through the information over the last, oh, probably two years trying to find church burnings, Hello, causes, Ugly Pie. Good to see you. there were investigations performed, I found one that was particularly funny to me, which was it was a church that has burned in the same spot three separate times over the last 50 years and it turned out that it was the area where the priests keep the incense and the anointing oil because for some reason i don't know why this particular group of priests is just not aware that you probably shouldn't have an open flame next to flammable oil and so this is the fifth time that the fire department has been called out so i would have liked to see you discuss for example why it is that canadian churches seem to be exempt from fire codes or be aware that fire extinguishers have been invented that's fascinating tale so your current assertion is that all the fucking churches that burned down in canada over the past two years was connor connor is a good debater here at least on this that right there, Connor just did what I recommended before. Remember when I said that the way that you deal with like meaningless you, is you call them on it, you go, okay, fine, let's rule out, let's rule out that one residential school. What about the 215 other residential schools? You got an excuse for every single one of those? You got an excuse for every single COVID death? He just did that. He just did the thing that I was pointing out is a good way to do. And, and that puts that puts Twin Rabbit and and the Surfs in an awkward position. It's it's when you bluff call on a Gish Gallop. Damn. Accidental and Catholic priests, on top of being fucking pedos and fucking Native American beaters, are fucking. I fucking oh my god! Look at look at this shit. Dog shit at fucking fire safety. That's what you want to contribute to this fucking conversation right now. I'm contributing to you the facts as they stand. If you have a problem with the facts as they stand, that's your problem. I have the f I have problems with the fucking facts because you keep doing this meta conversation bullshit that has fucking nothing to do with what's going on. So t so tell me because I am frustrated with you. What the fuck did you just add to the conversation by saying that maybe Catholic priests are accidentally burning down their own churches? Is that a serious contention that Lauren and I? I'm sorry. This is just so fucked. I need to be. I are supposed to take on earnestly. Do you think that we need to go back to fucking Google.com right now and be real quick and like be like, hey, uh, what's the fucking fire codes of the fucking Vatican? Do they put out fucking fire safety briefs for the priests? Like, what the fuck am I supposed to research with that information? Are you asking me for tips? And no, tricks? I'm not because I know you're shit posting and you're being an asshole for no fucking reason. Contribute to the fucking conversation or die. I think Connor might have learned this tactic from me. I, I regret to inform you, I think Connor might have learned this tactic from me. This is the exact tactic that I use against against uh against Rob Nor. But it's true. He's doing the right move here. The correct rhetorical move is to uh is when somebody is gish galloping, to just say, Okay, fine, maybe you're right. Maybe, uh, maybe one of the, maybe one of the, uh, things was, uh, was fake. Maybe, maybe aliens did plant evidence on that particular one. What about the 900 others? You got an excuse for those two? And then you wait, and you bait them into having an excuse for every single one. It goes, damn, it just seems like you've got a conspiracy theory for everything. And they can't get out of it, because they can't go back. And Connor has pinned uh twin rabbit on this hey thank you very much android covenant i appreciate that 
This was a bad argument by Twin. This was a bad argument by Twin Rabbit. He gave Connor points a layup here. Oh, I'm identifying Holy that shit. the church fires preceded any announcement of these graves, and mm -hmm. your assertion repeatedly is that there is some sort so, of. So, so hold the fuck up. So, wait, so if wait, I take wait, a look, wait, wait, what Connor, the fuck are you Connor, taking my Connor, ball? Connor, because I gotta let him at least finish if you want to respond to him. Okay, tail, please finish. Um, I think. Dude. I think Connor but see Connor to... Connor losing his shit is is he throws away his victory and it's funny because there's only one per like I have a bad reputation for getting angry but we all know fucking Connor's got a hotter head even than me I don't know why he's so mad take a break but yeah, do you want to finish okay I do I'm, this all the time buddy I'm perfectly fine I'm good you may you may can proceed it's obviously very important to you. Oh, it hey, is. Hey, Connor, you can go on. See, thank you for the dog bowl, Dylan. Ding, ding. So, fucking... All right. So you said that these church burnings happened in the past as well. Look at... Lauren is just sitting over here just laughing. Like, th this, is, this is the face of a fucking Nazi right here. I'm sorry. It just is. And that's just my personal read. Plus the, plus the 1488 bracelet and the identity Europa and the shooting flares at migrants and the, you know, all that shit. Allegedly, if I was to Google allegedly. church burnings and look at it statistically, do you think I would see an increase over the past two years? I have absolutely no idea. Then what the fuck are you I, talking I would, about? I would say probably. And... Come on, mm, Kendrick, you, you don't have to be—you don't have to be condescending in every single response you do to Tail. Come on, I mean, then if, I if you want don't... Tail to say something real. I did, Connor. I said something real. Okay, you said that Catholic priests are burning down their own churches by being assholes and putting incense in the wrong spot. That's what I heard. You Is that your real con contribution that, to this conversation? If you have a problem with that fact, it mm -hmm. is your problem to have. I'm okay, I have a problem with that fact. Well, then that's your problem to have okay question are our catholic uh, priests also putting uh paint on the front of their churches and beheading their statues paint that says what here we go again opening the door fight for you know x progressive cause i've literally seen the serfs tweeting out stuff that says you know we were just indigenous children uh, are the catholic priests putting that up on on their church walls are they the ones doing that graffiti that's been an exponential growth the last few months an exponential growth can we have a citation can we have a fucking citation i'm more than willing to acknowledge that there's plenty of things that have been happening over the last oh three or four or five or ten years that could be charted in any number massive of citation ways. Needed. but you haven't actually addressed what oh. i said which was so say it again. these fires preceded the news. Okay. okay. That okay, that argument right there, the argument that the fires have preceded the news of mass graves is actually a a very good argument. That's arguably a, that is arguably a nail in the coffin argument, but for some reason he pivoted to ca Catholic churches burning themselves down, which is a big mistake because the fact is that Lauren's entire argument and Connor's entire argument hinges on the idea that the church burnings were spurred on by false reports of mass graves. But that's not what happened. That's a factual error that is that undermines their entire argument, but they're not capitalizing on it. Tale of Twin Rabbit and Lance have not capitalized on this yet. Here, let, let me break this down for you really quickly. I was a former law enforcement officer, okay? We investigate things. When something picks up in a certain pattern, let's say that there's like one burglary in one area and then it's just one burglary and then it happens. Okay, well, burglary happens, we try to investigate it. If we don't figure it out, then okay, whatever. If 20 burglaries occur in the same area within a month, there's probably a reason for it so you can investigate it. And what I'm doing right now is I'm doing one plus one equals two. And you're saying one is maybe a 0. 0.5. Uh, 
So maybe it doesn't equal two. And I have no idea what this adds to the conversation because we're literally light years ahead I of where do you're going. I want to say this is not adding much to the conversation. Could, could we get back to the topic away from the fire uh, incense theory? Sure. Can I? Okay. I would like to ask a question from the serfs because basically sure. I'm sure he could educate us Wait. and then we could have some contention. Connor, yeah, okay. ask. I just okay. want to make Woman one really like. Woman to me point. again, Lauren. Two second Woman point, you'll like again. it. I promise. Um, God. you know what? I'm willing. To yeah, I mean that's a good point, Exia Ross. For all we know, it could be kids who survived who are burning down the churches. We don't know. Yes. So Lauren made a huge error in the beginning by basically saying that it has to be the left because um, it would be absurd for. She made the argument unintentionally that it would be absurd for anyone except for the left to care about indigenous issues, which is a, a very bad argument, but it didn't get capitalized on. Um, also, the other problem that's going on here is that T Tale of Twin Rabbit has the bullet, um, has the bullet that could kill the argument, but pivoted and started talking about a... a a one-off incident where the church got burnt down by uh, incense, which is um, a weak a weak turn because the the original argument was was the one that could have ended it. Because here's the thing: their entire argument pivots on the idea that the the store the uh, sensa the sensational media inspired these church burnings to concede that fires happened before all these fires that happen now and maybe it's just the fires continuing but assault and rape existed before the residential schools so you know you never know all right connor go ahead what please okay please this has to be capitalized on that is a motherfucking that is such a stupid argument that doesn't even make sense like lauren oh my god if I didn't know Lauren was so well trained, I would think that she was stupid. Just listen to that logic. I want. I, we're gonna try and break down this logic. That fires happened before. Oh, Connor, can yeah, I let okay. you ask? I just okay. want to make Woman one really explains like. Explains to me point. again, Lauren. Two second Woman point. You'll like again. it. I promise. Um, God. you know what? I'm willing to concede that fires happened before all these fires that happen now, and maybe it's just the fires continuing. But assault and rape existed before the residential schools, so you know. You never know. All right, Connor, go ahead. Okay, okay. Let's hold on. I'm gonna. We're gonna bring this up. Okay, hold on. We're gonna. We're gonna map this because this is so motherfucking stupid. We need to map this. Okay, we're mapping it together. Okay, so let's do twins argument. Twins argument. So twins argument is that. Uh, Lauren, okay, hold on. We can start here. Claim. Lauren and, here we go. And Connor points. Claim. The claim is spur, er, uh, sensationalists in media about mass graves led to leftist or indigenous uh church burnings uh church attacks led to or motivated okay so then we have wait when did they blame leftists they did multiple times you can go back and watch this yes sublime text is the best text editor ever okay hold on a second watch this okay now counter counter claim no, wait, hold on. Let's do this. We'll do twins claim. The fires could not have been caused or could not have been motivated by uh, quote-unquote media sensationalism because the fires occurred before the media hype. Because the the majority of fires. Okay, so then ca Lauren's counterclaim, or Lauren's response, let's put it that way. Lauren's response was: fires happened before 
the news and rapes also happened before residential schools. Checkmate atheists is basically what she just said. This is these this this is a non sec this is this does not address this at all sensation lauren and count and connor points literally claimed that it was sensationalism in the media that led to uh the church attacks then uh twin tales or twin rabbit uh, why do i get the name mixed up tale of twin rabbit tale of twin rabbit says the fires could not have been motivated by media sensation because the majority of the fires occurred before the media hype and then Lauren says, oh, well, fires happened before the news. The news that she claims caused the fires. And so she thinks that that's an equivalent to claiming that rape happened before residential schools. This is so stupid. I, this is like, it, it literally doesn't even line up. Like, how do I even explain this? That is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my entire life. So Lauren's argument, it, it, it's just stupid. It's just fucking stupid. This is a checkmate atheist moment right here. That's it. Checkmate atheists. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second, though. Can we take a second here? Okay. Both arguments are not stupid. Lauren completely no oh my god like how do I do this how do I how do I make this how do I is there a way that I can map this out is there a way that I can map this thing out like holy shit like okay Lauren claims Lauren and Connor points claim that the sensationalism in the media was what led to the burn the burnings but that's not true that's factually false and twins points this out The church burning started happening. No, they didn't, Nightbirds. No, they didn't. That's not true. You're wrong about that, Nightbirds. You're just wrong about that. Tails is being conspiratorial? No. We got a meme out of the oven? Do you want to do a live fact check? Let's do a live fact check. Let's do it. Let's do a live fact check. Let's do it. Okay, let's do the fa live fact check. Fuck it. Fuck it. F -f -f Fuck it. We're doing the live fact check. Let's do this. I love this shit, everybody. Here we go. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Ba da da da. Oh my god. Well, I can't do this. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. This is just an article of the Wall Street Journal. I picked this at random. Let's take a look. Dozens have gone up in flames, and the Prime Minister's response is tepid. It's been a difficult summer for Canada's Christians. This is a journal. Over five days, four churches at an Anglican church were burned to the ground. At least 56 churches have been set aflame or vandalized. Okay, so let's see. Does this have it? A map. Here we go. This is by True North. I have no idea if this is even reliable. So we're just going to see what we can find here. We're just going to see what we can find. Here's the map. Okay. Arsoned or burned. This is only for... This is the, oh, this is only the recent ones. We don't know about the full time. I would love to see a full time map of church burnings in, in, uh, oh, of course you can't read the full story here. Four churches destroyed, but we have no idea as to the rate before. Where's the info?
There are four. So, like, can anybody provide me information about this? Can we, can we get some information about when these first started, when the first burnings happened? Because uh, I've heard of this before this. I've heard of the burning of Catholic churches before this particular event. Now, it's certainly possible that there were none, but I don't think so. 2018 is the earliest. That would have been when the first report happened, ever. No direct link has been proven between the discovery of the unmarked grave and the church burnings, but the fires have mostly occurred on tribal lands amid fierce criticism. Hold on a second. Hold on. Here we go. Look at this. Hold on a second. Wait, this is from a Catholic website. This is the, the wait this is talking about a 2009 apology Yep They spiked after media attention? Yeah, but that doesn't, but, but that's the problem though. That's the problem with Lauren's claim. Lauren's claim requires evidence and they don't have any. Yeah, and Lance just said they probably have increased. Nobody's arguing that they haven't increased. It's that Lauren and Connor said that this was the cause. But that's not true. No, no, sorry. Let me correct that. Lauren and Connor argued that sensationalism by the media was the cause not just the news stories being reported okay like right i recognize that lauren's a silly nazi but can we just can we just can we just lay our thoughts straight on this please can we please lay our thoughts straight on this it drives me wild like lauren and connor's argument here is predicated on proving that one the media was the cause of these attacks and, and they haven't been able to do that at all. They haven't been able to do that at all. Not even close. They haven't even tried. So, like I said, all of this was a, was a um, was an offshoot of the conversation about Tale of Twin Rabbit having the bullet, the silver bullet, to take down the argument, but missing the opportunity. 2020 burn burnings happened before this most recent rash this year. Yep, two churches burned in very suspicious fires in southwestern Ontario. Again, there I, I've seen multiple. Uh, we just looked at multiple of these that stretch back to 2018. So, yeah, sorry, maybe there's a spike, but that doesn't prove it. This is a good point, that the event may have caused the burnings, but the public caring about the issue strongly was key to convincing individuals to burn them. Well, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What if it wasn't the news? Because notice how they're trying to frame the media as the problem. What if it was... What Guys, hold on. Hold on a second. Ready? Hot take. What if it was the residential schools? What if it was the genocide? What if that's what convinced people to burn a church down? Have you ever fucking considered that maybe it's not the fault of the media? That actually people are just outraged at the thing that happened. But see, that and that's the thing. And that's the thing. 
Lauren and Connor's argument here, requ it requires them to prove that it's the media. But they didn't. But they didn't, and they haven't. Let's continue. No, I can, right, I can address that again. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, but again, uh, assault and rape can exist before the residential schools, but these were forced upon the children. That's a huge wait, wait, difference. Wait, 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 no, no, Lance, no, you do not bite that. That was a throwaway bullshit comment. Do not bite that. Ugh. It's again, almost like again, the context again, is different. Right. Okay, go Yeah, on. and again, the same thing like Counterpoints brought up, right? He said there's rape that exists everywhere in society. It does. If you were forcing children to be in these institutions where one in five of them was getting sexually assaulted, then that is on you. That is on the Catholic Church. That is on the government of Canada. Sure. Okay. So let's let's move the conversation forward because I would like to move forward instead of talking about incense burning. Um, so basically what you were talking about, one of the major contentions that we were going to bring up tonight was whether or not the current actions of the Canadian government or the actions since 1996 constituted genocide. I, I watched your uh, debate with Destiny. I liked it. I thought it was interesting. Oh, maybe, maybe it was a fan of yours. I'm sorry if, I, if I'm misattributing that to you. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I didn't debate but, Destiny on this topic. Yeah, it was, it was a fan of yours. Um, but the, the thing that I found most compelling was that like, I felt like a lot of the issues that were brought up while trying to um, support the term of genocide with evidence were paralleled in the American uh, system with with, uh, with Black Americans, right? And so what, what I would say is from a progressive lens, most people wouldn't say that the United States government is trying to genocide Black Americans. They would say that there's... A... But they probably should. They, they probably should systemic issues that disproportionately affect the black community, screw them over, over policing, war on drugs, like all that kind of shit. But I, I think only a few people would use genocide. You seemed pretty confident in your assertion of the word genocide. So I would like to get your description yeah. and your evidence and maybe push back against it a little bit. Yeah, sure. Okay, so for the Articles of Genocide from the UN Convention, right? I, I'm pretty sure we all agree on Article E, forcibly transferring children from one group to another group. That's what the Canadian government has been involved with since the start of the residential schools. I mean, I believe that they kind of fall under most articles, causing serious or body or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. Um, but the one that I'm sure we can all land upon and agree that Canada was committing was forcibly transferring children from one group to another group, right? Sure. But let, so let's say... Um... Uh, 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 uh. That's a nail in the coffin there. Lance should not allow them to squirm at all on this. He, he has them in a fucking lock. Lauren doesn't have to make this concession, but I'll make this concession. So let's say that there was a system to culturally genocide uh, Native Canadians, Native Americans um, in Canada. Up at, let, let's, let's just say that even if it was com considerably muted, it extended up until 1996. What about today? What Absolutely. about after 1996 sure. do you think constitutes genocide on behalf of the Canadian government? Sure. So what occurred independently of the residential school system in Canada was something known as the 60 scoop, which took place in about, the, I believe, 1967 onward, in which 20,000 Indigenous children were taken from their families and they were actually carted into buses and they were sold uh, to families in both the UK and the US, which also would constitute child trafficking. Uh, they were sold in forms of the terms for adoption. Uh, they were sold and they were often placed within white families and once again lost their uh, indigenous culture, language, all that kind of stuff. Many of the 60s scoop children have grown up and they've come back to tell their stories. There's multiple survivors of this event and they've come forward to say that, yes, I was sold into adoption under the Canadian government. That is bad. But what is more important is that today we have a system in which the federal government of Canada, and this is really, really something that is important to keep in mind, they are the ones that oversee all public services on the reserves for First Nations children as well as First Nations education. That falls under the purview of the federal government. So they are the ones who have to fund the conditions necessary for child welfare. Now, if you want to take away all the history of the reservation system in Canada, and if you didn't know already, the reserve system of Canada, which was enshrined into Canadian law under the Indian Act, basically took and placed a whole bunch of Indigenous cultures and put them into small spaces with deplorable living conditions, oftentimes far away from uh, places they were remote they were away from Canadian society they had a lot of difficulty uh, you know getting work and all that kind of stuff because of those conditions but even if you want to erase all of that and we take it forward to today we live in a system now where Thank we you, have Sky. 
an unbelievably high rate of Indigenous children in the foster care system. 50% of all the kids in the Canadian foster care system are Indigenous, uh, despite being about 3% of the Canadian population. In Alberta, it's 73%. In Manitoba, it's 85%. And in Saskatchewan, it's 87%. Now, just for comparison, Canada has 1.1% of children in foster care compared to a company like Ger uh, sorry, a country like Germany, which has 0.07%. Uh, now, Two-thirds of all the girls in foster care uh, are abused, which is unfortunately deplorable. Um, children in the foster care system, uh, if they're Indigenous, are four times more likely uh, to be sexually molested than if they're not. And it continues to permeate. 60% of homeless youth, one-third of homeless adults were in the child care foster system. 91% of Indigenous female prisoners report having been physically or sexually abused. Women make up now 38% of prisoners in Canada. The majority of them were in the foster care system. Uh, indigenous children make up 50% of all youth in correctional facilities. I could go on and on about all these, all the, the ways these things permeate, but the difference would be, and this is one of the most comparable things I would say to someone who wants to compare this to, say, the Black American experience, is that these reserve systems were set up by the government of Canada. These reserve systems were set up and enshrined by the government of Canada. And so they set up the conditions in which they would have to support and enable children in these conditions in order to be able to assure for their welfare. What ended up happening, and this is the, the, the reason why this is a huge problem, is they began to, sorry, began to underfund these systems. They have underfunded them by about 30% in comparing to their non-Indigenous counterparts. In the case of Ontario, they've underfunded them by about $400 million over the course of five years. So they are intentionally underfunding these systems that are then creating the poverty that is necessary for these kids to be justifiably taken from their parents in these systems. Yeah, this is a good drop right here. This right here was a good info drop. Okay, so ju just so I can understand it um, descriptively, so I can try to understand your yeah. argument and wrap my head around it. Um, so your argument is that, you know, we're only a generation away from the residential school system. Um, the systemic issues that are basically inherent in the res system, basically like lack of material resources, lack of education, infrastructure, all that kind of stuff. Lack of clean drinking causes, water. Right. That causes broken families. Broken families are then contributing disproportionately to the uh, to the foster care system. And then the uh, foster care system is basically making it cyclical because they're producing fucked up adults that then in turn produce the cycle. Um, and then my question mm, is because they no. I think that's an unfair characterization. I think that's a very unfair unfair characterization, but it's very slippery on on Connor points part. I think a lot of these arguments Let's see if it's while get still caught, fucked gets up, caught. Um, are analogous to our own perception of our foster care system inside the United States. The, the, the question that I have is, are you saying it's genocide because then it fits under that like UN subsection where it's the forcible removal of children and it's kind of like this multivariable cycle that you're seeing? Is that? Actually, it's really simple. This is really simple. Look, we can, we can plot this out. We're going to do it again. We're going to plot it out again. Ready? Okay. So Canadian government overseas welfare reservation system uh child care foster system so that's the canadian government oversees all these oh water infrastructure so now we can go and we can go straight over here and we can go okay so indigenous people suffer from in modern day uh underfunding of welfare uh or sorry let, let's just make sure we got this uh objective underfunding of welfare still uh a uh, reservation Sorry, let me just, I want to make sure my thoughts are clear on this. Reservations are, uh, are under, uh, have, uh, have less infrastructure or underfunded infrastructure. Under child care, um, they receive less child care or have their children relegated to the 
foster system. The foster system is objectively abusive, uh, more abusive to indigenous children. And on top of all of that, severe, well-documented neglect of water infrastructure. All of these things right here are things that are currently ongoing. Okay? Wait, it's hard to see right now. Here, we'll go like this. All of these things that we have on the screen right now. Um, oh, thank you, Juno. Appreciate that. So far, Demon Mama doesn't does this have a clue what she's talking about. Oh, nice try though. So, I'm look. I'm analyzing the claims that have been made here. I don't know uh, the full degree of this, but if if Lance has stats that show that there's undervaluing of of warfare, I mean of welfare. Fucking, we're not gonna get that far into. It. We're not gonna fact check everything. We've only fact checked certain claims here. I don't think this is an outrageous claim. I think these are reasonable claims. We know about the water infrastructure. We know, I know about the foster system. We have similar results here in the United States as well, where uh, people of color are significantly, uh, fare significantly worse in the foster system. So these are the ongoing portions of what is the responsibility of the Canadian government. And remember that the historical context natives were were forced right here the historical context in all of this is that natives were forced into the reservation system the reservations are currently underfunded neglected and now and then and as a result their children are put into the foster system constantly the foster system abuses their children and sets them up with other families. This is just a disguising of what was already happening in the past. There may have perhaps been some, um, you know, some minor improvements here and there, but the core issue is still the case, and it shows up in the numbers. I think the argument that there is, at the very least, um, ongoing aspects of genocide is perfectly is perfectly fair. That is a reasonable thing. I think you would be unreasonable to deny that fact. But let's continue. Why you're calling it genocide? Or is there another reason? Okay, so uh, for me to make the assertion that this is still continuously ongoing cultural genocide, I would have to use the reference, again, that we've been speaking about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission multiple times. Uh, there's also the Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women report that came out that asserted the exact same thing, as well as the UN Human Rights Council that said that this is an ongoing uh, crisis that tantamounts to genocide. Amnesty International has come out and declared the same uh, terms uh, in no uncertain words. It's not simply that they are intentionally, because they are in intentionally underfunding these programs that is then uh, creating this revolving door system. They are also uh, specifically uh, adopting indigenous children at a higher rate despite the numbers. So if I am to compare indigenous children to non-indigenous children and the rates and the reasons why they are abducted uh, for the adoption program, if you were to look at every single metric, non-indigenous parents commit other atrocities such as physical abuse at a much higher rate than non-indigenous parents. So for uh, non-indigenous parents, physical abuse occurs at 23% of the cases in which the kids are taken. In indigenous families, it's only 9%. The same thing occurs for sexual abuse, emotional maltreatment, exposure to intimate partner violence, mm. all of those across the board. Weird how that works, right? The state is actually more likely to remove children from the household of in indigenous people and then put them into a foster system that mostly fosters them out to white people. A, a, a foster system in which they have a 40% chance of being raped. Wow are either equal to or higher than with non-Indigenous families. The exception to the rule and the only reason why Indigenous kids are apparently uh, taken from their families at a much higher rate is neglect. And neglect only registers as 16 points higher than non-Indigenous kids. 
So one of the biggest problems we have here is neglect as a broad term for being able to take these children away from their families is typically for a handful of reasons related to their living conditions. Their living conditions, which again are under the purview, uh, especially when it comes to child welfare, of the federal government of Canada, who is intentionally, intentionally uh, paying them much lower rates than they are other families. They are creating the conditions in which this is occurring. Now this, by the way, is not in and of itself. I, I wouldn't just walk away from this and be like, genocide, mic drop, you know, and then I've, I've fucking done it. This is, again, one of many things that would be characterized in, say, if we were to look at uh, uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Report or uh, any of the number of other reports that have come out, even the Royal Commission that came out in 1996, this is one of the biggest critical factors. If you look at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which has stated that this is a genocide and that it is ongoing, they set out a whole bunch of calls to action specifically to address the fact that this is something that is ongoing and we need to stop this. And like you said, it was groundbreaking. I completely agree. I mean, it, it started in 2008 only because of a lawsuit cost $100 million, but their findings are critical. And the top numbers, if you read all the calls to action in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the top numbers all talk about child welfare. Sorry, child welfare. They are the most important things to them because they are the ones that are critical for this ongoing process. Um, do you mind if I jump in? All right. Yep. So you, you were just mentioning, and I would really have to look at the data, that within Indigenous families, at least in adoption, that the rates of abuse are lower, correct? Uh, it depends on which categories. But for which nearly... Categories? So for nearly every single category, for non-Aboriginal uh, non children, for physical abuse, it's higher. Uh, for sexual abuse, it's higher. Uh, for emotional maltreatment, it's the same. And for exposure to intimate partner violence, it's higher. All for non-Aboriginal families. The only case in which First Nations mm -hmm. children are um, higher is neglect. Okay, so first of all, I want to agree with you that the foster system is deeply messed up. You know, I've, I've had family that have experienced it even just as non-Indigenous and almost died in it, right? It's it's a messed up system. It needs help in all regards. And if there is underfunding for Indigenous children in the system, that's something I'd absolutely support mm. fixing. Um, Why do people platform Lauren Southern? To make her look bad in front of her audience by disassembling her arguments? Mm, I'm going to save that one. We have a lot to talk about after this. We have a lot to talk about after this, don't we, chat? We really do. We have a lot to talk about. Now, is there a disparity, and you may have the data on this, is there a disparity uh, in the amount of Indigenous kids versus non-Indigenous kids that are removed from their homes in the first place? Yeah, it's overwhelmingly Indigenous yeah. kids. Over and so, like, if I read the CBC or I go online, you can see, and I mean, you can disagree with this if you want, they'll talk about how there's higher drug use in these communities, higher uh, incest and rape, um, you know, neglect, these things in general. and. I, this is not talking about just the foster care families. This is talking about the general population. And they say that it is because of the legacy of the residential school and things that they were taught while they were there, perhaps. But wouldn't it follow? Wait, um, wait. they have lower ratings. Wait, she's fucking it up. The numbers are lower. There is less abuse among indigenous families. They are they have their children removed for less than white people do. She's just literally not listened to anything that, that Lance has said here. She's saying that their population is more likely, but that's not true here. Not only are they less likely to commit these things to their own children, their children are, likely, are more likely to be taken away for less that if these things are happening wait is that for real nuts that is such a mistake happening in the community that that is why more kids are being put in the foster system and i i just like does that follow to you yeah so what you're trying to do is lay blame directly on i guess parents for their drug no, use no, no. i'm not abuse. trying to lay blame i'm just trying to sort out why why this is happening so that we can have a conversation yeah no but no wait wait but she got the facts wrong she got the facts wrong Absolutely. You're just asking questions. And in this case, it would be the overwhelming reason why they are being taken from the families again falls under neglect. Now, neglect can include okay, good, good. Uh, parents he, he who said, are using drugs. It. Neglect can include that. Uh, there's a number of reasons why they are taken from their families. Um, 
in terms of the conditions on these reserves and in terms of the conditions as to why they're like you have to understand these are deplorable environments and yes uh, a lot of these people came back from the residential school system and this has permeated the cycle of abuse but these are also areas there's 54 reserves and this falls again under the government of canada that don't have drinking water they don't have potable drinking water like the very essence of life and i'm not trying to become emotional or anything here and try to appeal to emotion but i'm saying that that is a critical aspect of living in these environments and that is why this may perpetuate and create conditions in which you will find families who are broken in addition to many of these families have also been given ultimatums in which if you wish to receive treatment if you wish to receive any kind of let's just say compensation if you wish to receive uh, financial aid you may have to put up your children for adoption in order to receive that money that was something else that came out of the commission so holy shit! I, I don't know how else to to explain this other than a lot of this does fall under like you, you can chalk up a handful of this to personal responsibility, and I'm not going to try and absolve anyone from personal responsibility. That's not my purpose here. I'm trying to say how much is the government of Canada themselves accountable in this equation. And if the government of Canada and things like, again, clean drinking water is responsible on the behalf of the government of Canada, it was a promise made by Justin Trudeau. He said he would uh, fix that, and we still have 54 different uh, reserves that don't even have clean drinking water then that falls under them. If they're intentionally withdrawing or withholding or suing families in order to withhold the money that is owed to them to help their child welfare, that is on the government of Canada. I'm sorry, counterpoints. Yeah, counterpoint. I hit my own mic this time. Look at me. Yeah, personally. so this is actually where, um, listen, I'm not, I'm not like the other girls, okay? I'm an enlightened centrist. Um, so this is where I, I seriously think that the, the right and left could come together. Um, and I, I hate to say that, but I'm going to, even though this is a debate. So when you're, ta when you're talking about uh, conservative values, conservative Christian values, I know that makes uh, some people catch on fire and cringe to death and all that kind of stuff. Um, oftentimes, one of the primary things that's emphasized is strong families. Um, strong families come from a strong environment. So if you literally, like, like at least for me, the, if I was arguing with conservatives, I would say, listen, you're born through no fault of your own. Your parents are addicted to drugs. You don't have access to good food, good water, good education, good anything. Um, and then it's basically up to you to bootstrap. Now, can you bootstrap? Sure. Everybody, you know, some people are fucking Ben Carson, right? They can become a neurosurgeon despite thinking that like uh, grain was stored in the fucking pyramids or some shit like that, right? Some people can bootstrap, um, but some people can't. And then on top of that, uh, shitty conditions basically decreases your Hey, good to see you, Lance. Uh, I'm going to give my full analysis uh, shortly. I know we're approaching the end here. It's really good to see you. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about this, and we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, happy to see you. Um, I, think, I think this is your strongest segment so far, and we'll talk about this. We'll to all this. So for me, what I would say is there's variables that we can control. There's variables that we can't and we have to control the variables that we can't. But what I would want, um, because basically what maybe genocide um, for me is too strong of a term, maybe that grants some immediacy to the issue that allows it to be addressed politically. But at the same time, like I see this shit not as a single generational okay, cool. project. I see this as like a century long project, literally. And by that, I mean making schools that aren't dog shit, you know, early education, um, and then basically raising productive productive adults. Now, my definition of productive is probably way different than anybody on the left's, but at the same time, like that's where I think there's a real opportunity here. Um, the, the reason why I think I came into this conversation pretty strong and I was like, fuck yeah, let me do this conversation, um, is because when I hear that we have like fucked up systems, not enough water, not enough food, not good education, I don't think genocide. Now, whether or not we can move past that shit and just start focusing on solutions instead of calling each other assholes, I don't know. Like, calling each other assholes on Twitch.tv is fucking fun. I love it. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't know. Strong families, strong families make strong children. Strong children make strong families. Um, I have a question. Oh, sorry, uh, Dylan. Quick, yeah, but I do want to say we are, we are speeding towards the end. We have about five minutes left until uh, where the conversation was listed to end. So I, I just wanted to ask the room if you wanted to end it here or if you wanted to keep it going. I could go for maybe another 10 minutes max. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I need to wrap up soon too. If Okay, so yeah. if I could just add two things. I just, I, I guess I, well, I spent too much time talking. 
Can we do it in closing, or do you think we can? Um, would that be difficult, or? Um, sure. Well, our closing can, statements are about two minutes. I'll give it. I'll give it about five. I'll give five about, minutes left since maybe. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll have you go, and I'll have Lauren go. Lauren, you were gonna go first, so so Lauren then serves. Sound good? Okay. Yeah, sounds Lauren. good. Okay. Um, yeah, I first wanted to mention, I do not think a lack of clean drinking water leads to parents having sex with their kids, and that is... What? Lauren Southern is just a supremely evil person, isn't she? Like, just a supremely evil person. Is there any any doubt about that at this point? Like, what the fuck? It's a larger problem that we're going to have to address that can't be addressed just, okay, give people money. I just, I want, I want Lauren I want Lauren to try raising children in a house that doesn't have fucking running water or drinkable water. Not even running water, drinkable water. I would love to see Lauren fucking pull that off. Her skinny ass would be dead in a fucking day. Fix the infrastructure in a town, right? Um, yeah, we can all agree that fi fixing the in infrastructure is good, but this also brings up a whole giant opens a can of worms of... There are people in the indigenous community in Canada who don't even want to be a part of the laws of Canada, who feel that's an aspect of cultural genocide, who feel that the government having any sort of decisions yeah. on their land is a part of... Wait, yeah, and that's their right. Yeah, that's their fucking right. We never talk about that fact. We never talk about the fact that none of these people, none of, no indigenous person alive in fucking America or or Canada has ever had a fucking say in their government. Their their people were were fucking genocided and then pushed onto reservations and then forced into reservation governments that they've never had a say in. I completely understand why many indigenous people would revile everything that that America and Canada stands for. Are you are you kidding me? cultural genocide so then to balance this issue with okay you also need to build the infrastructure here you also need to ensure the conditions are good on our land but also we don't want to be a part of canada that creates a really difficult contention and problem we're dealing with here and of course we're not going to have time for it in that this debate here but i do think that that is something that should be considered lance indigenous land technically isn't under canadian jurisdiction yes okay that's the same thing here but they're surrounded on all sides, and they have to follow all kinds of federal laws that are imposed upon them. There are, there are all kinds of rules that are imposed upon reservations. So yes, while they're technically sovereign, they aren't really sovereign. It's just a fact of reality. So I just want to quickly say uh, counterpoints. If if you have more interest in this, because um, I, I think you do have productive interest in this topic, I would recommend also checking out uh, the inquiry into the murdered and miss uh, missing Indigenous women, which speaks pretty highly also to the eugenics program that was instilled in Canada and the forced sterilization that is still occurring to Indigenous women today. As recently as 2018, uh, nearly 100 women, I believe, in Saskatchewan, or no, 100 women over the last decade, but I think 18 women in Saskatchewan have begun lawsuits against the provincial government's healthcare program for experiencing forced sterilization. Um, there has been numerous cases across this country of this occurring, and specifically occurring in much higher rates to Indigenous women, uh, typically under the guise of them not being mentally sound or mentally fit and uh, often under duress in that they cannot receive their own children after being born unless they sign away the rights to be forcibly sterilized. So that's one of the aspects of it that will be present, obviously, in the Murder and Missing Indigenous Women uh, document. There's a number of other reasons, though. I mean, I'm... That's something that I'm really happy he brought up. The fact that, um, that uh, like, conservatorship and, and state, uh, and, like, state guardianship is weapon weaponized all the time imagine imagine that your government 
takes you and your entire family, puts you on a, a, a plot of land that has no running water, that has no clean water, and when you, go, when you lose your shit because you're so miserable that they then consider you a danger to yourself, declare you incapable of, of – uh, or de declare you insane and then institutionalize you and your children. Because that shit happens all the fucking time still. Just I, I didn't have the time to get into it now, but the conditions that are being set up in these uh, in these reserves that are being perpetuated, the fact that the government of Canada did not uh, even want to give money in return to these reserves because they were dramatically underfunding it until a like class action lawsuit was taken up by Cindy Blackstock, which ended up rewarding uh, I believe close to like two billion dollars, which the government of Canada is still fighting in court to try and withdraw them from having. This is like there's so many things that once you stack them upon each other, it's the reason yeah, correct, why Ashmar. it's not just myself. You know, this is Ashmar says, if you take even a moment to look at history from the native perspective, the United States and Canadian governments become very, very uh, uh, become very, very evil entities. Uh, yeah, they do. This is, again, something that has been recognized by Amnesty International, the U.N. Human Rights Panel. And uh, again, one of the last things I'll say on this especially regarding the forced sterilization of women. Um, the International Conference of the United Nations Human Rights Commission held in Montreal stated in March 1999 that Canada is in violation of international law and its treatment of Aboriginal people and that the condition of natives is the most pressing human right issue to Canadians. It is tantamount to their genocide. So. Yep. Okay. So we're now going to go into closing statements and shout outs. Please do shout yourself out in your closing statements. Uh, thank you all for attending tonight's conversation. Hmm. I appreciate uh, your. Remember, your after this, we're doing uh, our sorry, analysis. Sorry so stick around, don't go anywhere. The stream crashing. Uh, you know, things happen. It was probably the Canadian CIA. You know how it works. Uh, it's CSIS. It over to, uh, is that what it's called? CSIS? It's called CSIS. Everything's lame wow. in Canada. <laughs> wow. Including the debates. Now we're going to throw it over to Connor. <laughs> Yeah, my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. I'm a center center right, a law enforcement veteran, Marine Corps veteran, science fiction, religion, and philosophy nerd. Um, I do like debates like this. Sorry to uh, Tale of uh, Twin Rabbit for being a dick, but sorry you frustrated me a little bit. Um, and then basically, I, I know everybody was expecting a fucking bloodbath, and maybe we failed that a little bit. But that's because, like, I don't know. I give a shit. We're talking about people who are being, like, ultimately at the end of the day, regardless of whether or not we call it genocide, um, we're talking about people who were, uh, were raped and murdered. Um, we are talking about kids who ran away from their homes and died of exposure. All this shit is fucked up. Um, so we can talk about the, the reason why I wanted to enforce descriptive reality is because I've said this before, I'll say this again, um, is some of the way this stuff is portrayed, I would be probably acting not in the most rational way possible. The reason why I want to nail down descriptive reality of the past, the reason why I want to nail down descriptive reality of the present, um, is because I think accurate descriptive reality can get you to better prescriptive solutions. Um, so maybe we can talk about that another time. I sincerely appreciate y'all and I wish you all well. Okay, now I'm going to throw it over to Lauren Southern. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me, first of all, Dylan. No, I know it was a bit El controversial. Cal, unfortunately. Um, so, firstly, to assert that there is a genocide occurring, to assert that there were mass graves found out of all of the graves you asserted that, that Lauren. found. That remember, it, remember, Lauren asserted the mass graves. Nobody else used the term mass grave. In the media the last few months, not a single body has been exhumed. Not one. And even so, this doesn't mean there aren't necessarily graves or a graveyard, but all of the chiefs in these communities have stated these are not mass graves if they do exist and they do know about them. The 751 graves found, the Cowessos Band, Chief Cadmus De Delorme, emphasized that the findings were not from a mass grave, but unmarked graves. The band leader in Kelowna said it was not a mass grave for the 215 graves found there, or potentially the gpr researchers that did this research said yes yeah, some have not from this particular wave though fright man i don't believe i could be wrong but i don't think any from this particular wave have been exhumed yet but Nothing others have in other areas yes. until things are dug up yet progressive activists and media continue to make the claim of mass graves and so do our debate opponents exaggerating what 
were some potentially absolutely horrific things that happened in the past and we need to be honest about what has occurred to have a proper conversation while not exaggerating and unfortunately this is exaggeration has led to legitimate hate crimes and destruction today and that is unfortunate and especially unfortunate that people are making excuses for it okay now i'm going to throw it over to tale of two rabbits thank you very much i i don't know i'm unclear academics historians indigenous nations government agencies they've been open about this genocide for decades the truth and reconciliation report was issued six years ago the concession was made that these fires aren't somehow all a conspiracy of Antifa. The concession was made that the mass graves are being identified and require further research. The concede was made that the foster care system is absolutely toxic and therefore the removal policy was unacceptable. And in response, I got rhetorical tactics and a fair amount of shouting because this was fun. Fairly mature people learn from their mistakes and move forward. Fully mature people own up to their past. Fully mature people acknowledge that sometimes a priest can accidentally set fire to his own church rather than scream at the person who says that it happened. When members of my community learned that I'd agreed to participate in this, they were appalled. I hope that they at now least kind of partially understand why I did. Okay, before we throw it over to Lance to wrap it up, I just want to let everybody know that tomorrow we have the Hippie Dippy Roundtable on my show for this Friday. And uh, next week, I uh, had to reschedule, due to today's uh, technical difficulties, uh, my review of Tariq Nasheed's new movie, Buck Breaking, with uh, Your Movie Sucks, which should be happening hopefully some point next week. Now we're going to throw it over to Lance to wrap it up. Yeah, I don't think there can be any restorative justice as long as the people responsible aren't taking claims for the actions they've done. Um, if I could use uh, a simile, uh, it's kind of like uh, you, Lauren Southern, because... Ultimately, if you had spent your career rising to become one of the darling children of the alt-right, palling around with people like Brittany Pettibone, Richard Spencer, uh, touring around the globe with someone like, let's say, Stefan Molyneux, who is well known for measuring the skulls of black and white people, uh, spreading the great replacement conspiracy, spreading the great genocide conspiracy theory, then going on tour, spreading both of those conspiracy theories, in addition to going to Gen join uh, that far right nationalist group, uh, First Europa, and then joining them by shooting flares at immigrants and doing all of this, while at the same time, uh, all of it bubbles over and boils over to the point where, at the end of the day, you ultimately uh, led to one of the people contributing towards the Christchurch shooting, who declared that the Great Replacement Theory was one of the reasons why they committed the atrocity that they did. Afterwards, you then took you everything back. You fucking pussy. You Afterwards, fucking pussy. You Bringing this all back. up at the end so I don't have I, a chance to respond. I, you can respond. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, I'm more than glad. More, more than glad. Okay. More than glad. I would love. I would love. Please. Bring it all up. Bring it all up. Just say, can I wait, wait. You can respond, but let me just yes. be clear. I am not going to be part of it. If you want to make this into a fucking shit show, I'm leaving, and I will not contribute to that because that's not my. That's not the type of brand I want to produce. Do you both understand that? Okay, Lance, finish, and then I'm. That's not the type of thing I want to produce, says Dylan. All right, Dylan. Okay, Dylan. Okay, dude. Do we forget the championship fallout? Okay, dude. Come on, man. Mountain, you two can fucking eat each other alive if you want. Sounds good. Lance, okay. Lance, you gonna finish? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll finish. And then turning the whole thing around to suddenly say that you're gonna rebrand yourself as this wonderful new centrist and everything's wonderful and that you write children's books now and it's all uwu and everything's good now and nothing bad ever happened. I think if you wanted to achieve restorative justice when it came all of this stuff then what you had to do was simply acknowledge any of the bad things you've done in the past, but you haven't. So I don't think the idea of you now doing this rebranding tour uh, is anything more than you just seen the writing on the wall. That's ultimately what this all is. You knew what was happening to your peers and uh, you were smart enough and astute enough to, to walk away from it. You're such a bitch, Lance. Okay. Bring it up. Well, Let's go. Um... Let's go. Talk to me. I'm, I'm staying right here. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, yeah. Throw 7,000 accusations at me and then ask me to respond to them. That's great. Connor and I are going to have a chat with my chat. And if you want to not be a bitch boy and have a full conversation another time, we can do that. We'll arrange that. Okay. Uh, you all have a pleasant afternoon. <laughs> I'm right here, Lauren. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go talk to Connor. I Bye. have to go join my family and my life. But I'm seriously, let's set this up for another time. Let's set this Sounds up good. for another time. I'm 100% for it. All right, Sounds see good. you later, bitch boy. Have fun.
<laughs> oh, well, I'm excited for that. That'll be wonderful. That'll be wonderful. But yeah, we'll see. All right. Okay. to think about here there's some zan drama involving this uh sure shoot me the zan drama i've got i got it let me condense all my thoughts real quick okay let's just <sighs> okay first let us talk about the debate itself. Then we will talk about the greater, excuse me, the greater scope. Okay. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to first, we're going to talk about the debate itself. Then we're going to talk about the scope and the bigger picture. Okay. So. I think the beginning was a massive, massive mess. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest about that. I think that uh, sticking to the mass graves point unintentionally gave the first point to Lauren. It is stupid. It is um, it is terrible um, that that she was able to get away with that. But as I pointed out and Connor also recognized um, the best way to deal with that type of conspiracy mongering is to is to shoot it right in the foot you say you're trying to say you, you you don't like the word mass grave okay let's talk about uh unmarked burial site of 215 children let's use that term instead is that a better term for you see that's the way that you do that that's that you need to call that out and you go okay you don't want to use the term mass grave all right let's pick another one what would you rather call it what would you rather call it huh you want to call it uh yeah, you want to call it you want to call it a, a a child skeleton uh hiding ground? What would you rather call it? That's one of the ways that you should do. Yeah, it's it's the but it's not police brutality versus officer involved shooting. There's no nice way of framing this. There isn't a a, a nice way of of framing this. Okay? So you can call them on that. You don't have to stick to a single word. So I do think that um I do think that that was a mistake on both Twin uh, Twin Rabbit and um, and Lance's part was to grant that framing to Lauren. Lauren literally brought up the term um, mass grave. They didn't even bring it up. They were defending a, a straw man that she made up, which is a mistake. And I think that was a big mistake. And I think it cost them. Um, uh so nuts says i'm sorry lance doing that is like bitching in somebody's replies and blocking them before they can respond which is a perfectly legitimate thing to do to some people oh hold on quick update from babinska babinska says hey the imps were super generous last week for my friend's fundraiser they had to visit the er over the weekend and got a walker frame we're in lockdown so things are difficult difficult Wait lists for specialists are huge, but they're at a high priority if there's a cancellation and things are looking much better. The fundraising limit has been raised. Dono is hugely appreciated. Work, work ahead is likely to be a staunch self-advocate for their care and needs help. Hey, that's fucking awesome. I'm really happy we were able to raise it. If anybody has, if anybody is doing very comfortably, Babinska's, that fundraiser is for a friend of Babinska's who's disabled and trying to get a wheelchair. So if you if you are very comfortable monetarily or if you're comfortable monetarily, shoot some love towards that link, okay? Okay. Now we have to focus back on the on this, okay? Okay. So So I think the first topic uh, got completely hijacked by genocide denial wordplay. And it is very important when you are going up against a genocide denier, against somebody like Lauren Southern, um, that you need to be prepared to shut down gish galloping. You need to be prepared to deal with, with demagogue tactics. And when I say demagogue, now I'm about to tell you how to shut it down, okay? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the specifics, okay? 
Um, so if you were, it, find yourself uh, with a situation like uh, like COVID denial or genocide denial, if they're coming up with some conspiracy theory that's like, oh, uh, well, see, technically, one of the residential schools in in rural Manitoba or something was actually not a residential school, then you go, okay, well, let's put aside that one then. If you think that one's super problematic, let's, pr let's put that one to the side. What do you say about the other 115? What do you say, whatever the number is. Um, you're just like, you, you just say, okay, fine. You want to say that one was fucked up? Well, what do we, what do you say about all the other ones? Sorry, but when there is a preponderance of evidence to this level, um, you don't have to, you don't have to hold to a single point. You can say, all right, I don't agree with you. I think you're lying, but let's pretend you're not lying. Let's pretend that the Manitoba residential school was a, was a conspiracy theory. What about all the other ones? Are they all conspiracy theories too? Because it sounds like what you're trying to do is you're trying to discredit the claims of people who've been genocided because there was some procedural error in one of them. That's how you deal with that. That is the tactic for dealing with that particular type of attack. You have to address it. You have to be willing to undercut it. Okay? So that's how you deal with that one. With regard to gish galloping, with gish galloping, you have to go... Um, in my opinion, the way that you deal with a gish gallop, so like, let's go like this. Let's 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 think about um, how I deal with a gish gallop from somebody like Rob. Okay, so Rob comes into a conversation and he has he's like, I did this one earlier, but I'm gonna restate it again here just for the the purposes of everybody who's here. Let's say that Rob comes into a conversation and he's like, oh, in 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 Delaware there was a a CRT training in Florida. There's a CRT training in Ver in 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 Las Vegas. There's a CRT training. Blah 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 blah. blah. Then you go. Okay, you just listed off a hundred different things. I don't know about any of them. If any of them are true, you might have just made up all of those. We're in a debate, so if you have something specific you want to talk about, let's talk about that. But if not, let's not just throw random bullshit at each other. And see, Rob refuses to ever move off of it. All Rob has is a gish gallop. With Lauren, what this would do is this forces her to take a position. If you tell them, okay, that is a bunch of stuff that you could have just made up. I can list off a bunch of things, and you can do it back at them if you need to illustrate it. The key is that you sell the audience on the idea that you're being gish galloped. And by when I say sell, it is the truth. You like If somebody comes in and does that shit, um uh wait what the hell okay hold on a second um uh sorry i i got distracted by a comment it, so yes you need to inform the audience and when i say you need to sell the idea to the audience that means you need to do it in a way that makes sense to them because the truth is, if Rob comes in and gish gallops, he is gish galloping. You might see it, but the audience probably doesn't. So you need to show them why it's a gish gallop. And the way you do that is you go, you just listed off 15 different things. None of these, all of these might have been made up. Did you just, you could have just made all those up for all I know. And then the audience goes, wait, yeah, yeah, he could have just made those up. What if he did? That's the point. You counter the dirty tactic with another dirty tactic. That's how you, that's the only way you check Mark, you checkmate their bullshit with your own little form of bullshit, which isn't bullshit because you're revealing their bullshit. Uh, yes, I think demon, demon mama is correct here, except it wouldn't get around to her, their main point. Wait, what do you, what do you mean? Their straight method paid off in the end. Uh, what do you mean? No, wait, I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. You're going to need to be more clear there. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, who won the debate? Who won what debate? Who? You're being very vague. Demagogue, stop typing. Type up a bigger thing. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're Okay. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah, I'll get to this. Okay, so other issues that I had. 
um, with this debate. Okay. So, Connor, I have a lot of critiques for Connor. I actually would really love to sit down and have a conversation with Connor about this because uh, I think that Connor uh, really made himself look bad here. And I mean personally. And I say this on a personal level, not even on like a political level. I think Connor made himself look like a bad guy here because Connor came into the conversation in good faith, but because he was put on a team with Lauren, he had to keep defending things or arguing in favor of things that he doesn't believe. He sat there and essentially played defense while Lauren literally denied genocide. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Wait, hold on, everybody. Before people get mad or whatever, Connor actually cares about this shit. When Connor says that the worst thing he can imagine is something like that happening to his kids, I believe that he's telling the truth. I unironically think that he's telling the truth when he says that. And isn't that sad that then he finds himself in a position because of his adherence to the label of being a, a right-wing centrist or a right-leaning centrist, that he finds himself defending something he finds abhorrent. A lot of his points were really, really fine. In fact, he pointed out the issue that I had at the beginning, which is the pedantry, but he couldn't actually call it out as pedantry because he was on Lauren's team. I think Connor is genuine. Like, I've interacted with Connor for a long time. I just, I do think that he needs to be a little more careful about that. I do think that was a mistake. And I think he hurt himself with the, in, in this one. Lance. Let's talk about Lance's uh, performance. Okay. So, I think that in this debate, uh, this was not, in my opinion, Lance's strongest uh, performance. Um... I have seen Lance do very, very well in a couple of debates. I don't think this was his strongest performance. However, I do think, um, I, I do think that uh, that Lance, the ending that Lance had was quite strong when he started focusing on the Truth and Reconciliation Report, the uh, TRC, right, the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. That was very strong. And I think he really nailed that part. I think that in the, when we talked about this, when we talked about, uh, hold on, let me bring this back up on the screen. When we talked, uh, talked about this, I think this was a good part. When we talked about um, how the Canadian government oversees welfare reservations, child care, foster system, this argument that Lance laid out was very strong because it was understandable to everyone. Um, like every, anybody, even people who aren't in Canada, um, can, can come into this and understand this. You go, okay, the Canadian government put people on reservations. They put people on reservations that don't have running water. And then they blame them for, uh, for not doing well. And then they take their kids and put them into foster care where their kids are statistically, uh, abused at about 40% higher rates than other kid than non-indigenous kids. Bam. It's a simple argument. So, I, I think, um, oh, I can do that. I'll, I'll send you all the screenshots I took here. I'll do that right now here. I took a whole bunch. There you go. Boop. There you go, Jazz Dog. There's all of them for you. Have fun with them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yes. So I think Lance made a very good argument at the end there, uh, slamming out the report. I think that Lance's biggest flaw in this was he bit the bait on two separate occasions. One, he bit the bait with regard to the mass graves. Lance did not have to defend the mass graves position. He could have just said, literally, from the get-go, Lance could have said, nobody called them mass graves. Why do you care so much about the specific terminology? We're talking about an atrocity. We're talking about uh, skeleton pits, if you want to call them that. You want to call it child skeleton pits? That would have been a nail in the coffin from the, from the fucking get-go. And, and Lance missed that opportunity, which is worthy of critique. Um, uh, and then the second one was, uh, at the end, there was a, a portion where Lauren said, um, where Lauren said, uh, 
what did she say? She said, oh, uh, you know, the, the, they, they get fucked up because of the foster care system and then they become bad adults or something along those eyes, um, along those lines. And, and Lance didn't, like, Lance could have just been, what are you fucking talking about? I just outlaid the system and then he could have reiterated that and it would have really nailed it home. Um, but unfortunately, he kind of uh, took Lauren at good faith, which I don't think he should have done. I don't think he should have treated Lauren in good faith in this argument at all, because Lauren was not in this discussion in good faith. That was clear from the very beginning. The um, the uh, Lauren's position on this was just textbook genocide denial, which is not a good faith position. Remember, no one, no one agrees with Lauren. Literally, the people implicated, the Catholic Church and the Canadian government, both have already admitted that all of this shit happened. They already did it. So they, this argument was won from the get-go, as long as you don't get distracted by conspiracy theories. So that was um that was a a mistake. Now let's talk about uh let's talk about twin twin rabbits and then let's talk about Lauren Southern last. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna save the Lauren Southern teardown for the last. Okay. Twin rabbits, twin rabbits. Uh, big mistake. Okay. Now first off, I'm gonna say one thing that's gonna get a lot of people in chat really mad at me. Uh uh, suck it up and deal with it. I don't give a shit. I know some of you are going to get really mad at me when I, when I say this. Twin Rabbits wasn't as bad as you people said. You motherfuckers uh, had, are, are completely, are totally delusional. And it's very clear that you're like DGG poisoned. Because uh, everybody was like, Twin Rabbits was a stupid idiot. He was so stupid. That's what I heard on the, all this weekend. I heard these fucking people going, oh my God, he, he's so dumb. And I'm like, Okay, no, he just wasn't a polished debater. He actually, he had like one mistake. The incense thing was a big mistake. But other than that, no, he wasn't hexagram. I'm sorry, he wasn't. He wasn't that bad. Um, I do agree he wasn't good. Like 100%, he wasn't a good debater. But, um, but like everybody was talking about him. Like he was the stupidest person who's ever appeared on a panel ever. And not polish is putting it lightly. No, it isn't. No, it fucking isn't. The instant the incense thing was was very bad, but everything else was on point. And he, he like the thing is though, he his problem was not in substance because his substance was fine. His rhetoric was bad. He was not a polished debater. See, there was a couple of points where he brought up things. I know y'all are gonna you're already trying to defend yourselves because you're like, ooh, Demon Mama thinks that I was being too mean. Yeah, I do. I think you all saw a bunch of DGGers calling him a dumb shit, and so you felt like you could call him a dumb shit too. Sorry! But it's true. I don't think he was as dumb as anybody said. Not even close. And keep in mind, I've been listening all weekend while sick to these people's takes. I don't think he was a I think he was not a good debater. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rush Tenor says, imagine for a moment he was on Lauren's side arguing the same way but for genocide denial. There you go. Your answer is in the first sentence. I don't even, Rush Tenor, I don't even need to finish. I don't even need to finish your, your sentence. I don't even need to finish reading your comment. I, your answer is already there. The, the difference is arguing for genocide denial. There's, there's like, that's, that's the problem right there. Did I listen to book smarts on it? Fuck no. Why would I ever <laughs> no, no, fuck no. I can't stand that guy. Sorry. Oh my god. Fuck no. Anyway, um uh so um uh what was I going to say? Okay. So Twin Rabbits. Twin Rabbits ha was is clearly like a historian and um uh, and he had a couple of points that would have been very, very good. Um, you could be terrible at making points and insufferable douchey, but I don't think he was insufferable or douchey. Like, I don't know where you got that from. I, I don't know where the fuck this idea that he was, like, douchey. Like, did you people not watch the same debate? 
Did you not watch the debate where Connor fucking flipped out and made jokes about seven kids getting shot in the head? You don't think that's douchey? Look, I, I, I get along these days with Connor points a lot better. But, like, are you fucking kidding me? To be fair, talking for only 10 minutes and the whole thing indicates something more of, than just a lack of rhetorical skill. Yeah, it, 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 de it, it depicts a lack of, of experience with debate. But again, we're, t we're like the substance. Okay, I'm going to take a second here. I'm going to take a second, take a deep breath, take a deep breath, because I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad. You all are making me real mad. That's something we need to talk about. Okay. Twin rabbits had a lot of really good historical information. The problem that twin rabbits had was that Twin Rabbits doesn't know how to present in a debate format. It was very clear. It was clear that Twin Rabbits didn't know how to get in on the conversation, when to push Twin Tails, tw Tail of Twin Rabbit. Okay. Okay. He didn't know how to get in, and also, he obviously hasn't done this type of debate before. The problem was that Twin Rabbit uh, was on, like, when Twin Rabbit brought up the Indian Act, when Twin Rabbit brought up the TRC report, the audience doesn't know what that is. And Lauren knows that the audience doesn't know anything. So Lauren makes shit up. That's, do, do you see what's going on here? Do you see how that works? If you go into a conversation, when I walk into a conversation, I know that whatever audience I'm in front of is full of fucking dumb shits. Okay? I'm sorry. It's just true. You all, I love you all very much, but whenever I talk about a topic... You guys don't know anything about it, for the most part. As, as, a, as a class, chat knows nothing. They don't know anything about anything, okay? So, you have, to, you have to really walk people through like a baby, okay? And that's not a bad thing. The problem is that when somebody goes in and doesn't walk uh, through Tale of Two Rabbits, um, like t it doesn't walk through everything like Tale of Two Rabbits did, you run into issues. You run into some pretty serious issues. Wait, anyway. Okay. You have to walk people through it. Debates, especially panel debates, you have to be willing to walk people through your points. T twi uh, Tale of Twin Rabbits needed to be able to, um, needed to be able to, uh, to explain what the Indian Act was and explain what the, uh, the, the TCR or the TRC contained. Okay. That's what needed to happen. I would have torn Lauren apart, yes. But here's the thing. We're going to get to that. Now, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the fucking moment that you've all been waiting for. It's time for me to talk about Lauren Southern. You want to know how I got these scars? I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Okay. I'm I am jokerified though, okay? Lauren Southern uh is a ghoul, a disgusting propagandist, a deeply dishonest and bad faith actor, and it was it could literally couldn't have been more apparent. Um I think that to uh, a uh, motivated audience that uh, Lauren probably came off as like, oh, she's like owning on the libs or whatever. But I think to anyone, any serious observer of this conversation will see Lauren as a, d a almost disgustingly trite individual. Lauren's stupid facial expressions, her, her little stupid seltzer, her shit-ass jokes about about genocide um 
her just abhorrent arguments. Her arguments were so motherfucking stupid. I cannot believe that she had the argument, the argument about the rapes happened before the residential schools, and therefore that doesn't undermine, like, that doesn't undermine the literal argument that she made. Like, oh my God, Lauren sucked so bad. And this is where I have to be harsh on everyone else involved. Okay? Okay, Stephs, let me just tell you something. Let me tell you something. Book smarts is fucking stupid. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Book smarts is fucking biased. Okay? That was mean. I'm sorry. I apologize. I was angry. Book smarts is very biased. Okay? I recognize that, like, a lot of people, like, that he sells himself as the debate and an analyzer person. Okay? But. We know where his bias lies, okay? We know where it lies. He doesn't like the serfs, okay? That's fucking great. Good. We know he's gonna say stupid shit like that. Okay? <sighs> I'm being mean today, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. It's all good, it's okay. I'm being dramatic, okay? Now, hold on a second. We're not quite done yet. This is where I have to criticize everyone else. Because even though I did get mad and I dunked on Booksmarts a tiny bit there, Booksmarts might have been slightly correct on one thing, which is that Lauren was so bad in this that honestly... I really, that like, I, I think that Lauren was so dreadfully bad and got away with it that it, it, it shows that there was a lack of success. Let's put it that way. A failure to, uh, a, a failure to execute, um, on, uh, on the part of Connor, Tail, and Lance. And I say this as somebody who I, Fucking, I, you know I get along with Connor. You know I get along with Lance. But Lance should have been able to exploit and recognize some of these problems. Lauren's showing was truly embarrassing. Lauren made textbook genocide denial arguments. Um, Lauren was literally laughing on camera, sitting there and laughing at genocide. Lauren made a joke about mass graves at the expense not of the, the 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 bad people it was a joke targeted at the victims of genocide and that got let go that that just slipped under the radar nobody even s called that out so lauren was so bad that while i think that independently analyzing everybody's individual positions no one did that bad Lauren did so bad, and it was so it was not capitalized on to the degree that it should have. And the worst part about all of this, and this is where it's going to get really hard, because we're about to have uh, we're about to have a hard talk, everybody. We're about to have a hard talk chat. Okay, none of you are going to walk away happy. None of you are going to fucking walk away happy from this. I'm just telling you. I'm sorry. Lauren won. Lauren won. And I'm going to explain why. Lauren won because nobody capitalized on her ridiculous mistakes. And her mistakes were ridiculous. But there's a couple of things, and I'm going to try and analyze a couple of these. I'm going to try and keep track of these, okay? And it sucks. She failed upwards, yes. Lauren didn't win because of the strength of her positions. Lauren won because her spots were not, her, her vulnerabilities were not, um, were not exploited. 
she had huge vulnerabilities in her very weak arguments and they were not accurately um uh, they were not accurately uh or or efficiently uh targeted i think i can't say that connor won because even though i think connor did the best as far as arguing oh yeah i should say the best debater on the panel was connor by far connor nailed it multiple times um in this debate as far as actual rhetorical and debate tactics oh absolutely 100 percent he shut down okay let me explain okay we're gonna get into this okay we're gonna fucking get we're gonna have to get into this there's so much i want to say about this okay listen we'll get into this first i gotta finish with with um with lauren Okay, you don't need to leave, though. I'm trying to tell you this. Ziggy, I understand. I'm not saying that he did good things. I just... Everybody... Can everybody just... This is why I know I, I knew I needed to talk about this, because everybody's been so fucking worked up about this particular debate. Okay. Listen. I'm reading all the chats. I promise. There's just a lot. Okay? <sighs> Connor made the best arguments okay connor's arguments were very strong connor did not deny genocide now i agree that he was um that he made some serious mistakes with regard to um how he was positioned but as far as debate technicals on technicality he debated very well i think his position was not good i don't think that you want to be the person who basically serves as the centrist shield for a Nazi, okay? That's terrible. And I think that on a matter, on a personal level, I would, I'm gonna, I want to talk to Connor about this. I want to go be like Connor. What the fuck, dude? You got, you got, you got cucked, because he did. I think Connor got cucked. I don't think Connor. In fact, I know for a fact that Connor doesn't agree with, uh, with Lauren's prescriptions or arguments whatsoever. However, he got suckered into defending them, and he defended it well, which is kind of ironic. But it is true that he did that. Now, he did make some mistakes, but none of them were bad enough to, uh, to fuck up, to, to fuck him up completely. Now, back to the reason why I think that Lauren won the debate and when i say won the debate i don't mean that she won won on any substance lauren's rhetoric was embarrassing uh she was um it, she was callous ghoulish she was trite uh her arguments were literally like inverted level in inverted levels of uh of stupidity okay like B internally collapsing brain level of stupidity but it didn't matter because lauren used dishonesty used sneaky debate tactics she gish galloped she did textbook genocide denial and she walked away uh with a bunch of people clapping her on the back she did. She managed that magic goldfish. She managed, says, magic goldfish says, she managed to drag the conversation down to the level that she wanted. It's so frustrating. Think about the topic at hand, okay? Okay. We're going to do a little bit of, um, hold on a second, demagogue. Listen up. I want you to think about this for a second, okay? Let's think about what everybody wanted to get out of this debate, okay? What did Lance want to get out of this debate? Well, we can we can surmise. Let's theorize a little bit. Lance wanted to get the truth out in this debate. Lance wanted to say, hey, there is horrible things going on, and you have been saying misinformation about this. I want to correct the record. What did Connor want to get out of this? Connor, I mean, we can't know for sure, but Connor apparently really thought it was an important issue and wanted to have a productive, thought-provoking conversation out of it. I don't know about true uh, uh, tales, a uh, uh, tale of two rab twin rabbits. What did Lauren want to get out of this? 
Well, Lauren wanted an opportunity to spread misinfo and conspiracy theory to vulnerable people. She wanted an opportunity to get back clapped by people on the internet who don't like the serfs or who don't like lefties. She wanted to generate hype for herself and her brand. And she wanted to push her centrist, uh, her, her like centrist rebrand forward. And she got that thanks to Connor, unfortunately. And that's why I say That's why I say that I, I think that Lauren won this debate, unfortunately. And I've said this. Um, I sa I've said this before. Um, does, anybody, does anybody remember the conversation, the very long conversation I had a couple months ago about platforming Milo Yiannopoulos? And we, we had a very in-depth conversation about this. And we actually did it. We did like a document and everything. Does anybody remember that? Was there anybody here for that? Somebody. I know, I know some of you were here for that. That's okay if you don't remember it. We're going to go over it. But I'm just, I'm just pointing out that we talked about this in the past. There was a situation in the past where uh, Milo Yiannopoulos was going to debate Peter Coffin, I think, originally. And then Peter Coffin backed out of it. And, and Destiny took over. And then afterwards, um, Jangle's science lad uh, ended up debating Milo, and there was a whole bunch of drama over it. Okay. And I had a uh, I had a unique take that most people don't have, which is about propagandists. Milo is a god tier propagandist. Connor points is not a propagandist. Uh, um, Lauren Southern is a, is a propagandist. Rob Knorr is a propagandist. These are demagogues. These are people who have an agenda that you are never going to convince them on. They are there to deliver their agenda. And their agenda happens to be one that is rife with conspiracy. And conspiracy has a certain way of delivering itself, okay? It's not just platforming. Platforming isn't, it isn't that simple about being about platforming. There are some right-wingers that you can platform perfectly safely. Um, with, with really no real risk of anything happening, you know? Um... There are some right-wingers who uh, discuss things in such a way that you can have an interesting... Dis I mean, again, I would talk about Connor points like this, right? I just had a conversation with Connor points. We debated about nationalism versus anarchism. What a wild conversation that was. And when we got into that, uh, it, 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 it was like, oh, hey, shit, we actually had a back and forth. There was something productive done. But you can't do that with a propagandist. You cannot go into a good faith conversation with somebody who is a propagandist. And so what happened was Lauren used this opportunity to spit out a ton of conspiracy theories, which are going to and, – and, and I know this is getting like a little cerebral, but I want you to stick with me for this, okay? I want you to stick fucking with me for this, okay? Conspiracy theory is like fishing hooks, Okay? What, they, what, what conspiracy theorists do is they throw out a bunch of fishing hooks into an audience. And there are people in every single audience. My audience, everybody's audience has these people in it. There are people in the audience who are, um, and some of, some of it might even be, any one of us could be this. There could be some issue that we're emotionally compromised on that we're vulnerable to being hooked on. Even, even me. Everyone has some stuff like this, you know, and the things that conspiracy theorists do is they throw those hooks out into as big an audience as they can possibly find. And what they want to do is they want to find the people who bite. 
they're trying to find people who have a emotional vulnerability or a bias or are racist, anything, any one of those, and they want them to bite onto the hook and get pulled in. Lauren Southern is a radical person. This is how the alt-right pipeline has always worked. You start getting the little JQs, and some people in the audience um, pick up on those little Q, the JQ dog whistles, and then they bite. Yes, dog whistles are one part of it, but there's many different types of lures that are used. In fact, and I, I've mentioned this many times, I inevitably will mention it again, this is the same tactic that religious demagogues use. Cult leaders use the same thing. Uh, zealous Christians, like hyper-fundamentalist Christians, same tactic. And when they engage in a debate, they will gish gallop because it doesn't matter. They're not there for the debate. They're there to hook people out of your audience. And here's another thing. Some of you may have heard an argument that goes something like this, okay? Some of you may have heard an argument like this. It goes, I didn't platform X person. Their channel is bigger than mine. That's not a good argument. That's simply not a good argument. Yes, yes, I know that, Ashmar. Creationists invented gish galloping. Dwayne Gish was a creationist. Yes, I know. It's just I'm trying to explain it to people conceptually. Okay? It doesn't matter. A platform is not just about numbers. There's multiple things that go into it, okay? I want you to think about this for a second, okay? You don't necessarily... Exactly. Your audiences don't overlap. Their audience, they might be reaching a different audience than your own. Consider this, for example. This debate was hosted on Dylan's platform, which probably has very little overlap with Lauren Southern. Lance's, Lance's platform is not going to go over to Lauren Southern's side. Basically, no one is going to flip from, from Lance's side to Lauren's side, and almost no one from Lauren's side is going to flip to Lance's side. But across all of the people watching this, there's probably a lot of people who could be vulnerable to that type of demagoguery. So it really isn't just about the platform size. Platforming someone is not just a matter of whether they have a bigger platform than you or not. Because you have fresh blood, and fresh blood is what they're looking for. Even if you're smaller, and here's the and and there's and it goes one further, okay? There's another level, which is how do I visualize this? Hmm. Think about this, okay? Imagine there's an audience. Hmm, how do I draw this? How do I imagine this? I could draw it. All right, let's try drawing it. I'm going to try drawing it. Let's see if I can draw this. Maybe I'll be able to make it sense, make it visualize if I draw it. Let's give this a try. Okay, let's try a draw thing. Okay, let me just show you this real quick. Okay, so imagine that let's say we've got the, we're going to do blue and red because we always like to do blue and red. Okay, here we got the blue side and here we got the red side. Okay, red side. Okay, now. Imagine that your audience is like, let's say you've got like 3K and your opponent's audience has like 20K. Now, if we were just looking at the, uh, if we were just looking at these, these two um, audiences, who would be, if we were just looking at this one, who would be the platform? Most people would say, this one is the platform, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Because what about this? Here's where it gets messy. Now we're going to get the gray in here. Or let's do, we'll use black for this. Plus three defense. We're going to, we'll draw a little shield. Shing, shing, shing. Wait, that looks like 30 now. This is not good. How do I draw this? How do I plus three defense? Def. And then you have just one or zero defense. What if you have one defense? 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh shit. There's some real problems here, isn't there? Because when you start to get this shit going, and let's say the ID the bat the, the battlefield of ideology. Oh shit, the argument's happening. Oh man, what's happening? Well, guess what? This audience has plus three defense to all of your ideas. So even though you're getting platformed to 20k, their plus three defense means you're not pulling any of them over because they're cultists. This is this is the issue that you run into with with creationists. When when you go up against creationists, there's no chance you're going to convince any of those creationists. They believe in God. It is so unlikely. So they have defense against their ideas. And your people might have plus one defense, so you might not lose any, but there might be one or two who end up going over to this side. And these guys have a hard time winning new people. But when they win someone, they got three plus defense, so it's very hard for them to lose it. This is how religious movements work, okay? They really do. Religious movements, they don't, like, people stay in religious movements really hard. And it's the same model for extreme right movements. Yeah, debates against the likes of Ray Comfort and Kent Hovind were worthless. Not just, they weren't just worthless. They helped Kent Hovind. They helped Ray Comfort. They helped them. They gained from those debates. Even the ones where they got blown the fuck out. Because no one is going to be convinced that God doesn't exist from a debate. But somebody might be, somebody in your audience who has a weak spot for the dragon of chaos might be convinced that God does exist and pulled over. And once they're pulled over, they're not getting out. They're never getting out. Niztastic says, when it comes to propagandists and demagogues, we had this happen in the UK. The leader of a Christian fascist party, the, BN the B BNP, was invited to mainstream political discussions. And even though they got clowned on for the entirety of the show, there was a big uptick in membership for the BNP afterwards. And of course, this isn't even considering audience members that haven't made any decisions yes, yet build a dog. But let me ask you this. Let's pause it. Let's go back to the example. Let us posit that there is a third audience here, okay? A third audience here, okay? This is the pool of people who aren't on either side, okay? Let's say 50% goes to this side and 50% goes to this side. Let's say a perfect world. Who won out of that? What's better? 50% of this that have plus one defense or plus three defense because they joined a cult. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Who actually won more out of this? Yeah. Now, you might get a small boost here. You might get a small boost over to this channel, and that's great. But these guys just got just as many invulnerable soldiers. And guess what? E what if you even even if you do it like this? Whoop, what if it's like this? But these are a plus three, and these are only a plus one. Yikes! You start running into some some creepy issues, right? So, what do you think is the correct option here? Should people just not debate people like Lauren Southern? Um, I think there is a uh. Wait, hold on. I don't know if this defense analogy works if it's supposed to represent individuals' willingness to engage with the other side's ideas. No, it's willingness to accept and be convinced. I mean, these are hypothetical numbers, but there isn't really any backing to any of this. There's no way for... Okay, like... Okay. Hold on a second. Um, how do I do this? There is no numbers for any of this. This is all theoretical analysis, and I'm making a case for why this is the case. Okay. DM, I'm sorry, but you're taking a very direct and a bit outdated approach to how mass communication works. The reality of the relationship between audiences and media is much more complex. Uh, no, I don't think I am, actually. I really don't think I am. Okay? 
This is a simplified model, but I really don't think I am. Okay? I grew up in a cult. All right? I know f I know a fucking lot about how these things um uh how these things operate. The problem that you have is that um is that extremist movements do not need as ma they don't need as many people as you think. They don't need to win over a majority. Do you think that Donald Trump like hardcore trumpers represent the majority of America? Not even fucking close. They only they need to get as many as possible. Lauren is clearly using debate culture to boost her career. I think it's more responsible to not interact with her. This is where we get to the really complicated part. How do we decide when it's okay to platform and when it's not? Mm. This gets very hard. I actually think this is a really difficult de decision to make. And what I think is that uh, we take risks. There are times in which I think it is worthwhile to go up against demagogues. For example, does anybody remember the time that I went up against um, Rob Knorr on uh, Antifa and BLM? And I just creamed him in every single possible aspect, including educating people on the history of Antifa, how I used his, his freak out to teach people what the actual history of Antifa was? There are times in which you can do this. Vosh has done this. Vosh has gone up against a fascist or a Nazi who I would otherwise argue should not be platformed, and he has effectively dealt with them. However, there are some, some situations are riskier than others. Lauren right now is, I mean, Jangles literally, yeah, yeah, exactly, high progressive. Jangles literally made Milo cry. Like, that was, and yeah, and Vosh obliterated Charlie Kirk. Um, wasn't you going against Rob also through Dylan in the same way? Yeah, more or less. Yep. What do you think about reviewing debates? Oh, I think reviewing debates are good because it takes you out of the heat of the moment and it lets you analyze the aspects. I think the review of the debate is, is very important. Um, yes, Park si Parkside Tuan, basically you should do it when 1000% you know you can win and give the other side no wiggle room. I, I don't know if it's that simple, but you should have a high certainty and a high confidence of victory. It is risky. It is risky. We've seen this happen before, okay? We know, like, like, this is how Milo got his start. Milo got his start by being a provocateur who got invited onto all kinds of things where he said all kinds of bullshit and then became a millionaire. Milo was never a good debater. Milo was manipulative. He took advantage of tons of people debating him. Like, we've, we know this shit. We know this. And the problem, um, the problem that we have is people don't... <sighs> Everybody thinks they're a god of debate, okay? Everybody thinks they're a god of debate. No, 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 Dev. Don't make no mistakes. Vosh demolished Kirk. Kirk. I think he could have demolished him more. Um, but, uh, wait. Yeah. He could have demolished him more, but, but, uh, but he still did good. Do you think the same could be said about tankies when it comes to responsible platforming? Um, I think so. Depending on the tanky, yes. Like genocide denying tankies, absolutely, absol absolutely, a hundred percent. There's all kinds of misinformation that, like, demagogues need to be dealt with uh, carefully. Turfs are another example of somebody that you should be careful about, because these are people who peddle specifically in conspiracy. Now, a lot of it's very it's very weird 
because I've had a, 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 a different opinion of a lot of these different debates. Oh shit, I gotta go to my thing soon. Fuck. I forgot about that. Hold on one second. I forgot I had something to... Oops. Okay, listen. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on. We're finishing. We're going to finish this segment. Don't worry. I forgot about a thing. I'm bad. I'm bad. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry, everybody. Don't, <laughs> don't worry, everybody. It's okay. It's all good. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't panic, everybody. Oh, no. No, I forgot. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, listen. Um, okay. Hold on a second. All right. Let's, let's refresh here. Okay. I forgot that we rescheduled something for tonight that I have to go to. So you got me for a little bit longer and then we're going to wrap up, but we'll, we'll do more tomorrow. I promise tomorrow we have tons more content. Don't you worry. I'm not skipping anything. I love you all, but I've already been streaming for six hours. And this is my first day back, and it was a mess. Anyway. What's this? Did you make an animation? Oh! We'll look at this in just a second. We'll look at this in just a second. Now, hold on a second, everybody. <sighs> We're not done yet. Okay. So what's the conclusion? Um... Oh, yeah, the text thing I use is called Sublime Text. It's awesome. You can get a free version. Um, the licensed version is expensive, but it's very worth it. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, ADHD moment. I always have ADHD moments. Okay, let's refocus here real quick, okay? Let's fucking refocus, all right? Listen. So, do I think that Lance got demolished or did horrible? No. Uh, do I think that, uh, that like Twin Tails was, um, as bad as everybody on Twitter was saying? Not even close. Uh, do I think Lauren did good? No. Um, but I do think that Lauren, uh, came out just slightly ahead in this, um, because her positions were not, um, effectively capitalized on. Copium? No, nothing. What the, what the fuck are you talking about? Are you like, uh, you like trying to, are you like baiting for a argument or something? Is that what you want? You want to come on and like argue with me or some shit? Listen. No. Nope. Did you even listen to anything I've been saying? No, nothing. God, no, nothing. You really, my God. No, nothing is somebody who I really, really wish that I could respect. <laughs> um, but he, but no, nothing is the Lord of opening his mouth before thinking and then ending up deleting tweets. Because he always jumps the gun. And he always jumps the gun in favor of, of a certain website. But look, I don't think Know Nothing is like a bad person. Or anything like that, just for the record. Um, uh, so, uh, what was I going to say? Um, Yes, I did show off the belt, Somniostatic. I did. I did indeed. It's wonderful, Somniostatic. Um, we need, I need to stop getting distracted because I'm running out of time. Okay? I'm running out of time. Hold on a second. Let's focus here. Lauren came out slightly ahead. Um, I think that uh, there's a certain group of people on the internet whose heads are jammed so far up their own ass that they can't see reality anymore, who are just like, oh, Lauren is so, wow, the surfs made Lauren look so good. But we all know who they are, and we also know why they support Lauren so much. Um, Lauren was a fucking babbling idiot, and the only reason Lauren came out slightly in advance here um, is because uh, there wasn't, a, an, because her, uh, shitty rhetoric tactics um, were uh, 
uh, were not effectively undermined. Um, and uh, I don't know. I think people should be really careful with Lauren because uh, Lauren is, in my opinion, inc an incredibly manipulative person. Um, someone who more or less is incapable of telling the truth. A person who is clearly a disgusting ghoul. A, a person who sits there and laughs as if, like, you're not talking about a, a genocide of children. And she's like, ah, oh my god, this is so funny. And that was her, like, I mean, did we see this? Like, do I need to go through and show you all this? Like, I should I? I should. I should, shouldn't I? Like, I mean, look at these screenshots I grabbed. Like, I grabbed some fucking wild-ass screenshots. Like... This is her, like, making... Well, okay, that one was Connor. But this is her, literally, the entire debate, just pounding down White Claws and laughing about children dying. And, like, you can say that she wasn't laughing about children dying, but she literally did... She literally made jokes about, maybe we should do a mass grave. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry. She was laughing about fucking children. And, uh, and, like... There's nothing based about that. There's nothing fucking, like, good or anything. Her arguments were fucking terrible. Her uh, attitude was the one of the worst I've ever seen. I don't know why anybody would continue to engage with someone like Lauren. I really don't know. Um, and, uh, frankly... The, the the people who are out there saying, like, Lance got owned are, like, just lying. I do agree that um, – I agree, and I said very clearly, I think that Lance missed a lot of uh, opportunities to undermine Lauren's points. But this isn't, like, some giant victory for Lauren. This isn't some giant victory for anybody. Um, honestly, this was the saddest, in my opinion, for Connor points and – to be completely honest, and I and and I'm gonna be fair. I gotta critique everyone. This was this kind of looked bad for Dylan. Um, and when I say this kind of looked bad for Dylan, it's that um, like um that Dylan hosted a ghoulishly laughing Nazi on his platform and and she just sat there laughing the whole time and she also disrespected his um she disrespected his modding on numerous times and and by the way uh, you know you all fucking know before anybody goes And, and gets all mad and says, ah, Demon Mama doesn't like Dylan. I fucking respect Dylan a lot. But I also always am honest about this. And I think that there was, I think that, uh, I think that Lauren was disrespectful to him. And also that she sat there making a mockery of the, of, of, of even his, of, of even the, sh the hippy dippy show. Because the hippy dippy gets real spicy and wild shit happens. But, laughing about an ongoing like atrocity let's say that nobody calls it a genocide but laughing about an ongoing child raping atrocity is a super 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 bad look it is a super bad look and personally i don't think that anybody should engage with lauren southern as anything else but a demagogue Because that's what she is. And that was just demonstrated um, by... Uh, that was that was demonstrated by uh, the fact that she had no argument. That she had no fucking facts to base on. There was instantly... All of her... All of the things that she brought up were instantaneously debunkable. Xander Hall... Well, Xander Hall did a very different thing. And I talked about this. Actually, you know what? This is the last thing I'll talk about before we wrap up for the night. I'll talk about this before we wrap up, okay?
which is let's talk about the difference between the serfs and Xander Hall. Okay? So the conversation with Xander Hall was a one on one conversation. We'll do the Stardew tomorrow, I promise. We'll do Stardew tomorrow. Don't worry. Listen. Xan, wait, but if Lauren challenged me to a debate, would you accept? I don't think so. What would I even talk? I, I don't know. I will say that um, that Hunter Avalon fucking obliterated, absolutely obliterated her, uh, her, which was really funny. Yeah, it would depend. It would depend on the topic. Yeah, yeah, it would depend on the topic. Yep. Yeah, she really is scummy. That's the thing. I don't even really want to be associated with somebody like that. Like, I don't associate with people like Redneck. You know what I mean? Like, I don't associate with people like that because I am I find them to be embarrassing to even be seen in the same room as. It is. It's like stepping in shit. I don't even, like, I do. I see myself as, a, like, like, genuinely above people like that. But I don't know. I'd think about it at least. Um, um, hmm. Hmm. I don't know about that. Hey, thanks for the raid, Freddy Yeti. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah, Zan. That's the last thing we're going to do real quick. Okay. Let's compare the Xander Hall versus th this one. Uh, I'm deep in thought tonight. Um, so Xander Hall, our discussion with Lauren Southern versus Lance panel with Lauren Southern. Okay. First of all, panels are always risky. Thank you very much for the raid. Deeply appreciate that. Okay. So a panel has internal problems um, in that you have much less control over the flow of the conversation. You have much less control over the topics, and you have, um, um, and you also have a you have multiple people involved who can interrupt and send things off on the on the side. So, and we saw that happen. the The conversation got derailed like three or four separate times. Panels are way more chaotic, and in my opinion, you should never, ever, ever have a panel, a debate panel about something like genocide. That is, that is, in my opinion, like, arguably, arguable about ethic, like, ethically arguable. Like, I have to actually think about that aspect because I'm not even ready to give my take about that. I don't know how I feel about the fact that there was just a panel about an ongoing genocide. Like, that is a, and a debate, a one-on-one -on -one debate about it is different, right? Because, like, Mel and, Mel and and Dylan had a 1v1 debate about the Uyghur genocide. And even though I felt like it was a shit show, it was taken seriously. It was two people with differing positions, and they went head to head. But a panel is not like that. The panel, there's jokes being tossed all over the place. Like, I mean, Connor, like, butted in with random jokes, like, multiple times. So there's that issue. Xander Hall did a 1v1 conversation with Lauren that was as, it was like as a it wasn't really like a debate it was more like a conversation like a contentious conversation and xander hall did an incredibly good job of owning the facts and i talked about this in my original review of the xander hall lauren southern debate which was xander hall walked every per everybody anybody who was watching that which is mostly not going to be an audience that's that's favorable to him is going to know, wait a minute, HRT is when this happens. Uh, puberty blockers is when this happens. Here's a study. This is what happened in the study. He educated everybody. 
He edu And yes, I do agree it was a mistake to make it about the book. But. But. He did good anyway. It wasn't. A, it's not about converting the right wingers. Okay, people. Listen. Converting right wingers is way harder than you think it is. It's way harder than you think it is. Motherfuckers. Motherfuckers. They have this. They have this. Do you understand that? They have this motherfucking shit. Lefties don't have anything like this. He who winks maliciously causes grief, and a chattering fool comes to, to, comes to ruin. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirs dissension, but love covers all wrongs. This is why it's hard to convert a motherfucking right-winger, you understand. Yeah, that was a random page. Christians have, uh, they have fucking holy books on their side. It's not impossible to change right-wing views, but it isn't, it doesn't happen through online debate. Online debate can help an already converting right-winger find a new place. But the chance that, um, the chance of you converting a, a right-winger through online debate is very difficult. Okay? It's very difficult. Your con the people that you're converting are not right-wingers. They're other people. They're liberals. They're centrists. That's the people that are, that you're not, no one is converting right-wingers. It's everybody in between. Okay? It's the libs. It's the, uh, it's the, uh, the, 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 it's the, it's the centrists. It's the, the non-affiliated. Okay? And here, and again, I can I ask you to consult the the shorthand drawing one more time. Remember that r religious groups that have deep indoctrination have realistically this isn't even accurate. I would say that it would be m fairer to say it's much stronger than just a plus three. If I was being real, if you're dealing with Christian identitarians and stuff and Christian fundamentalists, it's more like an eight. It's so strong. You don't know how strong it is. I do. I grew up in a cult. I know how hard it is to get out of that shit. It is almost impossible. Most people never leave the religion, ever. They spend their entire life in it. It's, they are taught from the bottom up to avoid logic, to not think logically, but to think with their heart, to think with their spirit. Well, that's great, Aircraft Sparky. Not all right-wingers are exactly like this. I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that all right-wingers are that extreme. But when you're talking about someone like, like I said, what I listed off was like, um, uh, a, um, like, a, like a Christian fundamentalist. Um, if you're talking to a Nazi, if you're talking to a white supremacist, these people are like that. They are, the way that you get there is via indoctrination. Parkside Twan says, it's hard as fuck. I'm speaking with experience of slowly pulling my friend over. It's been months. It's a very time, a very expe a time expensive process. If you want to take the time, I've known this person for years. So a debate, a single debate is un very unlikely to change these people. Well, Aircraft Sparky. Well, look, we can have another conversation about this another time. I'm running out of time before I need to go to my event, okay? Um... And, uh, well, that's fantastic. We can talk about this in the future on another time. But, uh, no, it's not. It's not. I don't watch the Contra video. Um, oh, I have a video. For those of you who want to watch, learn about the experience I had growing up in a cult. Here, I'm going to link you the video right now. Here we go. I'll bring it. I'll get it to you. All right? This is a big video. It's called Demon Mama's Spiritual Deconstruction. It's the full story. Here you go. Enjoy. Here you go. There's the video. I'm linking it everywhere. You all can go watch it. Yes, I will. It's D&D. &D. Yes, it is. It's, I have to go to D&D. &D. I forgot we rescheduled for today, and I'm running late because I'm, I'm, that's the way I am. There it is. There's the link. I linked it for you all. Now, hold on. One last thing. I want to close off my thought, and then I want to show this thing that Glooby sent me. 
I'm very stressed today. I apologize for being so all over the fucking place. Uh, let me get this. And don't and remember tomorrow at, at 3 p.m. I'm doing another stream. So, the reason why I think that Zan's conversation was better is because Zan successfully capitalized on Lauren's shit ass arguments, and Zan was not on a panel, and Xander Hall uh, was not being um, Xander. How do I put this? Xander Hall doesn't have a a uh, motivated group of people that absolutely hate his motherfucking guts, okay? And the and the serfs do. Sorry, but it's true. The serfs have an entire army of completely uncharitable people who will say that Lauren won no matter what, and that boosts Lauren's position, okay? I don't have a day job. This is my job. I do this one I do this full fucking time. By the way, just so you all know, this is my day job. I am a full-time streamer. Um yeah.